What's up guys, it's your boy Cool Kid Croc here, and after almost a year of not playing Kenshi, I'm finally back, and nothing much has really changed. Which, in its own way, is good. I mean, Kenshi is the perfect sandbox open world, which allows you to experience what it's like to be stuck in a corrupt wasteland full of slavers and monsters. I've gone ahead and set up this playthrough with a good handful of mods, some old and some new, to keep it a bit interesting, so we have lots of possibilities to lose everything in a matter of seconds. To begin, I wanted to create a gang, a strong group of mofos who will go around trapping hash, slapping ass, and killing fast. I settled on a skeleton unit, which was one of my favorite characters from my previous Kenshi videos, so I named him B01, and we began our adventure. I picked a start that spawns you in the middle of a desert without an arm. Now, you would think this is a bad start, but it's actually right next to the hub when it comes to difficulty to survive. Our first goal was to travel to the nearest town in search of refuge and whores, probably. Crossing the desert can be pretty easy, as long as we keep our eyes out for any enemies, but we might also get lucky on our way. With B01 slowly exploring, we could see many different groups traveling as well. My goal was to lure one group into another and then let them fight it out, that way we can take their loot back to the town with us to sell. We found a group of rebel farmers relatively fast, so the game began. B01 would have to run from the farmers and lure them into a group of menders. Even though B01 was much slower than the farmers, I was able to use my gamer skills I developed over 500 hours in this hellhole. By watching and waiting until the farmer stops running and prepares to swing, this gives me an opportunity to run in a different direction so the swing doesn't connect or hit my hitbox. We still got bonked a few times, but B01 was able to make it to the menders who immediately jumped in to fight the rebel farmers. It didn't take long for the menders to take them out since they're way higher leveled, though B01 had only sustained some minor injuries, nothing light threatening. So I grabbed as much loot as we could carry. I would have carried one of the dead farmers to the town so I could sell his inventory as well, but since we only had one arm, B01 couldn't do any lifting. Luckily for us, one of the menders was actually a trader, so I'd be able to fill up our inventory, sell the loot, and then re-loot the rest of the bodies to get as much money as possible. Once we had a bit of cats, I bought an authentic skeleton repair kit so we could repair what damage had been done so far. And just that minor injury basically used almost the whole kit. It cost us 2k cats, and just that little minor injury basically used that whole kit. After we finished healing, we could see a settlement close by called Heft, so I made it our mission to make it there. Heft is controlled by the United Cities, which is one of our best case scenarios. Most of the groups and factions that there are in the game are pretty much all assholes, but the United Cities is kind of a most humane out of them, other than all the human slavery and trafficking they're a part of. You know, besides that, they're, they're not too bad. <laughs> There's also a diverse amount of races of the United Cities, making it a great spot to start a new playthrough for us to develop our party. After being stopped and checked at the guard gate, B01 would make his way over to one of the town's bars in search of other adventurers. A skeleton wearing what appeared to be a hazmat suit walked into the bar and caught my eye. A familiar look, he states, implying him and B01 are skeletons and there aren't many like them left in the world. B01 offered the hazmat skeleton to join his group and team up with him. The hazmat skeleton had no problem joining for free, so we now have B01 and Human. That's still only two gangsters for the entire operation, which isn't a lot, so we need to keep on looking. Since we already have two skeletons, and I don't want everyone in the comments calling me a racist, I knew we had to search for a different race to join us, which is when a perfect Bugman Hiver walked into the bar. His name was Ank, and he asked us if we'd like a new friend. Apparently, Ank had ran into some trouble and was on the brink of death when a processor unit named Chompy came in and saved his life. Ank feels bad because because he can't afford for the repairs, so he's wondering if we'd like to take him in. Since we still had half of that repair kit from earlier, B01 offered to repair Chompy for Ank, to which Ank was really happy and grateful, but still, he knew he couldn't keep Chompy if he needs to rely on handouts from strangers. So B01 offered Ank to join him and Yumin on their quest to make the world's strongest gang, and they'd all work together and drink blood rum and shit. Ank was pumped, all oh, Fuck yeah, he basically said, and joined our group. Now we just have to find Chompy. You would think Chompy would be somewhere near Ank or following him, but no. Since this isn't a normal game with a normal series of inputs, this is Kenshi. So I began searching all around Heft for a random processor unit named Chompy. And even if I didn't want to take him in, he'd be very valuable, as we wouldn't need to feed him since he's a skeleton dog. So it took, a, so it took me nearly five in real life minutes of looking around for this dude, but we finally found Chompy wandering around the town. With us now having three men and an animal, or well two skeletons, one bug man, and a 
robot dog, our gang was at least big enough to fight starving bandits, but we're still pretty much at the bottom of a Kenshi food chain. In order to become stronger than the famous triage bandits, we'll need to increase some basic skills like dexterity, melee combat, and defense. These can really only be obtained by either training or fighting, and this isn't my first rodeo. I know damn well if we leave half with our current skill set, we're destined to become either skimmer food or slaver's bitch. So we're going to need to train without going too far from the settlement. If things get too rough, we can always retreat back to the guards and get assistance and not losing our arms or legs. So the first group we would encounter would be none other than the United Heroes, a group that wanders the United City's territories and attacks weaker groups to make themselves feel better about life. First, they chased down our group and started to call us names like Shitbag, and <laughs> then they proceeded to begin combat. This is when I discovered that Chompy is no normal robot dog. Even though Chompy's health is really low in his forearm, he makes up for it by hitting unarmored characters for up to 180 damage. This is a great asset to us as it levels the playing field between where our group currently is and brings us closer to maybe fighting a few mid-game units. With three gangsters and Chompy fighting, it wouldn't take long until the United Heroes were mostly all defeated, land us our first battle won as a group. There was this one guy who was like trying to crawl away to which Ank and Yumin ran after him. They began beating on him for like an hour in game, managing to punch his fucking leg off of his body until he was finally unconscious again. Now with the battle over, we could loot the enemies we defeated, but unfortunately none of them really had equipment that was worth a whole lot. I mean, after selling everything, we still didn't even have enough money to buy a normal skeleton repair kit. A reason why this sucks is because the authentic kit has a durability of 100 and costs about 2k cats, while the real kit has a durability ability of 500 and cost 4k cats so it's a no brain move to pick the normal one but sometimes in game when you only have a few thousand cats to spare you're gonna have to go with a crappy kit and live with it i decided to give the kit to human as he has an xp bonus of 1.2 in robotics meanwhile b01 has a negative xp bonus in robotics at 0.8 which is actually fucking pathetic on a bright side we now had our gang healed back up and ready to explore so i brought them back outside the heft to look for any bandit groups now i want you guys to tell me what you think about this there's a samurai sergeant that approached my group and told us that we seem short on bodyguards and that there's a lot of bandits around we had dialogue chances to either hire the bodyguards or tell them we could handle ourselves so we told them that we're fine and once they left it took no longer than 30 seconds later for a group of slave hunters to approach our group they attempted to fight us to knock us out so they could enslave us and there is no way that those samurais who approached us before aren't working with these slavers. There's no way they didn't just attempt to scam us for protection, as that was way too convenient. On the bright side, the slavers weren't very strong, so we were able to take them down along with the loose slaves that they had with them. On the other side though, once we were done fighting and began to heal, a wild skimmer snuck up on us and began fighting. Skimmers are often super dangerous early game as they do a lot of damage against flesh. They hit really fast and they can eat some characters once you get knocked out but with chompy on our side we'd be able to adore the attacks of a skimmer and be able to take him down as well before we headed back to town everybody filled up their inventories with loot and then ank and human picked up a couple dead guys that way we could walk and get some strength experience once we got back to heft our strength did go up by a few levels each and we had plenty of gear to sell which allowed us to finally buy a good repair kit this is sweet as it will last us much longer than the authentic ones and save us money in the long run at the same time this brought us back to being nearly broke so we need to explore again and try to find some battles. I checked out a couple of the local camps nearby, but they were both friendly, so I decided to do some running back and forth and have to train up strength and wait for a battle to break out. And it wouldn't be all that long until a group of rebel farmers attempted to breach the gates of Heft only to be massacred within minutes by the guards. This gives us a great opportunity to grab some loot, that way we could sell it all as well as get some upgrades for our own equipment. After selling a bunch of stuff, we also had enough money to purchase a cheap left arm for B01. It wouldn't be a permanent solution, but it was better than nothing and we could now strength train with all three gang members now. We went to loot more of the corpses at the gate when all of a sudden a group of manhunters attacked us, attempting to take us and the rebel farmers back to their slave camp. Luckily, even just Chopper could have taken them out as he's a beast, but the guards also helped us in the battle, taking down the manhunters, which left even more loot for us to take and sell. Along with a couple skimmers that got caught in the crossfire, I was able to load up everybody's inventory again and have them pick up a dead body, so now we could efficiently strength train. I made the gang run back and forth in half for close 
close to a day which got all three of her strength levels up to above 20. They are now close to being able to leave Heft and go to other settlements. The gang's all here, B01, Human, Ank, and Chompy. First video, we went from starting in the middle of the desert with just one weak gangster, and by the end of the episode, we had moved into a town, which unfortunately still is in the middle of a desert, but we now have three weak gangsters and a cool robot dog. Doesn't sound a whole lot better, but so far, we're not doing too bad. The main goal right now is going to be to start a small underground business within Heft, as we're firstly going to need to make some money and get some capital in order to start our own settlement. So to begin, we're going to be patrolling around heft looking for any weak bandits or post battle scraps that we can loot after briefly scanning the desert i saw a group of manhunters who i thought would be great bait i had our three gangsters run over to the gates of heft and then i planned to have chompy lure them to the gates unfortunately to my misunderstanding i didn't know the manhunters are kind of chill with the united cities which makes sense as there's like a literal slave store right in the middle of town so this led to us not only unsuccessfully luring any manhunters over to the town but we also now have had a 500 cat bounty placed on Chompy for assault. Isn't that just wonderful? This is enough to make the guards instantly attack Chompy when he gets near the city, so I had to get this dealt with. I set our three gangsters onto passive mode so they wouldn't engage any guards, and Chompy headed into the police station to turn himself in. But even though Chompy went in and endured his beating and was waiting to be locked up so we could bail him out, no one was putting him in a cage due to all the cages being occupied by bandits and losers. I even tried to buy the freedom of a random slave so they would have one cage open, but no, it still didn't work. Along with this, the Manhunters had finally arrived at the gates of Heft and began combat with our squad. I gave up the whole trying to get Chompy arrested mission and I sent him straight into the battlefield and Chompy was able to peck off a bunch of guys while the other gangsters fought the remaining enemies. After the battle, we had done quite a lot. We had nearly knocked out 20 Manhunters and they were all ready to loot. We were able to make a little over 5k off of the loot that we sold and I felt that we were ready to obtain some new recruits, mainly scouting around for any unique races that have an XP bonus I'm after. This is when a group of gangsters stumbled into a random house on accident since I misclicked. Immediately, some fuckhead starts yelling at us, Hey, get out of here, you don't belong here. Who the fuck you are, man? You have your door wide open, it's an accident, we're walking out. It was outrageous. So I clicked on the house and saw it was on sale for 4,000 cats. A very small price to pay for a big fuck you to that guy. So our heroes bought the small shack mainly out of spite and got to watch the fuckhead shut up and leave. Now that we had our own property in heft, we needed to come up with a plan going forward. First step would be to build a level 1 research bench, which will allow us to research technologies and unlock new buildings and things to build in game. It cost 3 building materials, so I found the local material shop in town and stocked up. I picked all the free research options, and since Ank has an XP bonus in researching, I set him on it. Now, while Ank would be researching, B01 and Human could head to the local bars to see if they could find any more recruits for the gang. Mainly, I needed two more fighters, but also two more laborers. I did consider obtaining some slaves, but on the other hand, I'd like the character to get strong eventually and be a part of a team. And since our gang is still pretty small, having a few more members would be nice. So firstly, we found a Kaji woman, who we hired for 3k cats and renamed named to Brittany Ears. We then found a second woman to recruit, a Greenlander named Izumi. She claimed to need a sponsor for her research and that she was skilled in first aid as well, which was very useful. I swapped Ank from researching and sent in the new recruit, Izumi. And the first priority would be to get ore containers set up, as I wanted to set up a copper storage and then get Brittany Ears to work by mining copper for us. Immediately though, she was attacked by some random slaves, which was kind of nice as I realized as long as Brittany Ears is mining, near the gate, then we'll never really miss out on a battle or free loot near the gate. I would then split the group up, one into the top G's and one into the workers. With a small headquarters set up, we'll be able to make passive income by mining while we have a top G's exploring and looking for groups to ambush. We got lucky right away by finding some goblin cultists who weren't in a super big group, making it easy for the top G's to take them down. We'd continue throughout the day, going from fighting to resting at the bar and back to fighting before sunrise. It's just about the end of week one, but they're already causing hella trouble. Now, most of these fights were with people like rebels or manhunters, so it's pretty fair game so far. But we are still suffering pretty severe injuries, meaning we would have to wobble back slowly to heft in order to heal. Usually, Ank would spend his time at the bar healing, while B01 and Human would spend their time in the skeleton bed. Now, after a while, Azumi had finished all the research we needed to do, so I found an extra copper node near heft and assigned her to mining. At this point, we had a lot of loot to sell, and all we needed to do right now was to wait to heal up. So while waiting, 
meeting, I decided to send Yumin into a local bar to look for more recruits. And we actually found a pretty cool Scorchlander for hire. We brought her into the gang and named her Scarlet. Mainly, I wanted a Scorchlander since they have armor smithing XP bonuses and weapon smithing XP bonuses, as well as also being great for ninjas or assassins. Everybody was healed up, but we now had four gangsters of the top G's ready to go out and find some fights. We ran into a group of rebel farmers fairly fast, so we began a battle with them to which almost everybody got knocked out. We still won the battle, but it brought everybody's health way back down. It was thanks to Chompy we were able to secure a victory, but while B01 was knocked out, some asshat ran up and enslaved him. Now Chompy made sure to take care of this guy, but what a pain in the ass. I had to lockpick the stupid shackles, then we gotta refind his gear, and now we got a 48 hour effect in game that marks him as an escape slave, meaning most guards will attack on sight, isn't that just fucking sweet? After healing up and looting all the bodies, we had a long journey back to Hef, and while I was attempting to set up a cool cinematic, some skimmers jumped us, causing us to endure a lot more damage. Thankfully there was a mender camp nearby, so I sent everyone there to unload and sell all the loot that we had found. Then once back at Hef, everybody rested up for half a day and healed from the last trip. It was on day 9 in the morning when I built a food storage as our human gangsters were starting to starve to death, which isn't cool at all. Just buying 4 food cubes made us go broke, so we had to go back out and find more battles to earn our keep. The gangsters were able to find a group of skimmers and began battle. And while the skimmers are really strong, there's still no match to Chompy, and even if they hit or knock out our gangsters, they get a lot of experience for fighting these things. After battle, I healed up and harvested all the skimmers teeth so we we could sell them, it makes us about 500 cats per skimmer by selling their teeth. I also decided to pick up the skimmers and head back to Hef so we could do a bit more strength training. Spending about half a day to obtain a few more strength levels and then going to sell all the loot we had plus the copper that Britney Ears and Azumi had been mining. This brought us up to nearly 20k so I went and bought some food along with backpacks for human and egg. Also picked up a bunch of maps so we could have some more locations on the map marked and it would take us until the start of day 11 for us to find our next group of rebel farmers to victimize. The group was finally getting stronger, meaning the more low-level groups were no longer impacting us as much as before, so we could finally explore some more. But the weakest link in the party is definitely Scarlet, as we just recently recruited her. She got smoked by a skimmer, so we'd have to go back to Heft. Thanks a lot, Scarlet. When we ended up getting back, Yuman picked up some books so we could get some more simple research done, as I wanted to work towards unlocking level 2 technology. The next battle took place against a group from the Goblin Cult. They had shooters, making the battle even more annoying, but we managed to not have any knockdowns, and these goblin cultists have some pretty good loot on them. After returning to Heft and selling our loot in copper, it brought us back up to 20k cats. I went and bought some more books, and while waiting for the research to finish, I watched a beautiful scene where Chompy was outside making some friends with some bone dogs over a meal of dead bandits. Now that we had tech level 2, the gang would buy a bigger house located in Hef for about 19k, that way we could fit in a level 2 research bench. This would allow us to research a lot more things, specifically I wanted the training dummies, as our characters are still very low leveled, so having a way to level them up would definitely help offset the difference in power we have right now. And instead of sitting at a level 10 dummy, I went for getting our tech up to level 3, as if we upgraded the bench as well as upgrade the dummies, we could get our characters up to level 15 melee offense. And now that we also had a bit more money, I upgraded Ankh's leg into a normal skeleton leg before we went on to our next adventure. We ran into some slavers pretty fast, which was perfect for us, as most of our stats are on par with theirs, making the battle very worthwhile. And with only Ankh being knocked out, we were able to heal up pretty easily and then loot all the corpses. On the way back, they ran into some rebel farmers to slaughter, which doesn't give us a lot of money in loot, but is always good for XP. And then once back at Heft, we had plenty of money to buy B01 a better arm and invest in a level 3 training dubby. I'd also get a dexterity pole, which would allow us to train the dexterity skill up to level 30. And I then put Scarlet on the dexterity pole and sent the rest of the group over to show Batai to seek new recruits. There were two bars there, and we did find a couple hivers, but I didn't really want more glass cannon type characters on our team, I really wanted to find some more tanks, so I sent the gangsters back to Heft and we would seek elsewhere for more members. Once Scarlet hit level 22 in dexterity, she joined the group again and then would make a trip to a local settlement named Southport. 
On the way there, they faced some scammers, which wasn't too bad, but surprisingly, some slavers were a difficult match for the top cheese. Ank ended up having his leg completely chopped off, the only other good leg that he had, so we now had to pick him up and find him another robot leg. And when we went into Southport, it wasn't even a normal settlement. It was a fucking slaver town, so there wasn't much there except for slavers and slaves and rubble. The group would have to head back to Heft still without a new recruit. In order to find some new members for the gang, we're gonna have to make their adventure go far, and we're gonna have to look wide around the Kenshi map. We currently have four gangsters, two workers, and a robot dog, which isn't exactly enough manpower we'll need to run a super illegal operation. We've already been to a couple of neighboring cities, but today we'll need to explore more to the south in search of strong warriors. When leaving Hef, the gangsters passed by a group of manhunters who 100% would have tried to beat us up and enslave us had there not been a second group nearby. I was kind of hoping we could get into some fights though. Even though the rebel farmers don't really have a lot of value in loot, they make up for it in being great XP sponges for the early game. There are also a lot of skimmers of the same direction of the desert that the gangsters were heading in, so this would be the main cause for big injuries. Followed by a different group of slavers who would try to attack us since there weren't any witnesses around. Unfortunately for the slavers, B01 was starting to become quite the strong unit, as well as Chompy being an absolute nightmare to fight against. The witnesses would would walk by after we had completed the battle and all the slavers were either knocked out or dying. So the gangsters would go body to body picking up any weapons or valuable loot that the slavers had on them before healing and continuing on their journey. There was a pretty big group of skimmers to slow the group down but thanks to Chompy they survived and were able to loot some teeth for profit. It took a few more hours of wobbling but the gangsters finally arrived at the city of Stote, a small united city to the west of Heft. This city has a few less stores and only one bar so we didn't really find a a whole lot of people here. I even stopped by the slaver shop who did have a Shek slave for sale but his melee attack and defense started at like negative 8 which I, I don't think it can get any worse than that. I didn't want to waste the entire trip though so I decided to hire a hive soldier. I made him extra short and then checked the comments to which the very first comment on the first video was by Null Tanya and they said first. Ah damn it I don't know how I let this opportunity slip through my hands to be the first comment on my own video. I could have totally done it too because I edit the videos, I watch them and I upload them, I can comment on them before they're uploaded. Whatever you win this time Null Tanya. Tanya, so I decided to name the Hiver to Null. The next mission would be to get the gangsters to Henge, which was the other closest city to us. All we needed to do was pass through a big empty desert to get there, but on this day, of course, the desert would be far from empty. First, the gangsters passed by another group of manhunters who decided it'd be a good idea to try and enslave the gangsters. This fight didn't last too long because Chompy was a part of it. Slavers' limbs start flying everywhere. One by one, the slavers were dropping like flies. And once the battle was over, Null was knocked out as he had no no armor and a crappy stick for a weapon, but everyone else was still conscious, able to loot whatever valuables the slavers had. The party then healed up and would continue on their way over to Henge. Now the skimmer population between Stout and Henge was pretty high, with them hitting our gangsters quite often for 30 to 50 damage. This did slow us down quite a bit, but by nighttime, the top G's would finally arrive at Henge. Since most of our group was injured, the first goal would be to hop in beds and to heal up. While I waited for everyone to rest and heal up, I had human go inside of the bars to scout for any potential recruits. That's when we ended up finding another hazmat suit skeleton just like Yumin, but this guy's name was Panar Tan. It's a pretty fucking awful name, but you know what, that's fine. He can be like a uh, apprentice to human, you know? Like, everybody needs an understudy. But other than Panur, <laughs> there weren't many uh, interesting possible recruits that I could find, so we went on to selling the loot the gang obtained from traveling to the city, bringing us to around 25k cats. And since our new recruits joined the gang without any weapons, stats, or armor, I wanted to at least equip them with some stuff, so I bought Panur some bare knuckles so he could learn martial arts. And then I bought Null a gnarly looking giant hammer. We then went over to the armor store and invested the rest of the money we had into some armor for both units and now we were ready to head back to Heft. The only downside was we'd be traveling much slower now since Nell was encumbered and needed quite a few strength levels until we'd be able to use the weapon properly. This was proven when our first fight was with a group of rebel farmers who ended up getting ambushed by some Garus as well. I could watch as Nell would swing his hammer at such a slow speed, he'd just never make contact with anything. The gangsters continued to heal and then they'd loot the bodies of all the farmers before moving on to the next group, this being a pack of slavers. The slavers are more near the gangsters skill level when 
when it comes to fighting, making this battle much more severe. Chompy did a great job of taking out a good handful of the slavers before the group would be able to loot them and then heal up. By the end of this, we had barely even left Henge, but with the amount of injuries the gang endured, I decided to send them back into Henge so they could rest up for a night and heal back up. The gang made a total of around 10,000 cats from their battles just outside the city, and then in the morning by 7am, it was time to continue to go back home to Heft. It would be a few hours later when the gangsters encountered a group of rebel farmers, and at this point a majority of the gangsters were doing fine in combat with only Nell and Panera being the weak link since they just joined. We did have a skimmer ambush happen right near the end of the battle so this brought on even more injuries for us to heal and we also had a ton of bodies to loot again. At this point I was tired of slavers trying to always enslave us, I mean these rebel farmers are kind of deadbeats, I've never seen any of them work on a farm before, none of them contribute to society that's what I'm saying, so we won't be missed. So I picked out six rebel farmers to give first aid to so then we could kidnap them and sell them into slavery. Like some evil motherfuckers and shit. I also have a mod which impacts faction relations when you end up healing other characters. So the farmers were like, oh, thank you for healing us. We got one reputation for healing each farmer. I had no fucking idea of a gangster's true intentions with them. Bringing all the rebels back to Henge to sell, this was also a good way to help Null get some strength training. As he needed quite a few more strength levels before he can even begin to start to walk around properly. Never mind, use the giant hammer. The gangsters got back to Henge on day 21 and went into the slave shop to sell our enemies. For each person we sold, we earned 400 cats, which is insanely low. Like, you can't buy anything for 400 cats. A food cube is like 1k cats, a fucking hand job's like 1.5k. That's way too much work just to get the bare essentials for one day. You'd have to, like, sell like 50 slaves to, uh, feed and fuck a family of, like, six. <laughs> I then had everyone heal once again before making the final true journey back to Heft. Third time's a charm, you know what they say. The gangsters were first to spot a group of rebels lacking, so we engaged the battle and used Chompy to run around their lines and take out their crossbowmen. Meanwhile, the rest of the gangsters could practice their melee skills against the rebels. After the battle, the gangsters continued attempting to reach Heft, with the first battle only leaving minor injuries, but ate up all of our first aid kits and repair kits. At this point, we now had to get to Heft ASAP, because Noel's leg was getting worse and worse by the minute, slowing the group down even more. After a quick skimmer attack, the group was even more injured, but luckily a group of passing traders walked by our heroes, letting us buy at least one first aid kit to heal Null and all of our non-robotic gangsters. After that, it would only take a few in-game hours, but the group finally made it back to Heft. While injured, they were all a bit stronger since they had left Heft at the start of the video. We also got back up to like 25k cats since our workers were doing the copper mining operation, so everything was looking pretty good. The gangsters all went into beds to try to rest up for the night. Meanwhile, a goblin cultist attempted to jump Izumi. It's a good thing I had her at least train a little bit on the training dummies and the dexterity pull because she managed to take down the cultist. Then I would have the top G's ambush for other goblins and after the battles the gangsters had a lot of loot since the goblins have pretty good loot on them. On top of that, I would pick up the ones that were still alive, heal them up, and then try to sell them into slavery. And now that we were near our home again, I decided to have no and Panera train their fighting skills while we're near here. Meanwhile, B01 decided to go into the United City's Emperor building. This is where Emperor Tengu was seated. B01 wanted to talk to him about the future since B01's gang is getting pretty big. You know, it's going to be official soon. This is when Tengu started going on about a quest, going to find a wizard that lives in a tower to the south. He would give us some kind of potion that would allow us to fight a Grieve Reef to save the Empire. B01, pretty confused, accepted this quest, to which every guard of Empire came up to B01, showering him in praises. This was obviously just some type of cruel joke. There is no tower, there is no grieve wraiths, except there are since I have a mod that adds them. This was just a direct spit in the face from the so-called noble Tengu. So B01 would make note of it for future reference, as right now, Tengu is probably pretty hard to kidnap or kill, but possibly in the future, once we get stronger, we might be able to. Our heroes spent the rest of the day in heft when all of a sudden a group of manhunters began fighting them in the middle of the streets. At this point in the game, the gangsters are now enemies with the manhunters, so the manhunters are going to attack them on sight, and guards will just look at it as a civil dispute. There's also a decent amount of them, and with the whole group split up, it was pretty rough for the start of a battle. The group was still able to overcome the manhunters and knock them all out, but this was a clear sign that even if the city gates, our heroes aren't exactly safe. 
The gangsters would then have to heal, which went into the nighttime, until a group of rebel farmers ambushed our copper miner, Brittany Ears. The group was of course split up, with the first half going down right away. Now Noel holding Chompy for strength XP, he had to put Chompy down to quote unquote let the dog out, and Chompy ran in just in time as B01 was knocked down. Chompy and the others would fight the remaining rebels until victory was achieved, and after this battle we had yet again a lot of healing to do. It was looking like the next 24 hours are going to be spent mainly sleeping at the bar. In the evening, everybody was healed up, so they went back out into the desert to find a group of manhunters to fight. Now, this battle was pretty intense. I mean, limbs were flying and grown men were crying. The gangsters knocked out all the slavers pretty easily, even killing a few. So after healing and looting, B01 had a pretty good idea. Fuck it. How about we enslave the slavers and sell the slavers to the slave store? The group loved the idea, so they picked out six slavers to heal up and pick up, and then the gangsters began to walk back to Hef. Slavers in their hands, ready to sell, the irony of the situation was actually really funny. I mean, just think about it, Sally sold seashells near the seashore, and now Croc will sell slavers to the slave store. Unfortunately though, when we were like right near the gate, maybe a minute away, another group of slavers spotted us and began combat. This would knock down some of the gangsters who were holding healed up fucking slavers. So every time we ended up getting knocked out, a slaver would be set free, making it some kind of like reinforcement bullshit. The whole plan was just step by step backfiring on me. On top of that, we were as slow as maple syrup when it came to moving, so skimmers walked right into the group making the situation much worse. And to put the cherry on top, once we arrived to the slave store, there wasn't even the normal option to sell who we're carrying, but just members of our party. Like, I'm not selling Choppy for like 2.5k, what am I, a fucking meth addict? The only workaround that I could think of was researching imprisonment and then building some prisoner cages, that way we could attempt to recruit the slavers and sell them directly that way. But right before I was able to grab some books, I didn't notice Ank was still knocked out near all the slavers. So once a slaver woke up, he went over, healed Ank and fucking enslaved him. We were lucky enough to slave Ank, but the slave status does still take some time to wear off, which is a huge fucking annoyance. While Ank was hiding inside, we then bought some books, researched imprisonment, and then built a couple cages inside of our heft house. Once I did this though, I realized the slavers would want an upfront fee of 20,000 cats to join our group. Seeing as we're going to be selling them for about 2k cats, that makes us a negative 18k profit. That's not going to fucking work. So we're going to have to come up with a new plan, and that plan is going to be to starve them to near death until that 20k goes down to maybe a piece of dried meat. Today, we'll be be leaving our home of heft as we try to search for new recruits so far i have skeletons i have humans and i have hivers so i'm looking for shecks the group will have a long way to go since we're currently in the united cities territory so making it to shek homeland will take a few days in game when it comes to making a gang or team in kenshi i think that any number is really fine i mean you can go as hard as you want if you have too many people you can always up the squad multipliers but me myself and i when i'm starting a playthrough i usually like to focus on around 7 to 12 characters. And then I'll also add on extra characters to help fill the gaps with say working and mining and production. We've been working pretty hard in the past few videos, slowly but surely they've been able to stand their ground against most groups that they encounter in the desert. But the main way for making money for the first few weeks is by finding random groups in the wild and then fighting them to take their precious loot. Every battle we get into makes our team a little bit stronger and adds to our net worth of cats. And other than finding recruits, it's really important for us to get lots of money so we're able to fully finish equipping our gangsters. We want to have top tier amazing weapons and top tier strong armor. Now the gangsters pulled three battles pretty quickly here. There are a lot of bodies lying around just waiting to be looted and we need to heal up badly so I decided we had to go back to heft in order to sell what we had and then heal our party. On the way back, Chompy was acting as a bodyguard escort, defending the group from all the wild skimmers that were wandering about. The gangsters would get back to the bar in heft and then sell all the weapons they got and that would bring us up to 82,000 cats and then by the next morning everybody was healed up and ready to adventure immediately the group found some manhunters to engage into combat with now the battle with the manhunters didn't hurt the gangsters too much but the skimmers pff, they fucking hurt the gangsters there's like so many skimmers around here though if it wasn't for chompy i'm 100 certain i'd be having a miserable time playing this right now <laughs> i just can't do it i can't take this shit no more man
After that battle, Yumin ended up losing an arm, and we had more loot, so again, we had to go back to Heft. I, I promise we're gonna leave Heft soon, guys. Don't go away yet. The gangster sold the loot and purchased a nice new arm for Yumin. It gives him more health and an 18% bonus to dexterity, so he's stronger than he was before with his normal arm, at least. Now, during this time, Ank was sleeping at the bar, and he was actually found by a guard there. If you remember in the last episode, he got enslaved in the middle of a fight when he was knocked out, so they ended up imprisoning him and putting him in the United City's jail, making it even better if there was no guard to bail him out. So I just sneakily had Ank lockpick the cage, escape, and then B-01 would carry him out of Heft. In the middle of day 28, the group left Heft and began their journey of the desert once again. Let's have a start of day 29, where the gangsters would encounter a group of grass pilots pirates. They're nothing impressive, they're just a bunch of assholes. They're literally two letters away from being a name I would call my friends in grade 4. But names are deceiving, and the grass pirates were quite strong for their silly name. And even though they did knock down most of our party, we did end up still winning. Now they had a lot of good loot and weapons and armor, so I looted up and then got everyone healed. Since everybody was injured and we had loot to sell, I sent the gangsters back to heft. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Could you imagine? They continued their journey with a mission to create the ultimate gang in Kenshi, with the first stop being Flat's Lagoon, down to the south. They would stop at a way station fast to heal, but they didn't find anyone cool to recruit. Next, they had to travel through Venge, at the worst time of day since it was during sunlight hours. If you've never been to Venge, well, uh, you're lucky. These giant beams of light come down and they strike our human fleshy gangsters. Ah! You know, if they kill them, burn them. They make them take just a bunch of damage, so humans can't be around here. Skeletons are fine, but humans get effed up. So, of course, half of our party got knocked out due to the giant light beams, and we'd have to carry our gangsters throughout the land of Venge. We'd also have to try to keep on a lookout and not run into any of the wandering psychopath thrall groups that inhabit these lands. It did take all day, but thankfully, at least by nighttime, the group made it through Venge and then was approaching the city of Flats Lagoon. Now, this is a cool little square city. I really like it. It's pleasing on the eyes. There's a couple bars and nice stores here. It's set up beautiful. I set the gangsters into a bar to heal and find any possible recruits. Firstly, I got distracted because there's a skeleton fox trader who had a variety of unique weapons. So I upgraded a few of our gangsters weapons and then I looked around the bar and found this guy called Fox. It was called something else but I named him the Foxbot. He's a skeleton fox and he uh, rocks purple armor. Pretty cool, eh? After that, we hit up the armor shop and got rid of all of our shitty low-grade armor and in exchange, we spent a lot of money but we got some high grade suits of armor, which will help us a lot in battle. Like I said before, armor and weapons are a big part alongside stats when it comes to making a strong gang in Kenshi, so keeping a close balance between both is crucial. After I upgraded our gangsters, it was time to leave and then head over to the swamp. It was the middle stop in between us and a Shek city. Luckily, the group actually didn't encounter any enemies on the way, so by the start of day 31, they were already at a bar. Firstly, a Greenlander named Stubbs caught my attention since he had a few skills already leveled up. We had a quick drunken conversation with him to which he joined our group for 5,000 cats. When I spoke to Haunt, a man who was down on his luck since his wife was kidnapped by slavers and forced to work in a slaver camp. I told him, that's pretty bad bro, you should join us and we'll kill slavers together. So he agreed and joined the gang. Now it's off to the Shek city of Squin. But right after leaving the city on the way, we ended up encountering some swamp bandits, but we took them down pretty easily. The enemies around here have really decent loot, but I would never live in a swamp. I gotta say, this is like my least favorite biome in Kenshi. I hate traveling through the swamp. It might just be because I'm always recording my gameplay, but it always goes so choppy. Like, it goes choppy as hell. The load times too are like ridiculous. Like, this took me like 30 minutes to go into shark and then leave. I also don't like how almost every time, religiously, Everybody walks dumb, you know, like they'll run for like 5-10 seconds and stop, and then they'll run after like 3 or 4 seconds and then do it again. It's whack, and I'll fuck with it. While the group was leaving, we watched some nasty looking river rappers come over and start to dine on the corpses of our victims. It was a pretty ironic sight, I mean it's better to have them be eaten than to have our gangsters get eaten. Pretty gnarly, eh? Shortly after, the gangsters found another group to fight and handled them with ease. It took a few hours, but the battle concluded. We looted, and then it was on our way to Squin. Huzzah! We were finally nearly there, near the end of day 32. We arrived in Squin, the Shek City. Now we could actually rest and heal and shop, but mainly find the Shek recruits I desperately wanted. When it comes to making a gang, I always try to do it a little bit carefully, especially after doing so many playthroughs on YouTube. Free plugin, by the way, I've done like four Kenshi playthroughs if you like this one. Generally, I like to have a mix of all races, unless I'm playing like a roleplay type thing. 
It's just a fun way for me to play as each character ends up standing out more. Not only to myself, but hopefully to all of you as well. But I couldn't help but notice there is this huge ass bulky boy standing outside a broken house. I can only imagine he destroyed it himself. I started speaking to him and he tells us that he's too strong to join us, to which Foxbot tells him he's shit and basically just old rust. The big boy likes that we stood up to him and offers to join us for 10k cats. Cheap price to pay for one major badass unit and a really cool thumb. Now. He holds two swords and is classified as like an animal or a machine, so he can't pick up anyone, but he does have really high health. After him, B01 went to a bar and recruited Kang, a local Sheck with some combat abilities. And after looking around a little bit longer, we found Ruka and added her to the team as well. Now I was waiting for the shops to open when I saw this huge gang of slavers to fight. They were just leaving the city, so we couldn't attack them yet, but I had to group follow them a good distance until there were no guards and we could begin combat. Now that we had a group of like 12 members, this battle went really smoothly. There were like 20 slavers and we still steamrolled them for the loot and XP. After picking up everything, we would head back to Squin and I picked up some more backpacks and then building materials, iron plates, and books as now it was finally time to start to settle down a base. I wanted to do it near this area as well. Firstly, it's my favorite area in Kenshi to settle down a base in. And right now, it makes the most sense. I know this area has a lot of mid-level factions who fight us just for existence, so we'll be able to level up fast as well as make money from looting corpses. Now, heading into the Sten Desert, I was looking for a nice place to settle when suddenly Suddenly, our heft miner Azumi got ambushed and knocked out. I kind of forgot about her in between a bong break, so I came back and it was right back down to base building business. Now that I had found a cool spot in the Sten Desert, every base needs a place to make building materials. So the main thing was setting up a stone mine and stone processor to start with. Then I added some storage crates for each of them. I then placed a simple storm house and began construction. This will be enough for us to start at least a foundation for our base and buy a few interior workstations that we need, like a research bench. I also then named the settlement to Bad Guy City and named the gang to Catastrophes. Shout of the home slice in the comments for the cool name. After getting everything built and selecting what technology options I wanted, I quickly realized we had no power. We had no way to create power as well, which was required to watch porn. <laughs> it was required to use a research bench. Thank God Brittany Ears and Izumi were still left in heft. But Izumi, our main researcher, was still knocked out. Remember like earlier? A paragraph or two ago <laughs> so we had to pick up izumi thank god britney ears was there we had to wait all night for a shop to open up since they had no more med kits over there this took hours in game but by afternoon izumi was researching wind power and we could begin to set up our first two turbines we needed copper to build them so i sent a few people to copper mining when all of a sudden a group of shek stopped by to request tributes since we're on their land they want free food from our farms we don't even grow food yet what are we talking about we have like a stone mine and a shitty house <laughs> so the best option for us is going to be to tell them to shove it as they'll come back later to fight us and checks can be great for training defense and toughness as you'll see garlet made a fast trip back to squin for more materials and then ran back to bad guy city and i then decided to put down an l house for more room it costs 35 building materials but it'll be much worth it near the end of day 35 the time was coming the shacks were on their way to fight foreigners you dwell on our sacred shack country says their leader now this no doubt means a war and it's with an army of 20 supermen we had quite a battle ahead of us immediately the shack start to pour in smacking our gangsters dealing massive damage unfortunately within like 20 seconds most of the group was unconscious and defeated b01 was still of course alive because he's a g chompy was also the other hero of the battle he's always cool but still chompy and b01 still couldn't fight off all the shacks because they were using planks entire gang was party wiped and then this started a hellish cycle for the next day in game we'd be waking up up, fighting them until knocked back out the shecks were planning i guess to take over our base which wasn't good thankfully there was a group of crowds chosen who came by to do a bit of work leave it to the shecks to also fight the shecks <laughs> now along with some menders slowly one by one they started going down and eventually half of the army was defeated. So by day 36, most of the Sheks would start to heal up and leave. And while we did get our asses kicked, this is why the gang moved here. By fighting Sheks, we'll gain fast experience, and within a few weeks, we'll be on par or maybe even better than them. On the downside though, we lost like two different characters' limbs during battle, 
so I'll need to make a special trip for skeleton limbs in the next video. Let me just start out by saying this is going to be one of those episodes where I really want to say we got a lot done, or like, here's what we're doing today, but unfortunately, not every Kenshi play session can go like this. For the most part, this was a miserable day of struggling. And before I begin, let me just say, I spent around twice as long recording and playing as I normally do to make this episode. But at the very least, I can promise you that by the end of this video, you won't really be that impressed. Either way, there are still some jokes, you know, you got your boy Croc hosting an episode, so prepare yourself, grab some popcorn or a hash pipe, and strap yourself in for a series of miserable events. Up to this point, we've been doing great like in the first 30 days we got over a dozen people recruited into our gang we're now set up shop in the stand desert but this is our very first criminal headquarters and so far it's lacking a lot of necessities we got attacked by sheks at the end of the last video so now we are recovering we had a few people who lost limbs so we'll need to go out and buy some and that's going to be our first course of action today so we went to a way station but didn't seem like there's any robotics there so it was off to the next one which was way farther now i want you guys to keep the scenario in mind the scenario of you know me trying to do something and then having to do something completely different because the plans fuck up we're on day 36 so i'm hoping to find the limbs and then find a skeleton repair bed because i really need to heal all my skeletons on day 37 the skeletons got into a fight with a pretty big group of dust bandits but the dust bandits aren't that huge of a deal all of them have stats that are like under level 20 so they aren't nearly as much of a problem as their sheks are and even with finding a second group it wouldn't really phase the gangsters at all just a lot of free experience waiting to be claimed. The only downside is that most of the dust bandit loot isn't worth a whole lot of cats so we don't get much money from these battles. Now eventually the skeleton gangsters arrived at the way station and went right into the mechanic shop to buy Panera Tan a new leg. And then we went to go use the skeleton repair bed. Now I brought all of our skeletons out here so each of them could use the bed but when I tried to use it I couldn't because there wasn't enough power. So even though we were able to buy a leg we were still stuck with a problem that everyone still needed to be healed. I mean what kind of poverty ridden shit is this dude? The uh, dude's so chainsaw arms, but he doesn't have a battery or like a, you know, a wind generator, a little fan set up. So I looked into it briefly, and not very long as you'll see, and I figured out I need two books to research for skeleton repair beds. They're special books, so I sold a bunch of stuff to get enough money for two ancient science books. I figured we'd just build the skeleton repair bed back of the base, so I sent all the skeletons back to Bad Guy City. And while we don't have much of the stuff researched yet, I decided to set up some bear training equipment. Just some basic training dummies, a thief box, a couple law picking boxes, as well as a couple dexterity pools. Now before our skeletons were all back at Bad Guy City, the Sheks arrived for another battle. So majority of these humans and like fleshy gangsters just started to bleed out left and right. Meanwhile, the skeletons arrived just in time at the end, but they still didn't really do too much they weren't able to take down the sheks either at very least we were killing our fair share of them like the sheks would leave and have to go back home to heal because we killed half our group now we currently have two normal beds for healing and no skeleton repair bed so my next mission for the gang is obviously going to be to get a repair bed set up but unfortunately those science books i bought are useless as we need engineering research for the tech to unlock the beds not ancient science books silly croc so as i was waiting for everybody to heal up a different group of sheks arrived fuckers we had to fight all of them but with everybody here at the same time we really didn't do too bad we still didn't end up winning but thankfully the group fought hard enough so by the end of a battle a majority of the sheks were knocked out or dead and even though the group didn't win this battle they still took down even more than half of the sheks they basically took out most of them this time they're all knocked out or dead the remaining few that were still alive would flee back home leaving us a bunch of planks and weapons to loot they all sell for around 1k cats making it a good side hustle after battles but we now had to wait even longer now as everyone was injured again and with no repair beds it was going be a long wait for our limbs to heal so while waiting i decided b01 would go to squin so we could sell some loot and then buy some materials and books we needed i realized we had no iron refinery set up so i laid down the blueprints at our city for one and this is when i realized izumi must have died as she wasn't left in heft only Brittany ears was so this meant we had now achieved our first death of a series Woo! pat on the back guys but we were down a researcher which sucks and moves us back in progress so i had to move on with life either way 
We just have some storage bins for the iron operation. Evan B01 was going to head out back to Squin with a full backpack of copper. And I would have him hold a body. That way he could at least train some strength experience. You know, get at least one thing done in this video. Once he arrived and sold all of his copper, we began to look for some new mercenaries. Since we're having a pretty hard time with wild checks, B01's found some Hiver mercs for hire. We set them to 24 days. That way the outpost would now at least have some protection for a few weeks. On top of that, we then found someone named Blade Dancer who was highly skilled in offering herself as a solo bodyguard. For 9k cats, I was able to recruit them into our gang, and I renamed him to Toro. He has high stats, like in the 50s and 60s, and currently maining katanas. So Toro will be like the ninja who bodyguards B01 as he travels to the grid now in search of engineering research. The first battle they got into when they entered the swamp ended really well. I mean, each of them just did one hit each, and they knocked down the swamp person. They'll make a fantastic team and B01 will be able to explore without being left stranded if he gets stuck into a coma. They still aren't a match for a group of around, you know, 20 swamp people, but they still managed to hold their own and take down quite a few. It was now day 42 and both of them entered the grid in search of a complex. Now, this isn't too hard to find since the grid isn't very big. We arrive at a complex, but get this, we don't have a lockpicking skills required to even attempt breaking into the chest. Strength wouldn't work either. And without tools, we were basically screwed. We could find a few things there, but basically fuck all worth coming out here for. So we would have to head out of a grid empty-handed and come back once we have some lockpicking skills. Both of them would make it back to Bad Guy City the next day, just in time for a Sheck group to arrive. It was like the third time they were fighting us in this video, isn't that nuts? This time though, our group did prove we were getting stronger at least, as we had a few people get knocked out, but a majority of the gangsters were able to beat the Sheks. This gave us a lot more weapons to loot and eventually sell so B01 and Toro filled their bags up and headed over to Squin. Now while we were in Squin selling loot and kicking dirt or something some settlers arrived to Bad Guy City. We were seeking refuge and in exchange we would help defend the city against people like the Sheks. So I decided to take them in. We needed normal citizens after all in between all the criminal activities we had going on. Now this has nothing to do with progress but I did notice since B01 has a lamp it kind of looks like a dick. I mean like like, look at it, bro. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about this. Should I remove a Robocock or should I let it hang? Now, since the shop and heft had engineering research for sale at 8k each, I figured I'd make the money and then buy two of them. It was supposed to be simple. Brittany years could go buy them, bring it to a research bench, we could research it, and then bam, we would have it. But when I checked on Brittany ears, she was fucking glitched onto the wall. I tried for like a few minutes. I tried looking for a way down and a way out, but there was just none. The stairs, the fucking stairs that they had there they were blocked from exiting or entering you couldn't move by the like bottom of them so now we were stuck and screwed and there's no one else in heft so i wasn't gonna run somebody up to half, I would take forever. I would have to save reset squad positions and then send Britney ears to bad guy city. So this means we saved Britney ears, but the heft copper dream is now dead. We also didn't give it engineering research we've been looking for like the entire video. So that screwed us as well. We now had to make a mission to find a new place to buy it from. I know I can go to heft, but that's like literally across the map. I'd like to go somewhere a bit closer. I sent B01 and Toro over to the Sheck city called Hope, and man, there is not that much hope there. Thank you, thank you. You follow me on YouTube and socials in the description below. I'm here all night. This place was pretty poor, and it didn't really have what we needed, so it was off to the next town. I sent them to New Kralia, but this was just a shit outpost, so we left and went back home. I wanted Toro to train on lockpicking while B01 was traveling and did some strength training. So since Toro was no longer bothered, bodyguard in B01, the gangster Zagan would accompany B01 throughout Squin and into the swamp. This was getting B01 strength well into the 50s, which was fantastic. And it took a long time, but eventually they would end up arriving in the swamp city a shark. And sure enough, the shop the one shop we need to get into, it's blocked by a tree or something. Like, you can't even get in there. Who the fuck put this tree here? Why is there a tree here? Why? What the hell, man? Like, I was getting so genuinely upset, even, like, recording right now. I'm like, why? Who put the tree there? I was just thinking to myself, I was like, man, this is gonna be a bad episode. I already wasted hours. I ain't getting shit done. I'm in a swamp right now. It's so laggy. It's just a miserable time. I decided it'd be time to send B01 back home and just say, fuck it. This isn't gonna be the episode where we get anything done okay this isn't a pillar for progress in our series b01 and zagan then got into a fight with some dust bandits which slowed them down a lot this used the last bit of b01's med kit 
So he would carry Zagan into Squin, and once he sold all the copper he had, he had around 55 strength levels. This gave B01 enough money to buy a new repair kit, and then when the two got back home, they made it just in time for a Dust Bandit raid. Now, while we weren't getting what we wanted done, we still made great progress in some other ways. We're still one step closer to becoming the strongest gang in Kenshi, so that's where I'm going to end this episode. Currently, we're set up in the Sten Desert, and we've been fighting with the Sheks a lot over their territory. I didn't want to pay the land tax as there's really no point at this point it's been like one or two weeks of struggling but the gang's really strong now the main goal in today's video is going to be all about setting up the remaining things we need at the base along with giving a certain someone some unique arms like i'm sure you guys know who it's fucking beep that's a thumbnail and the title we're just do we're doing that at like six or seven minutes into the video at bad guy city i placed down a market stall with a small chest in it i did this as this is a great way to make some money at your base without ever having to leave it a lot of these checks that we've been slaying and fighting usually leave really nice weapons which sell for around like 700 to a thousand cats so now we could pick them up and then put them in this little chest and people traveling by will buy them meanwhile b01 zagan and toro were traveling through the border zone in order to get to a way station they would stop to pick on some wandering slavers and any bandits they would find on the way since these three are easily the strongest units in the group other than chompy don't get me wrong chompy is really strong like he's one of the top guys in our series but his health ends up holding him back once he does get overwhelmed or does get a few heavy hits landed on him but once making it to the way station the three were able to buy engineering research if you didn't catch the last video well you're probably lucky it was a hell of a time trying to get what i needed done like i was trying to set up a repair bed since the repair bed at the way station doesn't work due to there not being enough power so now we're going to be able to build one over at bad guy city and this is going to save us a lot of time and money in the long run on the way back the three gangsters stopped to take on about 20 to 30 different dust bandits and even though they were greatly outnumbered, the three gangsters just dominated the battlefield, sending dusty limbs flying down the hill. Turns out at the end of his battle, this was an entire camp of dust bandits that we had killed. And since we're really strong now, I know we should probably go to the dust bandit hideout one of these days to take down the dust king. Now before the gangsters got back home, a group of Sheks arrived to try to take over the city once again. And even though our strongest gangsters weren't there and we had all of our sort of weaker gangsters, we were still able to hold our own with the settlers and the mercs that we had to protect the outpost. At this point, we're not nearly having as hard of a time against these groups of Sheks, with only a few people going down instead of a whole group or everyone. This gives us more chances to loot even more weapons that we could put into our market stall, so we'd keep making money off of these battles. The gangsters arrived home and we could start researching the skeleton repair bed. And after finishing the research, I placed down a blueprint. It felt so nice to finally have one of these set up. If you don't know, skeletons and Kenshi usually receive like wear and tear damage over time. This will lower their overall health in each limb, so it's pretty important to have all your guys use skeleton repair beds. After everyone was healed, I wanted to explore, so I selected five gangsters being B01, Panertan, Yumin, Zagan, and Toro. They would be a part of a new Top G squad and attempt to explore down south in the search of ruins or labs that we could loot. They encountered a large number of skin spiders while traveling, which they were able to beat, but this slowed them down a lot. The gangsters would eventually find a campsite, which had a small house there. Now this belonged to a few Sheks, one of the Sheks being named The Watcher. He had very high combat stats and also a 50,000 cat bounty on him. He seemed pretty interesting, and as he didn't attack B01, we decided to take this chance to talk to the Shek outlaw. The Watcher tells the gangsters this is the land of a Bugmaster, and he suggests we go back home or leave. The Bugmaster is one of the strongest outlaws in the land of Kenshi, and even at this point in the game, I have high doubts that our gangsters would want to run into him yet. So we sent the gangsters back on their way back to bad guy city i mean i'm sure we could risk it and fight the bug master but there's no point we might as well get stronger and set it up better the gangsters had a long way to go as well in between this i decided to send ank and scarlet from bad guy city over to squin to sell some copper that we had and also get them a few strength levels they unloaded all the copper for around 20,000 cats and then picked out a few dozen books for research then once the top g's got back home the books were in the research bench and we picked out a few more texts we needed i also wanted to put down a long house that way we could use it as a training building put all of our training dummies in there the only problem was right in the middle of me doing this scarlet got like stuck right in the building i couldn't pick her up or do anything so i tried to do a uh, shift f12 that caused the game to crash i was very lucky though i had like an auto save for maybe a minute or two prior when i already placed down the long house so thank okran for that 
The next goal was getting the top G's to travel into Mongrel. This is a city to the north in Kenshi, which is surrounded by mist, cannibals, and corrupted hivers. I came here to find Beep, but firstly, we found a cool guy named Walker40. He seemed to need repairs, and under inspection, it seems like if we got him a new CPU, that would end up doing the trick. I didn't have a CPU on me, but I will remember this, as I really want that guy. He looks sick. It took me quite some time to look around for him, but Beep actually found the gangsters first. He was yelling his name, Beep! Beep! Over and over again. B01 says hello to Beep and convinces him that he's some sort of genius. Beep explains that he was expelled from his hive for being defective, so he wants to get strong to prove to the world that he's better than that. Beep said he wants to be a strong swordsman, but B01 has an even better idea. He immediately picks him up, throws him over his shoulder, and heads into the nearest robotic shop. This is so we could buy a spe this is so we could buy a couple specialist grade chainsaw arms. After grabbing those, we started to head back to Bad Guy City. Now over at Bad Guy City, Scarlet finished construction of a longhouse, so I could begin to fill it up with all the training dummies I wanted. I have a mod that lets me train most skills to around 70, which might piss off some people because they're whack. Listen, I got a full-time job and a life. If you want me to spend hundreds of hours making a Kenshi series and training melee attack and doing all this stuff, you're gonna need to drop a sub like the video, comment, sacrifice your firstborn son, and keep pushing my content to get me out of the hood. This will save me a lot of time, and most characters will only level up to around 50 before it starts to take weeks to get to level 70. Moving forward, on day 52, the top Gs got stuck on some terrain, which had us lose quite a bit of time. I had to guide them around this magical barrier bullshit in order to get back on track, which I really hate doing. It's just one of the things in Kenshi. I had Ank doing runs during us so we could get all the materials we needed to build the training dummies and all the training stations we needed at Bad Guy City. But of course, halfway back to Bad Guy City, he got jumped by a bunch of dust bandits and was knocked out, so I had to send a top G's over to him to heal him and escort Ank back to Bad Guy City. Once we could start to finish all the builds and complete our training room, Beep would be staying home to work on training, as all of his stats were at basically level 1 or level 0. I have the top G's load up on some iron so they can make some money and strength levels on their way to Squin. Now Beep was slowly but surely getting some of his stats up, but a huge huge threat from the Shex was approaching Bad Guy City. Thankfully the top G's had just got back, but there must have been like 40 Shex. I really thought for a minute, oh no, this might be it. But thankfully, having all of our gangsters plus the town folk plus the mercenaries on our side, we ended up securing the victory over the strong Shek warriors. The only person who wasn't at Bad Guy City was Toro, as she was going on a quick run to grab an engineering research we could unlock the peeler machine. This will allow us to give Beep some of those cool chainsaw arms in a painful but yet still very effective way. It was now day 54, and it was time. B01 went to the training room with Zagan and Toro, and together they would watch Beep have his arms and legs shredded off of his body. Now this is actually some great toughness XP training, like Beep got up to like level 20 or so toughness by the end of this. You know, put some hair on his chest, build some character. After all four limbs were gone, B01 picked Beep back up and observed the gross stick-like limbs that were detached from his body and lying near the peeler machine. Beep was now just a torso. He couldn't really do anything other than crawl, you know, be on the ground, be a loser. So it was time to make him Cyber Beep. I attached her chainsaw arms and was fucking pumped. Just looks sick. Beep's gonna fuck up somebody. But, uh, I of course forgot to get him some legs. So he was still pretty useless, you know, until we could get him some legs. I had Toro go over to the way station as fast as possible in order to grab a masterwork and a specialist grade skeleton leg for Beep. This will at least give Beep a lot more health in his legs than before, as well as just making his life better, as right now he's crawling on the ground, and I'm sure that just fucking sucks. By the start of day 55, Toro arrived at Bad Guy City and gave Beep his new shiny legs. Put on each leg and was now able to walk, run, and fight again. These limbs have a lot more health, and his chainsaw arms give him a huge damage bonus to martial arts. Even though we now had the limbs put on our beep, he was still pretty weak, so I sent him into the training room for a few hours to get some levels before I'd get him to go into his first battle. Since the stats weren't too high yet, I sent him after a leftover bandit from a previous raid. So Beep would run over to the copper mine and begin fighting with one of the berserkers that was left there. And this was his very first battle, which <laughs> it didn't go too well. The chainsaws look really cool, and they have lots of potential, but in order to use them efficiently, we're gonna need to level Beep's strength up in martial arts a bunch. Right now he's only hitting for 9 damage, and that isn't too swagged out. Either way though, we at least now have what I consider to be one of the coolest forms of Cyber Beep in 
in our gang. On top of that, we also made great progress getting the skeleton repair bed and the training room set up. And next time, we'll be training Beep even more so we can possibly join the Top G's and maybe their first labs run. It's been a couple difficult months so far for the Catastrophes. With over a dozen members and Beep being our most recent recruit, the gang is starting to become quite a force to reckon with. We're living in the Sten Desert, currently swagged up, and in our last episode we set up a peeler machine and then gave Beep some chainsaw arms. Beep and some other gangsters are pretty low leveled, so in this episode our goal is going to be training some of the gangsters left at Bad Guy City. And meanwhile, Beep is going to load up on some iron to do some strength training. I do this with a lot of characters, I'll send them with a backpack full of iron while we carry someone like Choppy so that they can earn strength experience as fast as possible, while also say if a dust bandit group sneaks up on them, then at least Choppy's there to take care of it. Now meanwhile the rest of the gangsters will be wasting time trying to sell some of the materials we've accumulated over at Bad Guy City. And after we were able to do that I wanted to send them over towards the grid. Last video we visited the grid with B01 and Toro but neither of them had enough levels in lockpicking to get the chests there. So I basically had to go back this episode to claim the rest of the loot and see if there's maybe any research books we could get. Thankfully the 19 levels we obtained in lockpicking by training were just enough to get into the chests at the grid. This was great as we got three ancient science books, a cool pole arm, plus a mother loot. Now just beside the grid is the crater. This place is pretty dangerous with a lot of bandits and beak things roaming the area, but I really wanted to go in to go into the ruin there. We'd have to be very careful to not get party wiped, as beak things can't eat our skeletons, but we still could eat Toro. The best way I find to handle it is trying to lure a couple beak things at a time, as getting overwhelmed by them is just hell. So we'd slay three to five of them at a time, and after over a dozen beak things, the gangsters were pretty injured, but they were still in fine enough condition to make their way up a ramp of a ruin. Once they got there, they entered the building, and immediately, they woke all the security spiders in the complex. Now, while the security spiders are pretty strong, as they're meant to guard the sacred and ancient loot that's held there, the gangsters were just strong enough to end up taking them down. I made sure to loot all the corpses for the skeleton muscles as well, as this kills the spiders, and it gives us 2k profit from each one we loot. We searched for any loot that we could find on the first floor, but the only useful things we could find are some tools. Now, it was on our way to the second floor. There was another few security spiders here, but there really wasn't any loot. Now, the third floor, this is where it's at. After healing up from the second battle, I had the gangsters head to the top floor to clear out a skeleton and the rest of the security spiders that guarded the loot. We were just strong enough to pull it off, and we can now begin looting the top floor. All the white crates have some kind of loot in them that spawns in them sometimes, and there's also all of these locked chests for us to try to get into. Now there's a lot of stuff in the chest, there's supplies, trading goods, armors, AI cores, this was a huge score for the gangsters. The very last chest had a 0% chance to be lockpick, but thankfully we ended up finding some tools on the first floor so B01 was able to crack it open for a few ancient science books and some more loot. Looking just outside of a ruin, we could see many battles began between travelers and and beak things. Looking just outside of a ruin, we could see many battles going on between both travelers and beak things. Since the group was so injured, I really wanted to get the heck out of here and go back to Bad Guy City. Meanwhile, Beep was still training his strength level in the border zone with Chompy, but he ended up getting knocked out by some dust bandits finally. For Beep, we need to level up mainly strength, martial arts, toughness, and a few other skills to increase the overall effect of our unarmed combat, as right now Beep's getting his ass kicked. Now, Bad Guy City was still being targeted by local Sheks, but we were doing really well now, with a lot of the gangsters outranking the Sheks now, and with the help of the local settlers and the mercs that we hired, these battles were like no longer crippling us at least as much as before. Beep got back to Bad Guy City with a strength level of 25 and then started to train up martial arts while he was awaiting the rest of the Top Gs to get back home. By afternoon on day 59, the Top Gs arrived back and I had them start training as well. Beep needed a little bit more time to develop, so it wouldn't really hurt if we spent a bit of time increasing than everyone else's levels and after two full days of training i had my gangsters fill up on iron and copper so we could now have everyone do some strength training together the top g's would bring beep along and now begin to wander throughout the border zone and train all of her strength levels they kept on finding an odd random group of dust bandits which they were just absolutely crushing before they ended up making their way into vain right now i have a main goal of reaching mongrel if you remember in the last video there's a pretty cool like walker skeleton there i came here to find beep but firstly we found a a cool guy named Walker40, but I couldn't interact with him until I gave him a new CPU. Now that we have a CPU from the ruin, I wanted to go find him. But of course, as typical it is in Kenshi, when I got to Mongrel, he was nowhere to be found. Last time when I went there, the guy was basically everywhere. 
I, I couldn't go anywhere without finding him. But now, I was playing Where's Waldo with a dude that probably didn't even spawn. The only thing I ended up doing was upgrading our armor, so I wasted like five more minutes playing Where's Waldo looking for the skeleton walker guy, but I couldn't find him, so I just gave up and went back home. If that isn't a perfect representation of how most of my plans in Kenshi goes, I don't know what is. At about four of the bad guys, city gangsters load up on iron and other supplies and then head to Squin so they can make us some money. And by day 64, the top G's made it back to bad guy city where they were going to heal up before heading over to the Dust King Tower. With seven strong gangsters, B01 was confident they could take down the weak faction easily with a proper strategy. Also, uh, someone remind me to get limbs for Stubbs. It's ironic because his name is Stubbs, but he had no arm for like two episodes, and now he's missing a leg, and I didn't replace that during this episode, so somebody please remind me. If not, I know I'm gonna forget, and he's just gonna be like a perma torso for the next 10 or 20 episodes. It was 4am, the top G's arrived at the Dust King Tower. With a huge gate out front, they decided to sneak up slowly. With nighttime being on their side, the Dust Bandits didn't even see it coming, so the top G's picked the lock of the gate and then opened it up. The Dust Bandits surprisingly had no one guarding this gate, so when they opened it up, the battle was was on. Right away, Panur Tan got knocked out, but we still had six ultra strong gangsters on our side. Beep was hitting a lot of flashy moves now with his chainsaw arms, but he was still getting hit quite a bit. Then, the Dust King ran down the tower. With everyone else inside fighting the Dust Bandits, B01 and his bodyguard Toro would attack the Dust King from both sides. And eventually, all of the bleeding and injuries would lead to him being knocked out. This means we had won the battle. I'd heal him up though, because I still need a thumbnail photo, so let me get back up real quick, but... You know, we had won the battle, the Top Cheese took down the Dust King. All that was really left now was just to explore and loot the tower and the corpses. The Dust King had lots of good equipment for us to take off of him, and then plus his 35k cat bounty, we're going to be making a lot of money from turning him in. Inside of a tower, there isn't like a lot of research books for loot, but there's quite a few specialist grade items and repair kits worth taking. On the third floor of the Dust King Tower, there's a bunch of prisoner cages with one prisoner inside. Human talks to him, and the guy is super excited, like he hasn't had human human or I guess skeleton contact in years. He says he snuck out one night to meet up with a girl that he was writing letters to and sure enough he got ambushed by bandits and held for ransom. But dude is broke so nobody cared and he ended up staying locked there for a few seasons. So human tells him he'll break him out. First human unlocks his shackles and then sets him free from the cage and the guy's so grateful he joins the gang right away. Now it's off to Squin, with the Dust Bandits taking down, they'll slowly start to weaken across the land and turn to chaos without their leader, which will be great for us. The group arrived in Squin on day 66 and went into the police station to turn in the Dust King. With this, we'd gain 35,000 cats and gain some relations with the Shek Kingdom. I figured this was like a great milestone, the Sheks would finally be like, Hey, you know, it's the Dust Bandit killers, what's up guys? But no, there's still this random Shek who's just being an absolute asshat. Once we talked to him though, he started to just shivering like of all the people we had talked to him we had cat our new recruit he was telling him off this wimpy shek asked cat to turn a blind eye but after a verbal altercation a battle begins but this immediately alerts for shek guards and raises an alarm there's no way we could fight the entire squin military force so we needed to escape the gang would run down near the rear gates and split up cat dragged a majority of his shek guards meanwhile everyone else was running as fast as they could but eventually toro was knocked down along with cat b01 couldn't just leave his bodyguard so he stopped running and began to fight off the Shek guards along with other gangsters. B01 fended them off until Zagan ran up with his super range shooter ability and picked off our remaining Sheks attacking him. We were now enemies to the Shek people and more guards were on their way so we needed to keep repelling them until we could pick up our injured and escape. During the escape, Kat and Toro ended up being picked up by some Shek guards. Normally I would just bail them out right away but now that we're enemies with the Sheks this means we can't go into Squin without a fight. The remaining gangsters knew they couldn't just break out their companions with only the six of them so they waited for a sign. Toro would free herself and attempt to find the gear that the Sheks took. She couldn't find anything though so she tried escaping through the only exit, the front door. Now since she was injured and she still had all of the loot from the ruins, she couldn't outrun the Sheks and they ended up taking her down and re-imprisoning her. The other top G's could hear the whole ordeal happen and they knew they needed to go back to Bad Guy City and then come back with reinforcements. After spending months as a prisoner at the Dust King Tower, it's pretty funny actually the cat just got freed from there, but now he's in an even worse place because now he's in the Shek City of Squin and he's in jail. 
This guy must just be like so miserable inside, man. <laughs> Along with this though, B01's main bodyguard was now imprisoned as well, so they would need to plan a breakout mission in order to get back their gangsters and save them from their doom. It's day 66, and in the harsh world of Kenshi, our gangsters return from Squin, where in the last video we had two of our top Chis get knocked out and thrown into the shack prison of Squin. There's about 160 different citizens at Squin, so it's pretty heavily guarded. It was our newest recruit, Cat. We just got him out of a Dust King town. Hour, but he got into an argument outside of a bar and that immediately caused all of the Shek forces to turn against the gangsters. Toro is stuck in Shek prison as well and she's B01's personal bodyguard. So there's no way the group could just sit around. So today's mission is going to be breaking into the Shek prison and freeing Toro and Kat without losing any more gangsters in the process. Before we could even begin healing, a group of Shek scouts ran into Bad Guy City and began battle. The group just got home from the escape of Squin of the last episode so this battle was very unwanted. The gangsters ended up holding their own, but not without many knockouts and injuries flooding the battlefield. You see, the Sheks have now made our gang, the Catastrophes, their enemies. So now we're going to have even more attacks on our outpost. Plus, there's going to be the constant threat of whenever we run into Shek groups, they're now going to attack us on sight. We needed to get everyone healed up and then try to train in the meantime, but this was proving to be difficult as moments after the first battle, we had a second group arrive and start to fight. Just thank Okran for all the settlers and the bodyguards we have at Bad Guy City. If it wasn't for them, these fights would definitely be crushing most of our forces. The Sheks all have higher base health points than most characters, plus they prefer to use big weapons like planks and fragment axes, which inflict a lot of damage when they connect. B01 ends up surviving the longest in most of these battles, even with his left arm being broken. He was able to hold on until around 4am. This was not good though. The Sheks were starting to really do a number on our gangsters, and with everybody being knocked out, it was really up to our visitors and tourists to defend our town's honor. Since everybody was severely injured and knocked out, we were looking at a full day of resting, if that would even be allowed by the Sheks and the local bandit groups. Meanwhile, in Squin, Toro had just recovered from her injury she endured during the escape in the last video. She decided she would set herself free from the cage once again, but this time give the backpack to Kat. Meanwhile, she would sneak out of the tower. Her stealth and athletics were being crippled by her heavy armor, so she took her armor off and began to run down the tower. She ran down two floors, but once getting to the first floor, every Shek was alerted and onto her. The alarm would ring as she would run out of a tower and then up the stairs and past the Shek guards at the gate who were chasing her now. They're way stronger than Toro. I mean, she has really high stats, but she's never going to last on her own against all of them. But on the flip side, her athletics is around level 82, and without any equipment, she's a lot faster than most of the Shek guards. Fleeing to the east of Squin, Toro would make the goal to loop around the Squin City's road until she was on the other side. Not even halfway there, the guards would begin to give up one by one realizing they'll never catch her unless she trips on a rock or something. So all by herself, Toro had successfully escaped from a Shek prison. And while they may be able to catch her and imprison her, unless they take off her arms and legs, there's really no possible way to keep Toro contained. She has the mission to protect B-01, the hero of a catastrophes, and within an hour, Toro was running back towards home, meeting up with B-01. This was great for us, as Toro was arguably one of our strongest gangsters. But meanwhile, this still left Cat inside of Squin. He had Toro's backpack now, and seeing that she didn't return, he knew that either she made it out, or possibly worse. The backpack was so heavy, Cat knew he had to throw it on the ground and begin to lockpick himself out of his shackles. He has very low levels compared to Toro, so if she couldn't make it out with a backpack, chances are he probably won't either. While Toro is one of our strongest gangsters, ironically, Cat is probably our weakest gangster. But still, he was able to pick himself free and began to sneak down the police tower in an attempt to escape. It was nighttime, so he had that at least on his side, and the Shek guards would run past him without noticing. Surprisingly, Cat made it all the way outside and then up the gate stairs. There were now three Shek guards, so we had one chance to get by them. Attempting to sneak by them did not work. <laughs> Once they discovered Cat, he tried to make a sprint for freedom, but was instantly stopped and knocked out. Back to prison he goes. Cat hasn't even like seen Bad Guy City yet, seeing as he just got out of the Dust King Tower and then winded up here within like a few hours. He hasn't even met most of a gang either, so it really doesn't matter if we get him back to the gang or not. But B01 can't just allow Cat to become property to the Sheks for all eternity. While sure, Cat might have had no skills, levels, weapons, armors, bitches, or anything that made him valuable, he was still a gangster of a catastrophe, so allowing him to 
die in a Sheck prison would be an insult to the gang. Catastrophes didn't just set up a whole town and make a gang for nothing. So while it might be easier, cheaper, and faster to just hire a new recruit, this is all about saving a life and saving a brother. In the middle of the night, Toro would run over to the Squinge City with a goal of breaking out Cat herself. With nighttime on her side, she'd be able to sneak into the city right past the guards at the gate and proceed to blend in through the busy streets. She made it all the way into the police station and then proceeded to run up the tower to where Cat was being held captive. Sneaking, she would make it up both the first floors undetected until she got to the third floor to which all the Shek guards stopped. They immediately saw her and raised the alarm. There's no way Toro was going to have enough time to pick this lock and get Cat out with a dozen Shek guards swarming her. So, yet again, she needed to escape Squin. Fortunately, Toro is much faster than everyone else in Squin, so she was able to make it back to Bad Guy City within like an hour. But it's now day 68 if a group has to make a new plan. Firstly, B01 needs a new arm, as somehow his skeleton replacement arm is broken now as well. <laughs> Plus, we gotta get Stubbs and uh, Foxbot some limbs because they're missing some. We got four in total we need to buy. The gangsters would make the mission to go to the far away way station to the east where we could find some limbs. And now that we were enemies with Squin, I need to make sure we didn't just automatically run through Squin, so, so we'd have to go all the way into the swamp to avoid heading straight through it. This is a much longer and laggier route, but it works, and by nearly nighttime, the group arrives at the way station. We had 120k cats and began to buy limbs, and by by the end of it, it set us down by about 70,000 in total. On a flip side, they were all specialist grade limbs, so this was pretty high quality stuff. And the gangsters still had enough money to grab some food and then some books for research, and now they were on their way back to Bad Guy City. The Dust Bandits are now all dispersed and screwed up since the last video where we took down the Dust King and raided their hideout. I mean, the Dust Bandits are easily three times weaker, maybe four times weaker than the Sheks. So they aren't really a threat to us at all, but the reality of a situation situation is there's no way we're going to be able to get Cat back by sneaking in and we're definitely not going to be able to get him back by being loud and raiding the police station as every guard will surely come to try and take the gangsters down. So we need to think of a new plan. When we got back to Bad Guy City, the gangsters gave the limbs out to Foxbot and Stubbs. I forgot to get Stubbs a leg though so we'll need to do that in a later episode. I'm just, I'm just kidding. Could you imagine? <laughs> now since the gangsters were broke again, they loaded all up on copper and iron that was stored at the base and made their way towards the way station that was to the south of them. Not before they ended up being stopped by a Sheck group who were trying to invade Bad Guy City. It didn't take them long to knock them all out and then they would be heading towards the way station and make it there by 1700 o'clock. After selling everything that they had and get it after selling everything they had, we scouted around a bar and recruited two groups of tech hunters to bodyguard our group for four days, and each group would cost us 8,000 cats each. We would then wait until nightfall to leave a way station and pick up one more group of mercs for 8k. Costing us 24,000 cats in total, this breakout mission was far from cheap, but the plan was to distract the guards at the gate, you know, without bringing every Sheck in the city to us. And now that we had this large group of maybe a few dozen mercs, we were now able to have a a lot of people healing us, protecting us, and human shielding us. Near 20 o'clock, the gangsters and the mercs made their way out of the way station and ran towards Squin. They need to go the long way around to get to the side where the police station was on. It wouldn't make any sense to attack from the other side. And this was it. This was our chance to get Cat back from the Sheks and show them just because they have high numbers and levels, it doesn't mean the gangsters can't make life hell back for them. Cat was still working on unlocking himself and trying to find the perfect opportunity to run out and make his second escape attempt. Meanwhile, the group snuck up beside the gate and began fighting a solo Sheck guard who was making his patrol. And now that the group was a bit closer, Zagan began... Zagan began. <laughs> Gan began to use his projectile attack. He pulled about a dozen guards or so, bringing them away to the gate to us. And this would cause a huge fight between the top Gs and the mercenaries and the Sheks. More and more Sheks would begin to leave their post to begin to help the battle. The more guards we could pull over here, here at a time the better while also making sure we don't have too many guards because that'll get a little bit tricky dude the catastrophes were dominating the Sheck guards while there was like a group of a dozen or so at a time but meanwhile 
Cat was struggling to pick his lock and set himself free. The group got even closer to the gate, and hearing the noise, Cat knew something was happening. It was time to strike, and it was time to escape. Cat would finally set himself free, and he would begin to run out of a tower and towards the catastrophes. He was chased by a couple guards, but making it back towards his gang, he was now safe. All that was left was the backpack. It had nearly 100k worth of loot inside of it, so Toro ran into the tower, picked it up, and then ran back to the group. Beep and Cat would end up getting knocked out, so B01 picked up Beep, and then Toro picked up Cat, and the group began to run away from Squin. The prison break mission couldn't have gone better. They ended up sustaining minimal injuries and secured freeing Cat from the prison. The gangsters and the mercs would head back to Bad Guy City, and finally, Cat could see the place he was now going to be calling home. Lots of training equipment here, armor, weapons, opportunities, bad bitches, Cat's gonna have a true chance to become the actual man he's always aspired to be. And while the gangsters were able to save their friend, B01 knows this is far from over. The Sheks will continue to apply pressure to Bad Guy City unless we begin to do it back to their cities. But if we really want to take the Sheks down, we're gonna have to do a lot of training and get really strong first. Unlike most of the other factions inside of Kenshi, the Catastrophes have been making insanely great progress to becoming the strongest gang ever made. And while that goal still is achievable, it's going to be pretty much impossible to do without making some enemies. After raiding the Dusk King Tower in the last video and turning in their leader to the Sheks, our newest recruit Cat, who was saved from the Dusk King Tower, ended up starting a war over an argument with a Shek citizen. Now that we have rescued Cat, he is at Bad Guy City for the first time, and we really need to get him leveled up. I mean, he's starting out with level 1 stats. This is really bad. We got a lot of training to do. But along with that, I want to be finding maybe a few more recruits to add to our gang that that way we can start our ultimate training episode going from zero to hero. Now before we start, I have a few things to say. I usually save this for the end of the video, but because of like audience retention, I never do this, but I'm doing it now. I love all the support on the recent videos, guys. It's been doing really great, but what the fuck is this? 86% of you aren't subscribed. Like, who the hell did I piss off, man? I thought these videos were fire. If you guys could remember to subscribe for the channel, that's all I'm asking you to do. If we can give that to at least like 20% by next month, that would be amazing. Other than that, I put up a short showing off what my PC looks like, and everybody saw it. it's kind of like destroyed and corroded and shit, and inside it's really bad. Now, I pulled this out of my house fire, and I haven't really, you know, had enough money to put towards getting a new PC. A new PC is a lot of money for me. And I really don't like asking you guys for money, but I figured because I'm being asked so much, I would set up a donation link so I set up a paypal.me link it's in the description and I'll be putting it in all of my future videos and I'll put like a little uh, PC initiative fund so you guys will see how much money we're at currently and how much money it's at you know as each video goes on I'll update it now all the money I make off a of YouTube channel I'm going to be adding into this after YouTube ends up taking its cut and I get my money in my bank account I'm just gonna take it out in real life put it in a jar and I'll keep that up until we say have enough money for me to get a new good PC that's well enough for at least gaming as well as recording. Uh, finally, there's not much more. I got a new Instagram account in the description. I want you guys to go follow me on. I want you guys to be active on my other social medias if you can. Like, if you got Instagram, just follow me on Insta. I'll be posting what I'm doing, like, day to day. There'll be some video behind the scenes and stuff like that. You can also check out my merch store. I do have one up right now. I have a Cool Kid periodic table design up, as well as an Emo Sluts Fuck Hard shirt and a hoodie, with both of which have been seen to be the most popular on the site. So feel free to check out that if you want to find another way to support me and maybe get something back in return. And then lastly, a Discord server. We got a Discord server up. There's not really too much going on in it. I kind of just talk and chill in there sometimes. I'm not really too sure what to do with it, honestly. But if you want to hop in there, you know, find a cool spot to chill and talk with other like-minded individuals, then come on in. Now, those were all the important notices. I shouldn't have to do this for, like, another 10 to 20 videos. Well, thanks for listening, and let's get right into the video. We're currently on day 70, and with a main goal to start, we're going to need to get Cat ready for combat. We had a lot of leftover loot from the Dust King Tower, luckily, in our backpack, so Cat did get some equipment but you know he was still missing some pants unfortunately i gotta say though cat has a fucking insane body like kim kardashian level dude no homo but what a waste if cat was a chick i'd be like over here trying to make theodore number two in this video we would not be going from zero to hero <laughs> anyways we'd first be dealing with some bandit demands that are on their way to bad guy city everybody's all home so no matter what group we end up getting we'll be pretty set and surprisingly, at 7 o'clock on day 71, some dust bandits arrive. 
kept asking for money. They've done this like five times, so as always, Beep stabbed him in the face with his chainsaw arm. Evan and the group attempted to run away, so the gangsters all chased the group away from Bad Guy City. They would end up going past a local settler's camp where only a few of the Dust Bandits would end up running away. But Dust Bandits are no match to us, so it was yet another successful defense. Meanwhile, Cat had began to do some strength training with Zagan. I needed Zagan to follow him since he was going to be going to the way station of himself in order to find a new, few new recruits in the process, and I really didn't want him to run into bandits and die. And I thought it'd be good to get a few more recruits in this episode anyways, as if we're going to be turning one character from a zero to a hero, we might as well do it with at least a few. First, Cat would find a hiver who had a plank on him. For 3,000 cats, we recruited him and I changed his appearance, so he became super tall and a skinny. I then went on to change his name and I picked someone from the comments actually this time. Shout out to Dr. Jules. I see his name pop up a lot on the channel, so thank you and welcome to the team. Next, there's one more hive inside of a way station bar, so Cat recruited him for 3k cats and I went on to change his appearance as well. I was originally going to make him, you know, like a short and stubby hiver since I'm super creative and I'm like a genius but I decided to actually make him look a little bit more like a gangster he looks like he's like trying to throw up some gang signs like he looks like what the average type of cool kid gangster would try to look like now there's one guy who's always in the comments he's in like comments of all my videos recently and he's always saying big and I love him he is great this is what I'm talking about right here. This is what we need. He doesn't need to leave a huge comment every time. Maybe he doesn't have time. Maybe he just wants to just say this. Either way, it means a lot and it shows me he keeps coming back. So shout out to you, Nameless. You're a G. The next trip the group would be making was over to the hub so they can try to find one more recruit. Meanwhile, at Bad Guy City, I discovered that Scarlet and some of the other gangsters were hanging out in the Shack Ruins. These were right next to Bad Guy City and because I have the takeover of the world mod, this little shithole now belongs to us. And I can't dismantle any of the buildings it's kind of useless it's a big hindrance i really didn't want it i need to make sure they aren't hanging out over there though i don't need to be defending two locations from the shacks come on now so i had a few people training on and off in the meantime while we waited for cat and his group to arrive at the hub i also decided it would be a good time to research technology level five as we had the books to do so and this would allow us to unlock the best training options possible on day 72 at nine o'clock cat's group was attacked by some local dust bandits now thank Okran Zagan was there. Seeing as Cat, Dr. Jules, and Nameless were all just level one in every skill because we just got them all in the gang, everyone except for Zagan just had a horrible time and was struggling against the Dust Bandits. Once the battle concluded, Dr. Jules was the first to get up and he tried to heal the group, but he didn't have enough med kits. To make this even worse, Cat's leg was bleeding and at a fast rate, it was getting worse and worse, and soon it was going to pop off. Now losing a leg, as you guys know, it's basically like a death sentence in a Cool Kid Croc Kenshi series. At very least, it's like a four episode punishment of being crippled because I always end up forgetting to get these guys' legs. But on top of the current situation, Dr. Jules also had a broken arm, so he couldn't just pick up Cat and then run to the hub. So he had to run all the way to the hub and then try to run back in time. In real time, Cat's leg was bleeding so fast, the number just kept on going and going and going. And while Dr. Jules almost made it to Cat, there were some bandits that started chasing him. Zagan saw the nonsense going on, so he ran over and saved Dr. Jules by distracting the bandits and beginning to beat them up. Dr. Jules basically had to do a baseball slide to make it to Cat's leg in time. And at this point, his leg was at negative 101, which is insane because it should have popped off. The human limbs pop off at 100. We were so so lucky Dr. Jules was able to save it. The group could now regain their barons and begin to head to the hub. If it wasn't for Zagan though, we definitely wouldn't have been able to save it. Those bandits would have attacked Dr. Jules and then Cat's leg would have popped off and then Dr. Jules would have been injured on top of it. But near the end of day 72, guess who showed up? Some more dust bandits, baby! Let's go! Woo! Of course, it took around like 30 seconds to clear out the entire group as we still had bodyguards and this gave us just about like no experience. But finally, Cat and his group was approaching the hub gates. Now, because he had been hauling around some bodies and some iron this entire time, he's gotten his strength level up from 1 all the way up to the mid-20s. This at least made him a little bit stronger and took care of his strength levels, but I still wanted to recruit a few more people and train them all up as well. So once Cat's group entered the hub, they looked at each bar so they could find a unique, cool recruit. And unfortunately, there weren't any, so I had to go and make my own. For 3,000 cats, cat, oh fuck man, I really should change his name, those sentences are whack. For $3,000, cat hired a Greenlander female into the group. 
Now, I decided to try to make this chick look somewhat human or appealing to the eye. You know, maybe if we have a hot chick in the thumbnails, you guys will want to watch the videos more. So, we began the Build a Bitch workshop in Kenshi and pimped this Wasteland princess out. I was hoping to turn this character into what resembles a semi-smashable character. Like, if you were drunk, you'd hit this, right? I mean, like, her her eyes are a bit ghouly, but, but some guys like that. My first love's eyes were ghouly. <laughs> <laughs> her name is Orta, and now Cat was ready. He had a pretty cool group set up to go back into Bad Guy City with. Then on day 73, 12 hours after the last raid, guess who showed up? Oi! Chumps! Yep, it was the Dust Bandits, yet again! So, this time again, we would end up stabbing the messenger in the face, and we had a majority of the guys at Bad Guy City start chasing down the Dust Bandits. I'm so sick of them. Like, they have awful loot, they give us no experience anymore, and they've done nothing but multiply ever since the imprisonment of their leader. It's fucked. Now, while I waited for Cat's group to get back home, I would decide to set up a few new training stands with a mod that lets me train up some skills up to level 70 with training dummies. The ones that I put down would help us train strength, dexterity, and toughness. I already had an attack and defense dummies and some other ones set up, but these new additions would make the training room amazing as we could now turn new recruits into strong, capable warriors without spending months waiting for for them to catch up. For the toughness training, the character sits with their open crotch about half a foot from an active fire. I also believe somewhere in the lore, this is like Kenshi's version of uh, birth control. Lord Phoenix, he actually uh, would uh, sit by the fire with his crotch open to it. That way he could uh, kill the producing. No, he didn't. I'm, d <laughs> I'm just making... No, he didn't. <laughs> you know, I'm just making that up, guys. Don't listen to me. I needed all the new recruits to train up strength, dexterity, toughness, then melee attack and melee defense. With characters like Beep, he also needed to train up stuff like dodge and martial arts. So I knew this was going to take a little while to pull off, so I would have to wait. On day 75, we had a Shek raid appear at Bad Guy City, to which I had Beep run out and practice some of his new flashy moves he was learning. Beep is now doing a lot more damage as well. I believe it's strength, toughness, and martial arts that all factor into the attack damage that you do with martial arts. It also helps that he literally has chainsaws for arms. <laughs> then a few hours later, we would lead a defense against the Holy Nation. No, I'm kidding, guys. It's just the Dust Bandits again. You could have guessed that. Both of the groups were taken down pretty fast, and everyone went back to training. My goal right now was to get everyone's stats to the mid-30s to the maybe mid-40s. That way, they could start off a little bit weaker than our current gangsters, but still be strong enough to take down of most of what's in the wasteland. Now, Cat has some armor, and I have Orda a few pieces of armor, but we really need to get some better weapons and armor for our new recruits. I mean, you can have good stats in Kenshi, but at the end of the day without good equipment we're only putting a bottleneck on how strong we could possibly be so after almost a week of training it was on day 81 i reset the groups for bad guy city and the top g's now b01 decided he need to leave chompy behind at bad guy city of course i know everybody's gonna miss chompy in the videos for a little bit but we need someone at bad guy city to take care of a place chompy is a g and he's a legendary processor unit so he will do a great job at defending now the plan was pretty simple we're just gonna go south into the swamp city of shark but first there was an exile camp located near the group so we would stop by that first and then prepare to strike the camp belonged to the band of bones a shek rebel group that isn't too high in numbers but they're still fairly strong their leader twin bones had some stats in the high 70s so the group gathered up and started charging there were a total of 18 enemies at this camp and a group did really well with each battle i mean a majority of the sheks all came together at once but everybody was able to drop at least one shek fairly fast. It was within a few in-game minutes, the group was completely knocked out and the Chop G's claimed yet another victory over the wasteland. This proved the training definitely did really good as sheks are usually way harder for us to fight and we basically just steamrolled them like the dust bandits in this one. It also gave us plenty of loot, we now had a few thousand cats maybe worth of uh, different swords we picked up from the sheks, so we now had to go into my least favorite place in gaming ever, the swamp it got really choppy right away and we had to load every 10 seconds you know poor b01 he's walking through fucking ponds like some kind of crazy person the shit's not good bro and i, I was just like i was uh, mind blown when this happened because you guys know how much i hate the swamp once i finally got to shark and i was uh, ready to you know buy all the stuff and get everything i need the game just crashed sweet 
Swamp. Thank you for uh, proving your worth. So I loaded back up to see that the group was still at Bad Guy City. Oh man, so we had to go all the way back to the exile camp and then slaughter them again. And then we looted up again and we decided to head back to the swamp. But this time, a group of Shek warriors had walked by our city and began to attack pretty much everyone on site. I mean, everybody was knocked out pretty fast. Chompy was the only one who was able to maybe repel or kill a few of them. But the Sheks had the upper hand and Chompy kept going down. He would get up, pick off one or two of them, and then get knocked out again. There wasn't much we could do other than wait it out, and hopefully the Sheks would leave soon. And now the top Gs were on their way, but ah, the game crashed again. Fucking shoot me. I don't know, it could be my PC, but I don't know. It, this just sucks, so I changed the plans. We're going to Mongrel, boys as there's better loot and there's better characters up there anyways, and the swamp is awful. Our gang of catastrophes has been taken over the wasteland one day at a time at a very fast rate. We're currently on day 82, rocking it out, and we currently have a gang of around like 20 gangsters in it. It's not too big, but it's not too small. The gang has had a lot of hardships to get to where they are, and they still have many to follow. In the last episode, we recruited some new heroes to join our gang, and we trained them up to around level 40 for most stats. Now, our main gangster group, the Top Gs, are making the a trip through Vane and into Mongrel in search for anyone else worth recruiting. I originally had planned to go to the swamp last episode, but yeah, that didn't work out due to crashing, so Mongrel it is. Quick reminder to like the video and subscribe to get that subscribe percentage up, that would be sweet. Now over at Bad Guy City, our forces were pretty beat up. Now there's been a lot of recent check raids, and with more and more on the way, it's been very difficult to keep up with everything. Thankfully to our hero Chompy, the processor unit, because he was home and able to pick off a lot of these check berserkers, we were very lucky. As the rest of our gang, while they are pretty high leveled, they could easily be taken taken down once outnumbered. I also have refused to place down any walls, turrets, defenses, or like normal things you would do at a base, so that doesn't help. And like, I'm not doing a challenge or anything, I just I haven't placed them because, you know, I'm like lazy or don't care about that. I don't even end up doing that in this episode, so go to the comments and tell me to build some walls or else it'll never get done. I was now making sure at Bad Guy City all of our knocked out gangsters were at least put into beds and stuff, that way they could stop bleeding out. We need as much health as we can get in order to fight these brutal Sheks because the raids just seem to never end lately. I mean, we're currently enemies to every Shek faction in the game, so that's pretty not good. And meanwhile, the top Gs had arrived near Mongrel, but saw a lot of dead high fog men. These guys, they run around Mongrel and they kidnap travelers, to which they put them on poles and then eat them alive in a big group. It's really inhumane, really fucked up. Like, these guys aren't cool at all. It's the main reason why mostly everyone inside of Mongrel is stuck in Mongrel. You know, as the fear of being eaten out alive by a blue hiver. Yeah, that's a fate worse than death. I can respect that. There's a stray shinobi guard who was just outside of the walls and he was fighting over a dozen of these blue bastards just by himself. And even though B01 is a gangster leader, he can't just allow savages to take control of Mongrel or any other city. So B01 and his group ran towards the guard and the fogmen and began to join in on the battle. Now fogmen, while high in numbers, they're actually really weak. Like all you need to do to kill them is hit an attack that does 100 damage or more. The gangsters quickly took took down these fogmen as well as some other ones that were near in the distance and this ended up wiping out a fogman camp off of the map. And with that taken care of, the gangsters felt astonished that nobody can leave Mongrel. I mean, how weak of a pig shit do you gotta be? If you just went out with sandals, you'd be faster with them because of a 1.1 athletics boost. Either way though, the gang went inside of Mongrel as first they needed to go to an armor store. Now, I accidentally went into the boot trader shop, which interesting fact, after like 600 hours, I never knew this place was called the boot store. I've always called these places with the little guy with the backpack, you know, the map shop or the backpack store. Store, shit like that. Who would have guessed it was a boot store? Anyways, going into the armor shop, they had a few pieces of medium armor that were worth taking and buying. Also got some pants for Cat and Orda as they still didn't have any from the last video. Evan also upgraded everyone else's armor until I felt like there really weren't that many better alternatives left. The gang were straight pimped. The gang were straight pimped out. I mean, it might not be specialist or masterwork for everyone, but quite a bit of this armor is top tier. Now, it was time to find some recruits. Firstly, by bugging an old man named Crumble John, it'll get him to break down and offer to join our group for free. That's always pretty sweet, and Crumble John's like an OG Kenshi character. He's pretty sick. But the gangsters search around a bar for some time, and they just couldn't find anyone else, unfortunately, so it was onto the streets. This is where I find most of my best women in life. 
Feezer alone would end up spawning a red-haired Scorchlander, and she says, stranded in this dead-end town, and for what? Some puffed-up tech hunter rumor of AI cores and CPU units? Well, goodbye blue skies, goodbye sunlight, so long desert breeze. Now there's the sounds of fog to listen to instead. Listen to that, and there you've got yourself a few sleepless nights. And don't even get me started on the food. How much longer a reserve's gonna last of this marooned island, eh? Ugh. Trike seems really hopeless, so B01 decides to play Captain Save up. You know what? Let's not. Let's not. I'm not getting cancelled right now. Not for misogyny. Not today. Not gonna do it. B01 insists to this uh, fine lady that she should just leave town with him and the gang. I mean, she sees that everybody's got pretty cool armor and pretty cool weapons, so she offers to join the gang for free and leave with them. We now had a great team set up for the top G's, with the last mission on the agenda being to buy some new weapons for our gangsters. I would go into the weapon shop, and I did have to sell one of our CPU units to get everything, but after that, it reminded me that I'm still in search of that orange mule skeleton guy. Remember he only needed a new CPU and now that we finally have that of course we can't find him. I did try to play a quick round of Where's Waldo in Mongrel but I did not win so we'd have to leave Mongrel yet again without that guy. Now if all the business wrapped up the gang decided to leave through the gates and had the goal to explore now. They'd come across many Fogmen warriors until they found a Mist Fiend. These guys are way stronger. While they do have a low defense and strength level he's rocking an 85 in attack and a 200 116 in dexterity, which is fucking disgusting. It'd be borderline illegal. Like, Miss Fiends can easily be on level with our group, but once we started fighting, it became outnumbered and we were able to break both of its arms. This was enough to render the monster basically completely useless, and he tried to run away. Now, we had to chase this Miss Fiend around until eventually they were able to knock it down. And he had four teeth on him, all of which would sell for about 600 cats. So, seeing as you make like 2,400 cats per kill, they might not be a bad idea to hunt. I mean, as long as we can handle more than a few of them. Moving on, a group continued throughout Mongrel and would head through the north into the location called Dreg. They would continue to head to the west so they could get near the edge of the map and see the ocean. The gangsters would stumble across a random village owned by a group called the Dead Cats. With no knowledge of who they are, I just kind of assumed they were bad guys because they look like it. You know, I didn't like the cut of their jib. So the top G's would sneak over to the gate and then unlock it to which they were free to enter the village. Now the dead cats did nothing, which was really strange. I mean, we tried to get into one of the houses to which they immediately started attacking, so they didn't like that. But the battle was on and it really wouldn't last long. There was like five people living at this place. So the gangsters basically just slaughtered like a single family. That's it. Not really cool. <laughs> there wasn't even any loot here either. And one of the buildings was completely inaccessible, like I couldn't open the door or go into it, so that was pretty cool. And it was right after this when we would get Karma hitting us in the face like a hammer, when a group of the Dead Cat traders were just coincidentally, like, comedy sitcom on cue coming back to the village. They spotted the gang leaving the village and started attacking, to which I learned what fear and pain is in one go. Now, I guess I have a mod that makes animals stronger, but for some reason, the Garus are insanely strong. Like, they're hitting everybody for four to 500 damage. Left and right, people are getting one hit and just dying. So I realized, okay, this is not the reality we're gonna live in. We're gonna reload a save. And I'll either have to take that mod off of my mod list, or I'll just have to be super fucking careful of Garus. Hitting for like four to 500 damage, that makes them more dangerous than beak things. Now that I reloaded, the gang were off, and this time, instead of fighting the village, they did go and head north. This way, we would get to travel towards the burning forest. Now, I realized I've never been around this area after like 600 hours, so this is even brand new to me. This place is truly a disastrous hell. <laughs> it's not even a burning forest that we got to. We got near the burning forest and we entered the shrieking forest. Now there's all these bandits running around and they call themselves the shrieking bandits. And I tried to get a group to fight us, but it didn't really work. So I tried to get closer and closer until eventually one bandit would run up and no surprise to start shrieking at us. It was clear these guys were insane and we had a battle on our hands. And while this one group of 20 was going to be fairly strong, there were like 10 other groups of 20 running around these parts, which was greatly outnumbering us. The shrieking bandits all 
all have these purple tentacle suction type equipment it's beyond unsettling and like they don't even have horrible stats i mean the standard bandits have around level 20s and there's some of the special units they have stats near the high 60s up to the high 80s so this was bound to be our first challenge in a while the first group would go down with knocking only our newest recruits strike out but before the first group was even eliminated two separate shrieking bandit groups ran and sandwiched our gangsters the battle was now super duper serious i mean there's easily a hundred of them and there's less than 10 of us. Even Zagan with a super ability, he was unable to make much of a difference as a majority of the group was getting knocked down. It came down to there's about 20 bandits left between B01 and Zagan, but then another group just happened to run in and join the fight. So now B01 was just completely surrounded by enemies, and he was the only one left awake still to fight. The other gangsters would all rise fairly fast off and on. No one wanted to give up just yet. All of that toughness training, burning their crotches near the fire didn't prepare them just to lie down for the entire fight so even knocked out and bleeding they weren't going to let a bunch of purple freaks get the best of them that's when a legendary bandit appears someone named red howler he has way higher stats than any other gangsters and he immediately starts by attacking b01 who at this point has a broken left arm so he can't even use his main weapon he's resorting to using his shitty secondary weapon zagan would also be knocked out for the first time in a long time in the playthrough meanwhile it was mainly Toro, Orta, Beep, Cat, and Yuman. They would all be rising back to back and then falling after some time. Each would manage to take out a few bandits each time they arose, but it was just a matter of surviving now. B01 attempts to bring the bandits elsewhere, but they're now faster than him with all of his injuries. Even Beep and others were struggling to get up as there were numerous bandits watching them, making sure it was impossible to get up or make an escape without being hit in the back. B01 was down to using one arm and he had about 30 or so bandits it's still around him with other groups running around the area. Even with B01's high defense and him blocking a majority of the hits, just with the odd one hit slipping through, it left him with rarely any time to attack or fight back as most of the time he was spending was either by getting hit or blocking shots. They had been waking up from their injuries and pushing through it, but this was definitely taking a toll on everyone. B01 being the only one to not be knocked out straight away would attempt to hold his ground until his team could heal him up. Beep tried to drag some of bandits away, but he didn't get really far before they caught up to him. And it was at this point that B01's right arm finally broke, so he was now completely useless. Just like the misfiend in the start of a video, he was now limping and nearly knocked out, so he attempted to drag some of the bandits away from the group. And this was when he was finally taken down. Now this was not the end of it. The rest of the gangsters needed to try and not be spotted each time they'd wake up to try to heal someone. But of course, every time they'd end up getting caught and a bunch of bandits would spot them and start attacking. This only left more injuries on our gangsters and made it even harder for us to recover. One by one, the bandits would sprint in like zombies, just beating the shit out of our gangsters until around 12 o'clock when Nameless would die on the battlefield due to his injuries. This was not good at all. I mean, we had just recruited Nameless in the last episode and a poor guy didn't deserve that at all. Bandits were just making this such a hard task, I mean even though Zagan woke up, he was using his super ability but one by one, the bandits just kept on getting closer and closer to him, beating his attack. Cal woke up, he would start to heal the group and even the others would then try to distract whatever bandits there were while he would repair the skeletons. It was nearly 10 o'clock but the bandits were more dispersed finally and the group was starting to wake up. With everybody at least awake and healing each other, this gave him a way better shot if another bandit group walk by. This is when all of a sudden Choppy all the way from Bad Guy City arrived at the scene. Now even though unfortunately we were too late to save Nameless, the group was now much more safe as Choppy was there to assist them in any more future attacks. And so the gangsters would heal up and then pick up their wounded so that they could finally try to get on their way. And while they had taken down nearly a hundred shrieking bandits, they did lose a gangster in the process. And for one gangster, there is no amount of bandit lives that can replace it. So on day 84, near five o'clock, the group would begin their journey to go back home to Bad Guy City. While they wanted to fight more, the entire group was beyond injured and needed desperately to go home to heal. They also now needed to set up a grave for their now dead friend named Nameless. 
After a fierce battle with a purple freaks that are the shrieking bandits, this resulted in the death of one of our gangsters. The heroes luckily are now back home at Bad Guy City and unloading from their previous deadly adventure. And with a pretty close call being that they were almost slaughtered by purple people, I knew we needed to hit the training gym in order to gain some extra levels. Our gang leader B01, the top G, is also extremely damaged. His left arm is basically useless right now and I needed him to heal in a skeleton repair bed while we sorted out training for the other top G's. Everybody's been asking me for a mod list, I'll finally address it. Okay, I've purposely been stalling it out and blue balling you guys. I'm gonna hold on like kind of like a hostage or blackmail type situation here. If we can give a sub ratio up to 20%, I'll make a full video talking about my favorite mods. I'll show off all the mods I've played with for years as well as show off some new ones and I'll make a full Steam list which will have every mod I use. And I'll even update the mod list as I go with a gang series. So if you have haven't already remember to hit subscribe join a cool kid empire and leave a like i didn't run out of that house fire and lose everything to bounce back and be chilling at 16 percent okay we can do better than that also i quickly want to let you guys know my discord server is going under a huge revamp so i want to encourage you guys to join it i've got a giveaway going on as well right now for sands of salzar this game's pretty cool it's like dynasty warriors and kenshi kind of mixed i honestly really mess with it if the devs reached out to me and gave me a free copy as well as five free copies to give away to you guys so to enter to join one of the five free copies, you got a really good shot. I'm guessing there's probably going to be like, you know, 20 to 50 people doing it. Just go into the Discord server, go into the giveaway, and hit that little party icon, the little emote, and you'll be entered into the giveaway. Anyways, at Bad Guy City, things have been getting a little bit slower as of recent. Seeing as we have hundreds of building materials and iron plates, it's finally time to set up some walls, I'm thinking. Everybody made sure to bug me in the last video, so I really appreciate that, as it did encourage me to actually make the big move today and we started to place down some nice walls look at this shit man it looks beautiful i made this huge nice square this looks way better than any of other bases i've made before and i also even gave myself plenty of room so we can still expand bad guy city or add more to it without making it look super ridiculous now shortly after i was proving myself yet again on why we need walls and defenses as a huge group of shek warriors would approach bad guy city and begin to attack it seems like most of these groups aren't even calculated attacks either you see since we're in shek territory and were enemies with them or whatever any kind of like patroller groups or caravans or scouts the sheks have that wander around will eventually stumble into our utopia of an outpost and then they'll attack it of course on a bright side they drop planks fragment axes and lots of good weapons which are pretty good for profit i mean i can sell most of them for 1k even with some of them being higher tier and selling up to 4k cats it's a really good side hustle and worth doing as we have market stalls and we have a bunch of random tourists at the base anyways but I already had two of the market stalls filled up with weapons, so I'd have to set up a third stand and then begin to build that as well. We're currently on day 85, so while I do have most of the essentials set up at Bad Guy City, we've still got a lot of cool stuff to do in the upcoming videos. Right around like 22 o'clock, that was when I realized Crumble John has crumbled onto the ground as one of his legs were knocked off at some point. It happens all the time at Bad Guy City, we don't really look into it. You know how it is, you twist your ankle and your leg rolls off and you gotta get a prosthetic. <laughs> it's just how it goes <laughs> i made a mental note to get him a new leg which is pretty terrifying i mean he didn't even get put into a bed until days later so chances i get him a new leg are slim to none either way the rest of our gangsters were in acceptable health condition so i began to set up the rest of the crew of a training room so we could level up some skills like strength dexterity and toughness but while we were all training i kept on running into the same problem it's pretty annoying you see there's constant like wanderers and butt heads who just bump into our guys and this will constantly knock them out of a training zone so i have to you know like make them go back to the training zone and click on the thing all right it's a fucking shit show it builds up so much unnecessary stress that i do not need in my life so i really need to rebuild the training room in the future episodes to prevent negative mental health conditions upon myself but other than that we had an upcoming bandit raid to look forward to so i knew we definitely needed to heal a majority of our party after everything is said and done and on day 86 6 at 17 o'clock the Sheks arrived at bad guy city ready to attempt yet another assault on the stronghold chompy who was outside of the walls having an innocent snack on a previous Sheck raid victim was the first to get knocked down and be ganged up on the rest of bad guy city was pissed okay chompy's like their mascot so we had to go and definitely give a good fight to the Sheks. it was easy for a lot of them to go down and zagan was taking care of a lot of Sheks as he's become really strong at this point in the series and i try not to remove anyone from the training room just that way 
I could get everybody else trained up a little bit with battling. But in the middle of this battle, we somehow attacked the Western Hive that was like wandering around. And their Garu started attacking everything. Now this terrified the shit out of me. We know the strength of the Garus. They hit for like 400 damage for some reason in the last episode. But thank Okran, this guy would just leave bad guy cities. If not, that one Garu could have easily slaughtered the whole town. But after the Hives left, there's a different group of Sheks that ended up showing up called the Band of Bones. This is when I removed everyone from the training room and sent them outside of a gate to take care of this. I mean, the Sheks are some of the strongest characters and factions in Kenshi. Due to their powerful attacks and high health, they also have insane damage resistance. But the Catastrophes, of course, have handpicked some of the coolest and wackiest characters from around the Kenshi globe. I mean, at this point in the series, they're looking like a One Piece pirate group. It's pretty gnarly, bro. The Sheks are really no match for our heroes, so they were able to take down maybe a few gangsters, but a majority of them would end up going down before they could even be able to do anything. Then, after the battle, it was on to making sure everybody was healed and not dead and bleeding out, so getting everybody into beds and skeleton beds was the main priority. On day 87, our walls were then finally finished being built. This was super nice, as I can now place down some stairs. Now, you guys already know I got these cool uh, sideways stairs that came out from a mod, like, last year. These are dope. I love them so much, man. Like, before we only had those straightforward stairs, and they really sucked. I mean, these stairs are just so much more clean looking. So after placing down those, I would then put down some turrets on each side of the gate walls, and now we were set. The only thing we really needed now were people who were trained on the turrets, which we didn't have. But that'll come in time, of course. By the next morning, most of the group was healed and able to go back to the training gym until we would leave for our mission. The group wasn't very big, but we felt like it was time to launch an attack of our own soon. The only problem is that if they do, it's due or die. If they don't win, they either die on the battlefield or become prisoners of war for whoever they're attacking. Both fates can be argued over which one is worse. Before that though, there's lots of swords on the battlefield again, so Toro would go up picking them and then putting them in the marketplace to sell in town. Meanwhile, everyone else was beginning to die of starvation, so I had to send Panera Tan down to the way station of itself so he could grab some food for our guys. And while doing this, I don't know, I must have like hit a bong or something, I got distracted, I, I, I don't really know what excuse I got for this one. I bought a bunch of books and blueprints and like some cactus and random shit. I don't, I don't really know. At least we can research stuff, I guess. Once arriving back home, Panertan had a bunch of books to put into the research bench and I went on to pick a lot of new technology. A bunch of these are cool stuff like furniture and buildings, so the next video will really be able to upgrade Bad Guy City. So let me know maybe a cool building idea or place that you want to see me add to Bad Guy City in the next episode. Now I decided it'd be pretty cool and immersive to set up some outhouses in Bad Guy City. I was worried at this point in the playthrough, people were going to start making lore for the series and, you know, we'll kind of just say like, oh, they must have just shit and pissed in the streets because there's no outhouses. So I wanted to get that set up, okay? I wanted to clear out that rumor right away. Then I placed down a cool station house, which was near the corner of a base, and <laughs> this was lined up pretty awfully, but it'll do. Now, once the first outhouse was built, I realized it had two seats in each house, so you could go like drop a deuce with a buddy or something. This is admittedly even more embarrassing than just shitting and pissing in the streets. So yeah, I don't know if that's a solution or not, but I guess it's gonna stay. Maybe the world would be better if we had outhouses with two holes in each one of them. <laughs> Now that I remembered that our group was on the brink of starvation, I would send Panera Tan back to the way station with a bunch of copper to sell this time with the goal of actually buying food. He would then basically buy all the food that the bar had, so poor luck to anyone hanging out there for the day, but we really need to supply the city. We also really need to figure out a self-sustaining source of food soon because this is definitely draining on our resources having to buy food constantly. It was then on day 90 we had our final straw with the Sheks, yet another assault. This one Shek guy was stuck floating in midair. I mean, it was pretty jokes. I laughed at it, but I'm sick, I'm sick of it every damn day. We're fighting like two to three separate groups of Sheks, and I know the Sheks already repress people and whatnot, but we're gonna re need to repress the fuck out of them in order to survive this wasteland. The battles are pretty cool to admit, like I really do like fighting the Sheks. They always put up a strong fight, and when we do end up getting like double assaulted by both the Shek Empire and like Band of Bones, it truly is like a sight to behold. So after the battle, I split the groups up so half of our gang was at Bad Guy City and the other half were in the top G's. The plan was now to prepare an assault on our own and finally get back at the Sheks for the tournament they've caused our gang. On day 91 at 4am, the gang was ready. It was time to head to the Great Fortress and slaughter whatever Sheks that were there. This was surely going to be no easy task 
one was confident in this group, but this could definitely go worse. I mean, with a Shrieking Bandit, it still went really bad, but the Shrieking Bandits ran off after. In this case, they're risking being killed or imprisoned by the Sheks. No matter what, they need to strike back, and now is the time. Bringing 10 of the strongest gangsters over to the fortress, the group would slowly go up to the hill and proceed to fight the guards at the gate. Before the battle was on, one of the Shek guards sees B-01 and yells out his name to alarm the other guards that the battle of their lives was about to begin. The catastrophes are well known by Sheks in pretty much every faction at this point of the game, so they knew this day would come for them. The guards at the gate got taken down pretty fast and were no match for one-on-one -on -one combat. Moving into the fortress, more Shek guards would lead their outposts and flood the streets to begin to defend what was left of a ruined city. B-01 and the gang didn't want to take anything other than a Shek's lives. On some cold-hearted gang shit. <laughs> you know, he was he was tired of a Shek's. Their chance to deal a serious blow to the Shek's resources was now. About 20 Shek guards would end up getting knocked down, so the gang began to check the buildings and clear them out of any other Sheks. There was a general who had a 25,000 cat bounty on him from the Holy Nation. If we were able to claim this, it would be huge. So one by one, the gang started to take down the Shek guards and were able to heal in the process and then kidnap the general. Still, the group was really hurting and damaged. I mean, some were just waking up from being knocked out, so they were nearly at their limits, but there were still two more buildings to check. Dr. Jules even lost a leg, so at this point, we were basically down one gangster. And then, plus, poor Orta lost an arm, which is just tragic. She looked like so injured in the thumbnail, all stumpy and bloody and whatnot. So, Toro would head into the next building, to which about a dozen Shek guards appeared. B-01 being the true G he is, took on about half of them himself. Himself, while the rest of the group one by one was knocked down by the Sheks. This is when it was down to just Zagan and B-01 and a bunch of Sheks had entered the gate. They were either reinforcements or just Sheks returning from a patrol, but either way this was not good. The battle was now more serious as ever as pretty much the entire gang was knocked down. Zagan would try his best to assist B-01 while Beep and the others would wake up slowly in the Shek buildings. B-01's left arm was once again broken, leaving him to only fight with one hand and for every Shek he knocked down, it seemed like just another would rise. And this would last until around 11 o'clock when the entire gang was knocked out and defeated within the fortress. And while yes, we were able to kill and knock out a majority of the Shek guards that were there, the gangsters were now at the mercy of the Sheks and began to be picked up and thrown into cages. On top of this, they were all being stripped of their weapons, which was not good. I would then get half of Bad Guy City to run over to fortress as fast as possible, as everyone who was there was now imprisoned and really really hurt and this didn't really seem to help as that half wasn't really that strong and they'd be taken down pretty fast and imprisoned as well the only ones they really couldn't touch at this point were choppy and zagan oh no i guess the ai in the game doesn't imprison animals if that makes sense so zagan and choppy just kept on waking up and continuing the fight meanwhile everyone else in the gang was imprisoned and behind bars this was really bad but on the flip side there was a positive light to look at it i mean if you think about it there were more gangsters now at the Great Fortress than there were Shek guards. All it would really take is for everybody to wake up, pick themselves out, and then escape. So one by one, the top Gs would begin to get out of their cages. Zagan was taking care of whatever guards there were, so once they had escaped, there wasn't really anyone that could stop them from doing so. The only problem that we had now was because we were imprisoned, we had to refind all of our weapons, which is going to be a nightmare in this place. And on top of that, the whole gang was injured, and there was countless amounts of cats waiting to be made just sitting on the ground. So I decided to send one of our gangsters to the swamp to pick up Backpack so we could haul this stuff off and make some money back. There's so much loot inside of this fortress, which is sick. I mean, we've got a bunch of blueprints, we got a bunch of quality weapons, so even if we do lose our previous weapons, we're kind of set because we can already replace them at least. On the flip side, there were still Shek guards and groups getting up and as well as arriving into the fortress, so it would be some time before we were able to leave this place. The world of Kenshi has been brutal to our gangster group as they've been distracted from their main goal of being a true 
true crime cause and hooligans that they've always wanted to be. Lately, they've been stuck dealing with a greater cause being the Sheck Empire. Ever since a silly disagreement at the Squin Bar, the catastrophes have been dealing with Sheck attack after attack after attack, just never seeming to end. And at this point, it's basically a part of a weekly routine. You know, B01, he does his leg workout on Tuesdays, he goes to a local way station for a couple drinks, and he makes it back home in time for his weekly Sheck raid. It's getting out of hand. So B01 would march his gangsters over to the Great Outpost, an important strategic location for the Sheks. And with over 30 Sheks there and only 10 gangsters, halfway through the battle, they'd end up falling and getting knocked out. Followed by that, everybody would be imprisoned in the outpost and their weapons would be stripped from them. Even with that happening, I was still able to use it to our advantage as this allowed everyone to heal up while Zagan took care of a street Sheck. Now it's day 92 and we're ready to break out of a Sheck city and go the fuck back home. Quick note, the mod list will be next video guys if we can't hit 20% subs to views like pretty soon then let's just try to hit like 200 likes this episode. Lots of episodes have hit 200 likes so if we hit this in maybe like two or three days the next video will be the mod list. Also thank you guys for 4,500 subscribers just a few weeks after we hit 4,000. Maybe you're watching this video for a first time or you're watching it in the future but just remember right now we are out here making it happen. So keep the support up and I'll keep the Kenshi videos up. Now inside of a great fortress great fuckery was actually among us. After the last episode I cleared out the city and had everyone healing up and then we saved and exited. Now when I reloaded the game and I went to go play this time, all the Sheks were healed and running around. Plus there were Hive traders going by so they were now in on the battle with their fucking 400 damage doing Garus. It was nonsense. Everybody was getting knocked out. Everybody was dying. I kept reloading and trying again, but nothing would really change, and this was just an insane fuck over as there is now an extra like 30 to 40 mofos to deal with. In scenarios like this, where I don't want to have to spend a week in game trying to escape prison on like 20 different characters, I have my own tricks up my sleeve for this, okay? So I had Foxbot, he was the only one who was outside the city. So I selected him by putting a camera on him and then saving the game. I could then reload the game and reset squad positions. This would mean everybody would teleport out of the Great Outpost. Now, at this point, a majority of the bodies had either despawned or respawned healed, so there wasn't really too much loot to miss out on. Therefore, B01 would use some black magic and teleport the group to Foxbot. The gang did a head count and realized Scry was still trapped in prison. But, I mean, that's okay. She's fast, so she'll be able to slip out of a place herself. Everybody else, though, they were all hurting badly. Dr. Jules had lost both his fucking legs. Orda lost an arm. Everyone else had serious injuries. We had to get back to Bad Guy City fast so we could heal everyone and defend our base from any possible counterattacks coming our way. The gangsters would pick up anyone with a bad leg or no legs and then jog as fast as they could back up north. The gang encountered a small group of Sheks but was easily able to knock them down as the gang had the jump on them with his super range ability. And with this Sheck group now knocked out, it reminded me we lost all of our weapons due to the raid. I mean, while we killed a lot of them, they also imprisoned us so they took our weapons and we were unable to find them in any of the containers in there when I checked. So chances are, our weapons are likely on a Sheck guard who has already despawned so I'm not trying to play where's Waldo over some virtual swords as I fuck it Okay, I'll take uh, some of the swords off e -shecks and I'll equip them on the gang for some temporary equipment until we get some better stuff Besides that scry was able to run out of her cell of an escape So that was really cool She'd be the first person to make it back to bad guy city unless a beak thing eats her or something But now when I had the gang selected and we went to the great fortress It was now ours all of the shecks and hives had left because there were now vassals and town folk There's even some recruits near the back of a great fortress just waiting to be recruited. I know, I know, I'm doing a round of recruitment soon, next episode, so comment something cool. I'll be picking out some random people from this video specifically to make some characters from. I wasn't going to do any recruiting just yet, but it was really cool. I mean, we did take over the great fortress, but on the flip side, we're barely running bad guy city. I mean, it's a real struggle to not get our asses beat on knocked out on the daily, and now on top of that, we have another place to defend and grow. It's going to be pretty hard, so for now, we're just gonna leave. Maybe in the future we'll come back, but no, for now, we're going back home. Foxbot was actually the first to get close to Bad Guy City right before being stopped by a skin spider, which he had a great stand down with and then killed. Then all the other catastrophes made it back home and into the gates, and now they needed to tend to her wounds. Because the next goal that we did have was to make a trip out to a way station so we could purchase some new limbs for everyone. But, of course, with the way that Kenshi has played, that would not last long, as it wouldn't even be one hour later, and guess who's at our gates? Down Come on, give it a guess. Oh yeah, you come on the stage, Shex, it's you. Oh yeah, baby, go ahead, spin the wheel. 
Oh, ding, 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 look at that, you win the Get Fucked Award, you get to get fucked, take that, motherfucker. The Sheks were invading Bad Guy City, and with everyone being injured, I was thankful there were only about maybe 20 to 30 of them to fight. I mean, that we could handle. Our group got, a, like, still quite a bit damaged from this, but something caught my eye. No, it wasn't a bunch of flies or moving pieces of iron in the background, it was a bunch of Sheks. They were running across the desert, coming to take over Bad Guy City. This was awful, because there's, like, 100 of them, and we didn't even have, like, 10 people healed ready to fight. Zagan was really our only hope to slow down this attack. Using his portable turret attack, Zangian would line up as many checks as he could, and then he would strike, dealing massive damage to whoever was caught in the crossfire. He wasn't able to get most of this group, as only a few got affected, and then two-thirds of them would run to the gate, with the other one-third staying to fight Zagan. Most of the gang outside was immediately dropped and knocked out, leaving only the heavily injured gangsters inside to fight and defend themselves. No one was able to stand up for very long, especially not Dr. Jules, because he he lost both his legs, so he was always crawling. He couldn't stand up for even a second, but <laughs> I didn't even write that. I just came up with that. I thought that was a good joke. That's what I think uh, good humor is. <laughs> the group hadn't even really gotten time to deal with their last battle, and now only a few gangsters were prepared to battle. The Shacks, of course, they're using heavy damage weapons, so this left our gangsters losing even more limbs. If it wasn't for the local settlers and the menders who were in the city, we would have been completely screwed. The menders would use their martial arts, but would not be that much of a match versus the giant swords that the Shek guards carried. Toro and Yumin would seem to do most of the work here and there, while being constantly knocked out, they were the ones getting back up constantly to fight again and again and again. Then B01, Beep, and the others were still heavily injured from their previous fights, so their main priority was just fighting for their lives and trying not to die. Luckily, somehow everyone was able to survive and take down the Sheks, both inside and outside of the city walls. And with this, I knew it was a huge opportunity to make some money. So the next course of action was immediately we placed down a few market stalls, and then I got Yumin to run around and pick up all the weapons. All the weapons sell for a thousand cats each, so I can place them in the market stalls and people will buy them in time. This will be great passive income, so it's worth doing right now, and I also know the bodies are going to end up despawning, so we don't really have a lot of time to pick them up. Either way though, we were able to get like three or four inventories full of swords and bring them to the market stalls, filling up about two chests full of swords. This time though, everyone was knocked out. I mean, there was quite literally only two top G's were awake at a time. We had over a dozen people just knocked the fuck out. This wasn't good at all. <laughs> I also only had uh, like two beds and one skeleton repair bed. I don't know why. Okay, maybe I'll build a bed house in the next episode as well. Maybe that's an idea. But then not even an in-game hour later, another Shek group arrived at our gates attempting to kill us. This is when I had one of the nicest shots I think I'll ever see from Zagan. This lined up perfectly with the side of a gate, and it took down a majority of a Shek group with this one ranged attack. This definitely saved us from collapse and death, as nobody else could really fight yet. And with Zagan only having about half a dozen Sheks to fight, fight melee, this was way more than doable. I then guess who showed up to go spin the wheel? It was the Dust Bandits. Fuckers, eh? And, like, I can't, I just can't stand today, man. It's been like bandit attack after attack after attack. It just, it never ends. And this is like, maybe, I don't know, the fourth raid in one Kenshi day? Moving forward onto day 94, B01 would have a meeting with Orta, Foxbot, and Beep. He knows things have been awful recently. I mean, it, he doesn't want to admit it, but it has been a real struggle to get the gang to the top. First, they had one of their companions die. Then the Shek raid was a setback, but at the same time, they were still able to claim the Great Fortress. So, the next goal would definitely have to be either taking over Admeg or Squint. There's easily three times the amount of Sheks or people in both cities, so in order for us to take over the cities, we're gonna need to recruit at least like five to ten new members and then train them to the top of their abilities. And then on top of that, we're gonna definitely need to fund some amazing equipment for this war, because if we're going with a 20 man gang, we're gonna need more than just specialist grade armor. It may sound like a lot, but when there's a will, there's a way. Now meanwhile, I had Yumin going over to the swamp so we could pick up some backpacks for the gang. This was the closest place to get backpacks. I really hate going in here, you guys know this, but at least now the group will be able to transport the swords over to the way stations so we can sell them for insane instant profit. And now the group was finally healing and preparing to head out on their next adventure as the raids and groups seemed to slow down a lot or at least got smaller in numbers. 
members. Currently, we have two different gangsters who either only have one arm or one leg, like they're missing three fucking limbs. So next episode, we definitely need to get those replaced. We can't have that going on for episodes on end. On top of that, I want to build stuff and uh, play Kenshi Happy Home Designer. So when we're getting some new recruits, we'll be building some stuff as well. So give me some cool building ideas or things to have at the base. And on top of that, I'll pick out some of those ideas and I'll use your guys as like usernames as the characters names. Welcome back everyone to another Kenshi video. Today we're going to be turning some of my sick and cool subscribers and viewers of a channel into Kenshi characters to be a part of a playthrough. Along with that, we're going to be reaching day 100 today, which is a huge milestone. I believe this is like episode 13 or 14 of a series, so it's going pretty strong. Bad Guy City has been dealing with raid after raid from Vashex and the Dust Bandits, so right now a lot of people are either beat up or missing limbs. To start, I decided I was going to send Beep over to near the hub where there's an outpost that belongs to the Adventurers Guild. The gang is currently only at like 20 members, so we have plenty of room to add some new heroes into the squad. And on top of that, we're on day 94, and B01, the leader of a catastrophe, stands guard at the gate. He's trying to make sure no one else comes running in and slaughtering all of his people, since over the past few weeks, we've had a lot of our settlers and townsfolk die due to all the Shek that have been running into the city and killing everyone. Around 22 o'clock, Beep got to the guild and found a headhunter. The way it works is that we pay a bit of money first, and in return, the headhunter will bring a group of that race to our base. Firstly, Beep opted for skeletons, but of course, it would end up costing 20k cats and then 10k per recruit, and we just can't afford that right now, so instead, I decided to choose a group of hivers that'll cost 5,000 cats to send and 5,000 per head to recruit. Now, back at Bad Guy City, I wanted to start some farming, but I had an unfortunate realization that the ground here isn't able to grow anything and I mean literally anything even cactus won't grow here you only get like 10% water from the well this place sucks it's a huge blow to our plans but we'll just have to adapt and uh, by adapt, I mean I'll get a hydroponics mod for the next episode or something. On day 95, a beast trader came to our town and had a beautiful animal called a swamp frog. I had to buy him right away. He was only like around a thousand cats and he was adorable. I got him from a new popular mod that was recently added to the workshop and he's sweet. Starting as a pup, the swamp frog who I named Ribbit is really weak and slow. The way he hops, though, it has some kind of confidence to it. I love him. B01 will be raising Ribbit in hopes to make him a powerful swamp frog one day. That's when, right away, a group of 50 Shex had to ruin it and they approached the gates. Alright, this is not good. Since Ribbit is super weak, he might even be able to get one hit by the Shex. So B01 picked him up, and then the rest of Bad Guy City ran outside to prepare for the battle. This time, I had Skeleton Fox who's been training on turrets, and surprisingly, this really paid off. Either way, one by one, the Shex fell and B01 ensured the safety of Ribbit. On top of that, the first round of recruits had finally arrived, so I could start hiring and renaming some hivers. I named the first recruit Nicola after a legendary viewer who made a big contribution towards the gaming PC. Then I chose some random people from the comments. Second hive was named after Hayden, a lad who's always in the comments. Shout out to you. Then I made Gray the Odd, a weird looking hiver, but possibly a really memorable one. And then in honor of a great nameless, I'm giving him another shot in a series with Nameless the Second. This is big, bro. Then the last hive was named Scumnut, which is just a killer name. So now we have five new hive recruits, all with really low stats. Ideally, I would want their stats and levels to be around 40 to 50, so this is going to take at least a week or so. Next, we had some Dust Reavers who tried to come by the base, but they got sent away fast with a stab in the face. I suppose since the Dust King is gone now, all the Dust Bandits are in chaos and they're making little subgroups, which is toxic as hell. I don't fuck with it. And since we had all these Sheks who were on the ground at our gates, before we disposed of your bodies, I figured it'd be a good idea to get our gangsters to pick up as many weapons as they could and then travel to sell them. That would give us enough money to do like a round two of recruits and prevent everyone who didn't get one from clicking off and unsubscribing so don't betray me yet okay your chance may come up now since we have a lot of people just hanging out and doing nothing we needed to train some people in other things more than just mining and building. So I went into the big house we had in the corner of Bad Guy City and I put a weapon smith table in it along with six weapon stands. Meanwhile, at around 1700 o'clock, Beep fell victim to a slaver somehow. He must have like attacked Beep and Beep kept running because there's no way one slaver 
fucking tuck down chainsaw arms beep. It just doesn't make sense. So the other three gangsters who were traveling with him ran back and beat up the slaver. Then they healed beep, freed him from shackles, and continued on their way to the hub. When they got to the hub, they sold a bunch of weapons, Evan found an adventurer's guild headhunter, and hired him to send a group of humans to Bad Guy City. On day 96, we got some more weapons from all the local raid attempts, so different gangsters would pick them all up and then go off to a way station to sell them. This would give us all the money that we would need for new recruits, plus all the food that we're going to need to buy, seeing as we can't grow any of our own crops here. Now that's when Yumin ran into the Squin Guards. For some brain dead reason, I guess the Pathfinding chose that path for him. It says where enemies with the Shex, immediately the guards beat him up and then threw him in prison. So this is quite a pain to ask. It means I'm going to have to prepare yet another Squin prison escape. And we're going to need to be a lot more careful because it seems like the Pathfinding is not on our side in this game. Finally, the new recruits would arrive, so B01 started picking people out. Firstly, he named one of them Crispy after a commenter. Then, I went on to name the second recruit Nash Okur, after a longtime supporter of a channel. Then, I named a female Greenlander after my Discord mod Cena, and then I named a male Greenlander after my Discord mod Dino. They've been helping me out a bunch behind the scenes, so I can't really thank them enough. Hopefully, they don't die. Maybe that's how I can thank them, by not letting them die. <laughs> and then lastly, I picked out one more person who's been a pretty active in the Discord server named Mixa and made them into this gnarly looking raider chick. The five new gangsters would join the hivers of a training house and begin to attempt to get on the same level as the rest of the team. Meanwhile, Yuman was imprisoned in Squin, so he lockpicked his way out and then began simply running out of the city. Since his athletic skill was very high, Vashek stood no chance of catching up to him, making the escape as simple as it could be. And he was now on his way to the way station to buy some skeleton limbs, as we have like three people who are crawling right now in Bad Guy City. It's not cool. <laughs> At 20 o'clock, he got to the way station, and since we only had like 20k cats, Yuman had to buy some pretty crappy limbs, but hey, anything's gonna be better than nothing. In a weaponsmith, the room I made some improvements by adding in a second weapon smith table so we could now make two sets of weapons and I'd add in some lights that way we'd stop losing levels and making shitty weapons when the darkness hits and then shortly after that a huge group of dust bandits tried to bug us and then run away from the base but Zagan took care of most of them yeah it turns out the superpower move I've been talking about it's just a glitch that the dev of a mod said shouldn't happen but I like it so fuck it it's staying and then on a side note ribbit is so slow like, I have him guarding B01, but he's not very fast, only 9 miles per hour tops. So in that time, B01 ran to the way station, then when he was running back, he met up with Ribbit like halfway and just picked him up. In time, Ribbit's gonna get a lot stronger, but right now he's so delicate, it's like nerve-wracking. Now, Yuman got back to the base and gave everybody that he could some limbs. We were still missing some arms and some stuff, but, you know, at least everybody had legs. It could be a lot worse. Also placed down a ton of copper storages, that way we we could just start to stockpile it and sell way more when we have a full inventory. I then decided to wrap things up, I would build a bar inside a bad guy city. A lot of you guys asked for this and feel free to give me more ideas for in the future. I love that shit, okay? That shit's wicked. To start, we need to make it look like a bar. I had some tables and some chairs to place along with some random decorations to make the place look more lively. After that, I placed down a few pillows so we could play instruments as well as smoke up, finally. The real world and my gaming world become even more similar to each other. By day 99, most of the bar was built and our new recruits were finished their basic training. We were also at almost 100 days in game. B01 can't believe how fast things are going. Hopefully one day we'll get to day 1000, as long as we keep on having a fun, good, wacky time in the game. And with our new swamp frog friend named Ribbit, we'll be training him up in time and then the 10 new recruits that we got. So far we've been building our evil empire slowly, filling it with powerful gangsters and warriors. But right now, Bad Guy City is broke. There's been constant raids from Bashek Empire, and the colony is struggling to survive. In the last video, we recruited this awesome swamp frog named Ribbit, who I love very much. Ribbit is the best. On top of that, we got 10 new recruits who have been training up in our training building. And we also found out that Bad Guy City is kind of a wasteland because we can't grow any crops here. Not even hemp, so we can't even get high. We need to get the fuck out of here to make money. I mean, Bad Guy City will always be our first city and headquarters, but B01 can't stand this place, dog. Alright, you gotta look at it this way. The group is constantly surrounded by Sheks, both from the Shek Empire 
and from the random butt fluff bandit groups that there are all over the place. On top of that, there's barely any places for us to shop now because we're basically banned from everywhere for fighting. We got people like Britney Ears fucking starving to death in the base. Like, I'm one undercover YouTuber infiltrating my Kenji series away from being exposed for running an abusive cult. Poor Britney Ears, I just feel so bad for them. So before I have to rename her to Britney Bones, I sent Yumin over to the way station to pick up some food. 20,000 cats worth of food doesn't really last that long. Just like in the real world in Kenshi, the price of food is insane. But we need to keep everyone fed, so we're gonna have to get a little bit more evil in our ways of making money, and I have just the idea. Today, we're gonna be becoming bandits in Kenshi. That's right, no longer will the dust bandits be trying to rob us for our jewels, it'll be the top G's robbing everyone. Currently, we've got a lot of different random fuck nuts attacking the city constantly, so we'll have different gangsters go one by one and pick up all the weapons that the Sheks were dropping. Each weapon that they were bringing to our base sells for around a thousand to 4,000 cats, so it's just money waiting to be made. Now, the only problem is that placing the weapons in our market stalls just doesn't seem to work. I mean, we end up making a few thousand cats every day, but it seems like a majority of our tourists and citizens are broke. They've already spent all their money on hash and whores, so we'll be forced to travel with the weapons and sell them somewhere else. There's a way station close by, luckily, so we'll- Oh, god damn it. A fucking bone dog fucking up my narrative. I'm sorry, guys. I promise that won't happen again. These are very professional videos. Alright, so as I was saying, there's a way station of a south, and is that a fucking check guard following us? Piece of shit! <clears throat> The way station isn't too far, so we'll make our money by selling the weapons there. While the group was traveling, of course they ended up running into another Shek group, but that's gonna be the entire goal of this video. As the Sheks are already hostile towards us, it only makes sense to be robbing them. We'll be able to take down a bunch of them in this area if we're hunting for them, and they're like one of the only groups that spawn here other than hivers and traders. So by the end of the day, the top G's got to the way station and began to sell all of their weapons. The way station didn't care that we looted these weapons from dead Sheks, so we're able to make about 6 60,000 cats from the first trip. This is when I realized it could be very profitable for us. It took maybe like 10 minutes to make that 60,000. So the top G's would continue to search for Sheks to ambush. The first group of Sheks the group found were very small, you know, only a few of them, but they bum-rushed poor Ribbit and nearly fucking killed him. He was all passed out on the floor looking like a slain soldier. Poor Ribbit was only like 10 damage away from dying. So after that, I made it a point to always have someone carry in Ribbit for the time being. Right now, Ribbit is squishy and tiny as fuck, and basically gets one shot, so I don't want him to die, I already love him. At 3am, the top G's found another group of Sheks and entered combat. Now, first, it was only a few of them, but after we looted most of the corpses, another group of Sheks ran into us, and then on top of that, a Western Hive scumbag traitor fuck found us. He threatened us by sending his deadly ass Garus after us. Now, if you don't remember, I got a mod that makes some of the animals wacky strong, and Garus are one of them. They can hit for up to 400 damage, so one hit can kill, like, almost anyone in our party. Zagan knew it was time to press Q and use his ultimate, so he began shooting projectiles at the Garus as fast as possible, aiming for vital areas to ensure a kill. After he focused on the Garus, he would then make his way onto the rest. Over half of the top Gs were knocked out, and the ones that were still alive were struggling to fight against the Western Hive traders and the group of Shek guards. By the end of a battle, the top Gs would just barely pull through, and there'd be a huge pile of bodies, from Sheks to humans to Hivers to Garus, just what a mess. First things first, <laughs> I'm the realist, I'm the realist. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry guys, okay. So first things first, they needed to make sure that nobody bleeds to death. I really hate when that happens and it really bums out the mood of the series. And second, we need to now loot all the bodies, as there's a lot of money to be made here. The Hivers have good weapons, and the Sheks have good weapons, so we'll be taking as much as we can. Since the Garus were killed and they had backpacks on them, which could hold a shit ton of weapons and wares, I decided to do a big brain move, and I would pick up the Garus and use them as backpacks, as we can still fill their inventories with shit and then carry them to a town, then sell the stuff out of them. There were four Caravan Garu backpacks with some of the wares that the Hivers were selling, mostly being building materials and low value items, but still, this was a lot. After about 15 in real life minutes of looting and healing, the group had about 3 Garus filled with weapons and wares to sell. So the next goal would be to get them to a way station and sell all of these. There's easily 100 to maybe 150k cats worth of loot to sell, so I was pumped. At 1630, they arrived and they were greeted by a guard running at them to fight them. <laughs> I guess since the gangsters have the Garus picked up and the Garus are owned by the Western Hive, 
I'm thinking that flags us as bad guys, so the entire way station was now wanting to fight us. For fuck's sakes, man, like, this means the only other places I can sell shit at right now is either the swamp, which is not happening, y'all know how I feel about the swamp, so realistically, the only other place, like the closest that we can go to, is in Mongrel. And that's still quite a distance to go, and we can't take the Garus because now I know they're gonna flag us as bad guys. So I would have to take the backpacks off of the Garus and then drop the Slade Beast. So now the group was on their way to Mongrel. This was gonna take a long time though, since they had so many weapons, their inventory was overloaded. The Garu backpacks had like 300 kilos in them, that's like 600 pounds worth of weapons. I could have called this video... Uh, my 600 pound life in Kenshi. You know what? I'm gonna do that soon. I better not see any of these other fucking Kenshi guys making that video now that it's my idea. You fuckers know who I'm talking about. I know you're watching this shit. See any motherfucker making a 600 pound life video in Kenshi before me, I swear to you, I do something. No, I don't really give a fuck, but that idea is out there, okay? It's up in the air. Let me know if you want to see that video come to reality. <laughs> Luckily for the gangsters, Vane wasn't as bad as the Shecklands as they'd be able to make it through and get into the Foglands easily. Once they were there, it was only a matter of plowing through all the Fogman that stood in their way between Mongrel. At this point, poor Ribbit was starving, so we need to get some food ASAP as well. Luckily, the gangsters arrived at the bar in Mongrel and were able to sell what weapons they had on them. The weapons that were in the Garu's backpacks were now stuck inside of the Garu's backpacks. Since you cannot open backpacks in Kenshi without putting them on a character, we have no Garu's to put these backpacks on. So we're essentially useless and just carrying the weapons. they are just fucking 600 pound backpacks, that's all they are, so yeah. That really sucks. The only way we'll end up getting a pack beast as well is from a beast trader or finding one in the wild and somehow subduing it. I'll have to hope a beast trader shows up at the base. And coincidentally, you know that whole guy that caused the whole Where's Waldo game that I play every time we go to Mongrel? Finally, of course, he appears. There he is. Aw, oh, sweet. But guess what? I don't got a CPU core anymore because I probably sold it for fucking crack money. Nothing can go right in this series, man. Don't worry. Just one one day, okay? One day at like episode 47, we'll be able to recruit that guy. Just give me a bit. Now we had to get out of Mongrel, and that was going to be the main big challenge. While we were still slow since we had these crazy heavy backpacks on us, it was a huge disadvantage because any Fogman that saw us could instantly run up to us, catch up to us, and stop us for combat. The Fogmen are all really really weak compared to the gangsters, so these battles would be nothing but time slowdowns for the group, and there were a lot of them. Eventually, they would clear out through the Foglands and enter the Hivelands once again, but this time it was proving to be hell for the group to get through. My game just kept crashing at random points in between these two cities. I don't know why, so I guess the rain was too much that day. Now that the group was back at the base, we could replenish our food storage and add about a week to everyone's lifespan. At this point, groups of Sheks would begin to arrive at Bad Guy City, starting with a group of strong Sheck guards, and then an hour later, a group of wild berserkers. It was just nuts. At least Bad Guy City was heavily defended with everybody being home now, but the 10 recruits I got from the last episode that have all been training and leveling up still need to get some upgrades for weapons and armor as right now they just have normal clothes and sticks. So since we'll need a lot of money for that, after each attack, the top G's would continue to fill their inventories back up with lots of weapons until everyone had their inventory full. At around 13 o'clock, a huge group of Sheks appeared at the gates, and this scared me for a brief second. It was looking like it was going to be a crazy ass attack. But since the Sheks were attacking our city, a local trading caravan ran up, which is a stronger group than likely who guards Catlon. This guy has all these Garus with him and he unleashed them on the Sheks and within seconds, dozens of Sheks were dropping to the ground. This allowed us to loot even more weapons, easily three to four dozen weapons. And by 14 o'clock on day 105, the top Gs were looking for a couple more groups to rob so they could fully load up with weapons and have a full inventory of stolen goods to go sell. We still have a Garu weapons that are now placed at the base, but we won't be able to sell them until we get Garus. So the group would run around it until 5 a.m. when they finally got to the way station and started selling all their loot. I guess it isn't a problem if we sell stolen goods as long as we don't carry the dead bodies into the way station. I suppose that makes sense but still it's pretty fishy. Either way it brought the gangsters up to 132,000 cats. With another 100k of weapons at the base in the backpacks they had 
at least had made a quarter mil in under one week, proving that becoming bandits in Kenshi can not only be highly profitable, but it's also highly rewarding as everyone got stronger and got a lot of experience with each battle we got into with the Shex. A couple videos ago, I recruited a bunch of brand new recruits, to be exact, about 10 of them. So the past week in game, they've been training up their skills in our nice training room. But the main problem that our gangster nation currently faces is that these 10 new recruits don't have any armor or weapons. I mean, they all have sticks and some normal pants, but we need to get them fitted up if we want to be able to survive in the wasteland of Kenshi. So while they're all training, I'll be sending our main group, the Top Cheese, out to explore and to find some equipment for them, as we could go buy the weapons and armor, but buying weapons and armor for 10 different characters, that's easily gonna run us like 200k cats. While I had our main group healing up and preparing to leave, I checked out the research bench and grabbed a few more technologies. At this point, we've got almost all the important technologies researched with books, so the only technologies that really remain are the ones that require either ancient science books or engineering research and AI cores. So we're gonna need to seek out some ruins soon in the series to keep making progress in the technology tree. Or we can just, you know, stay where we're at, be like cavemen or something. Yeah, I'd rather a, uh, try to make progress, so we'll try to find some ruins soon. At the start of day 107, the top G's gathered outside of the gates and began their adventure. If you remember a few videos ago, we attempted to explore the Shrieking Forest, which didn't go too well. The group of gangsters got outnumbered by a lot of Shrieking Bandits, which led to them just barely escaping. Now, at least they're a bit stronger, so we'll be going back there and hopefully regaining our honor against the freaky looking bandits. It wouldn't be until a few hours later when the group was traveling across the vein when some bandits and beak things ended up ambushing the group. What was most important was that Ribbit was hit and being chased by beak things. The whole group was spread apart too, like a whore. Just nothing was going well today. Ribbit was hopping for his little life and trying to run away from two pup beak things that were chasing him. And while he might not be good at fighting right now, his life preservation skills are pretty high. He was able to dodge each hit the beak things attempted, making his way over to the group. Evan Orta would pick up Ribbit so that no one else could attack him. Then the gangsters would continue to take down the rest of the beak things. Our group all healed up, and then I had some of them loot the leather off of the beak things, as we'll be stopping in Mongrel to pick up some stuff. The gangsters would continue their adventure Adventure, making sure nothing would stand in their way. Just outside of a Foglands, they did decide to stop to take care of a group of starving bandits. Not by giving them food or actually taking care of them, but by seeing how fast we could beat them up. It only took a few seconds this time, which is great. I gotta start timing these and see what like our personal record is. Of a downside, I must have sneezed when I was using my OBS, so the gameplay came out looking like this. Yeah, <laughs> not good, eh? 5,000 subs strong, I just want to thank you guys for that. So in return, I've given you guys the most scuffed fucking gameplay recording. <laughs> Don't worry guys, in 5 years or when we hit 100k, I can promise you these videos will still have the same bullshit going on in them. <laughs> Don't worry though, guys. Okay, the average YouTuber, you'd just be stuck looking at the black bar on the side, but not with me. Using some highly advanced editing tactics I picked up from a guy I apprenticed under in Vietnam, I was able to use his ancient editing art and I zoomed the camera in, so for the rest of the video, it'll just be a bit more close than normal. You guys won't see the HUD? Maybe you guys might like this? I don't know, let's see. Moving forward, the gangsters would arrive in Mongrel and were able to make a little bit of money, but ended up spending a lot of the money that they had on food. With that done, it was now time to head to the Shrieking Forest. The group needed to travel north, straight through the Foglands, and then they're pretty much there. It wouldn't take long, and by 2am, the gangsters could spot two different bandit groups running around and shrieking. I have no clue where they're going or what the Shrieking Bandit's goals are, like other than just to kill. Truly, just some savage and feral bandits. The gangsters ran up and began what will be known as the Day of Shrieking as they began fighting a couple dozen Shrieking Bandits. The goal was to take down any super strong bandits as well as take their weapons and armor. Now, there's a lot of different Shrieking Bandits due to the Shrieking Bandits expanded mod I play with which adds stronger variants of a bandit. So the gangsters would take down the first group and then move on before a second group was then found. They knew they just had to 
stay moving, as they would be fine as fighting one group at a time isn't really a problem, it's when a bunch of groups stack up at once. After exploring a bit, the group saw a bunch of towers of a distance, so I wanted the gangsters to circle around the area to get to them. But that's when a group of a shrieking bandits stopped us, which had a gnarly looking character. This helmet is fucking insane, like what a wacky looking piece of armor. I... I, I don't like it, but I really like it at the same time. So one by one, the gangsters would take down this group, but this was going to be the beginning of a nightmare. No one knew, but shortly after healing up and looting, another group of shrieking bandits ran up and began combat. At this point, the group was still in good health, and Toro took the katana from that weird looking bandit, and it turns out that katana is really good. It does a lot of damage, and a blade is like longer than a plank. After the fourth group, a fifth group arrived and then began fighting, and sure enough, after them, a group of vagrants for some reason. Why the fuck are the vagrants even out here? What the hell? But then a big oh no moment happened when dozens of shrieking bandits came pouring from over the hill. The gangsters were now in big trouble as this was easily around a dozen bandits per gangster to ratio them. There was Beep fighting a group all on his own, but with a bunch of the bandits unleashing attacks, all Beep could do was just dodge and roll around as he attempted to save his life. <laughs> Toro was having no problem taking down her fair share of bandits with her new katana, one hitting some of them even. And at this point, I lost count how many groups of shrieking bandits ambushed us. We were at like 6 or 7 now, and it was not even like 9 o'clock. Another group arrives, and at this point, a few gangsters are starting to get knocked out. But right when we take down the rest of the bandits, another group runs over and begins fighting. Everyone's skill levels are in the 50s to 70s, so they'll end up getting back up real quick and handling as many bandits as they can. In between all the fighting, I had different gangsters running from corpse to corpse, looting the most valuable and useful equipment. Meanwhile, more and more bandits just kept pouring in. Half of the gangsters were now knocked out, and it was not looking good. Zagan was starting to take more and more damage, which was slowing him down severely, crippling his flashy moves he's used to pulling off. And the bodies were really starting to pile up. I mean, they were making their own hill, as they'd slide down that one hill and then all gather in an area. But still, more and more bandits just kept pouring in, attempting to take our lives. Eventually, one of these groups would overwhelm Zagan and the rest of the gangsters, which just left B-01 on his feet to fight off the rest of the bandits. Other members of the gang would slowly rise and start to heal themselves before returning to combat, but at this point, we had 100 to 200 shrieking bandit bodies lying on the ground. It was just pure mayhem. By 14 o'clock, half of a group were able to heal themselves and rise back up for another battle. And I kept using like one person at a time to sneak out and grab some armor and good equipment, but as you can imagine, this was very hard to do as there's so many bodies on the ground. I had to play Where's Waldo with trying to spot any unique looking bandits as they'd have the best weapons and armor to take back home. The group finally took down the last of the bandits by 1430 o'clock, and then they were able to start healing up. Everyone had really severe injuries as they just fought for like nearly 10 hours straight. But but they'd only have about a half hour before another shrieking bandit group would run in and begin to fight them. We needed to get healed and get the hell out of here. It was starting to lag out my game, everyone was choppy and moving at like 14 frames per second. Not good, bro. Enough bandits would gather back up and take down the rest of her conscious gangsters. I mean, at least everyone was bandaged or healed, but we still had severe injuries across the board. And now on top of that, someone was even missing an arm, so it'll take me days, if not videos, to get them a replacement. By nearly 18 o'clock, I could barely play anymore, and the bandits never seemed to end. We had killed definitely around 200 to maybe even 300 of them but they were still just pouring in. So instead of torturing myself, I would save back at Bad Guy City and reload squad positions, which sends everybody back to whatever point I reload to save from. Everyone's still knocked out or they're bleeding out, which is even worse. So we'll need to rush everyone into beds and get them to heal up. While everyone was getting into beds, I gathered the 10 new recruits who have been training and they all went to the building near B-01 so we could finally equip them with some gear. One by one, I went through all 
all of the new hivers and humans and gave them brand new weapons and armor. Well, not brand new because they were all taken from the Shrieking Bandits and everybody looks pretty crazy now, but uh, that's fine. We're a gang after all, okay? We're an evil empire, so we need our gangsters to look intimidating or insane. Now we had everyone equipped. I mean, they still needed boots, and the Hivers still need special headgear, but we're looking a lot better than we were before. Now, with proper equipment, these 10 gangsters will properly be able to defend themselves, as well as Bad Guy City. So, I moved all 10 of new recruits into the Top G's group, and we'll turn our small group of hooligans into a full-fledged army of hooligans. And to begin, we'll get to test ourselves against a Shek raid, which, yeah, it didn't go too well. Turns out, some of the armor we got is, like, pretty bad and doesn't cover a majority of the body. So half of the new guys, they end up getting, like, knocked out right away. But the other half, they all stood tall at the end of the battle, which was pretty cool. They all still need to train for individual weapon skills, as I haven't even touched those skills yet. But it'll happen in time. So after the battle, it's time to get everybody healed up yet again. And then I'm gonna send them on a bandit run with the rest of the boys. In the last video, we were able to make a lot of money by beating up... Up random shacks and selling their weapons so we'd be continuing to utilize this method today before heading out i put all of the leftover armor and weapons we got from the shrieking bandits into storage and then i would put all the shrieking tablets we got and put them into our research table we'll be able to make our own shrieking armor but i was only able to unlock a few of them so we'll need to head back eventually to the shrieking forest if we want to unlock the other types of armor by 15 30 o'clock everyone was ready and they were outside now when they were leaving there was this one lonely shek warrior hanging out who the group began in combat with and it just made me start laughing when i was recording this just imagine you see this group of lunatics coming towards you even better i got a good pov shot of what it looked like from the point of view absolutely terrifying i love it we've definitely got one of the coolest kenshi gangs in gamer history in the making right now now before the group left they would end up seeing a lost hive drone who spoke to them one of our hivers spoke back so i thought oh we'll be able to recruit him this will be cool for the video but then poof no the dialogue option just disappears like what the fuck that, that's disappointing as hell trust me i was like already preparing to make a whole backstory for this guy who's about to join the gang and go on a bandit hunt but never mind that the gangsters would try healing him but with no luck to get him to talk to them they would just continue on their bandit adventure now there's a lot of shack groups in this land to find so one group at a time the gangsters would begin to run up on them and then after the battle loot all of them for their weapons they'd find their second group being some shack guards and scouts at around 19 o'clock and this would of course lead to an intense battle the shack guards have very high stats so they're on par with most of our gangsters if not they're even stronger only b01 and a few others are at a higher level than the shacks so it was enough to take down this group of warriors but after it was followed by another group and this one was much larger in size they just came out of nowhere and started knocking people out i mean the shacks were dealing a lot of damage but our gangsters were fighting back the best they could it wouldn't be too long though until our group was quickly overwhelmed i mean i couldn't believe how fast they all went down i think we've taken on bigger groups than this with just the top g's and no recruits now we have even more people in our group but the Sheks proved to be worthy enemies and end up knocking everyone out and they almost made me snap i almost had to start an entire war with them again because one of the Sheks began to butcher ribbit the swamp frog for meat i couldn't let this happen man like honestly i'd let beep die before i let ribbit die i i love that little guy so everybody that was awake tried to get up to try to stop the butchering of their little friend on top of that a distress signal was sent to bad guy city which essentially means everybody was now on their way to that location <laughs> by the end of the night the group were finally able to take back the advantage and knock out the shacks but then more and more of them would just continue to pour in and attack the gangsters so their victory would not last long as the next group that would pour in would knock them all out again just like the shrieking bandits we were in a stun lock at least there weren't as many bodies but wow just it never seems to end <laughs> now i had two choices try to haul everyone back home 
or send Chompy and do a squad reset, which I'd rather do the second. I mean, I had stuff to do that day. So everybody poofs back home and is knocked out and bleeding out. But on a real downside, I guess the return for cheating and teleporting back home is I forgot to grab the weapons off of 50 or so Sheks that we had just fought. So we just lost out on easily 50 to 100k cats. Fuck me. We'll just have to heal up yet again for like i don't know the fifth time this video <laughs> and then we'll get back to it okay we'll try to find some more sheks to fight while yes we keep getting knocked down everyone is getting stronger with each fight which is the most important part day by day we're becoming stronger and eventually these groups won't even be able to touch us but for now holy shit they're a hindrance so one by one everyone went into bed so they could heal and return to fighting condition that's when i saw the most unhinged thing i've seen yet in my playthrough while everyone is bleeding on the beds and healing up and all the chaos, you know, that just broke out is trying to be contained. While all of this nonsense is going on, Chompy's outside of a fucking gate walls and he's eating the booty hole of another processor unit. What a guy. I'm not sure whether to be disappointed or proud, but either way, I'm stunned. By 20 o'clock, we were finally ready to head back out to Banditon. To Banditon? <laughs> I don't even know if that's a word. I knew we couldn't end the video empty-handed. Mainly, um, we also need to buy food before everybody starves to death, so I didn't really have a choice. <laughs> Taking down our first group of Sheck guards would load up about half of our gangsters with the weapons that we needed, and then moving on to around 5am, they'd find the next group of Sheks to fight. One by one, they take the Sheks down while sustaining some serious injuries on some of them, Everyone was still okay or not knocked out, so that was pretty good. There's plenty of Sheks to loot, and it was looking like a big money type day. Loading everybody up with as many swords, planks, and fragment axes as possible. Once we were ready, it wasn't a far distance to make it to the way station, so we began their journey there. Even on max speed though, the group was terribly slow since we had a lot of injuries slowing us down. They'd end up running into a couple groups on the way, but luckily, by the time we hit the way station, I'd finally realized what was wrong with the OBS recording, so I fixed the camera. <laughs> I'm glad, I, yeah, we got the camera fixed for like, what, the last one minute of the video? That's pretty sweet. Let me know if you like the close-up view we had in this video, though. Maybe I'll do more if it's a hit. We got into the shop and sold all the weapons to get us past 200k cats. So we spent about 80k cats on food. That brought us back down to under 200k, but that's alright. At least now we got plenty of food. Then the gangsters would begin their journey back to Bad Guy City so we could heal up once again for like the sixth time <laughs> right now it's day 113 and our gang is currently picking up after the aftermath of countless Sheck raids bad guy city video by video has been becoming the coolest spot in the game and catastrophes led by our hero b01 has become a strong faction with 30 or so gangsters in it the little base has now become a huge town and at this point with its own bar and economy there's a lot of different citizens walking around or all buying a sword and the planks that we're picking up from the bandits and the shecks but still somehow even though our town is thriving we're really struggling with making money i've also been grabbing a bunch of books for research whenever i can but we're kind of at the point now where i need to start raiding some labs and ruins in order to get the research that we need so once our main party was ready i began by sending them to the great fortress it looked like another icon was on it so i wanted to make sure the shecks didn't take it over again but as we were on our way this large group of 40 to 50 shecks bandits they just come jogging by and i'm like hmm <laughs> you know i i wonder where they're going you know like maybe we should follow them for a bit and yeah sure enough they're trying to attack bad guy city who who could have fucking guessed <laughs> so the top g's fought the Shek bandits at the gate of bad guy city and made sure that none of them would make it inside had it just been the 10 or so people that we were going to leave at bad guy city this could have been a very fierce raid but the top g's are super strong now so they were able to knock down all of the Sheks in just about a few in-game minutes. Before we left, I realized I had some ancient science books and some engineering research still, so I transferred them from Cat's backpack and into our research bench, and then I selected a few more technologies to research and lock. Mainly, I wanted robotics and more advanced weapon smithing. We'll need both, as if we can start to make our own high-quality limbs and our own high-quality weapons, that'll be really good and we'll get way stronger and make a lot of money. After I finished selecting the research, I had some characters go 
one by one to each of the shacks from the raid at our gates and pick up all of our weapons so that way we could sell them. If you haven't seen the previous few episodes, I feel bad for you because they were really good, but this is how we've been making a lot of more money in these episodes. These bandit attacks are really helping us stay afloat as we wouldn't be able to pay for all this food if it wasn't for all the shack raids. Every one of them brings a weapon that's worth about a thousand to three thousand cats on average. So after we filled up our inventories with the weapons, the top G's were off. First, they'd be going to a way station, that way they could sell all the weapons they picked up, and then grab some food. After they were finished at the way station, they would then go check out the Great Fortress to make sure no checks were back there squatting or something. After getting close enough, I could see that the city was still in our control, and the checks hadn't returned, so that was really good. This meant the top G's could go on their adventure. The goal is currently to try and travel south. B01 and his group have only explored like 15% of the map in all reality, so there's a lot of places to still go and check out. The main goal at hand right now is going to be to get near the Fishman Island. But there's going to be a lot of stuff in between us along the way, such as all of these broken ass ruins and labs. I kept on finding these and they're all like empty or destroyed, so that's really shitty. Now when the gang were traveling pretty early into their adventure, they came across a berserker village. The berserkers being one of the many Shek bandit groups who constantly harass B01 and his gang. At first sight, this place this just looks depressing. Every single building here has no roof, we're all just rubble like waiting to collapse or fall over. And they got like some of the silliest shit going on, I mean they have a gate sitting out front but there's like no walls around it. I mean like I have never seen such a shitty base before, like there aren't even lights here, even camps like normal camps that bandits set up. Those have lights. So I figured we'd at least have a respect to use the gate, since uh, they must have kept it for some reason. And surprisingly, the berserkers didn't go berserk. I mean, they weren't doing anything. I thought just as soon as we entered, they'd try to attack us or something. We had to go into the big house of rubble and go up to the berserker leader and start a battle with him. The rest of the gang swarms in and the fight begins. The room is so tight and there's so many people inside, like everybody could barely move. But this was kind of to our advantage because the berserkers would quit quickly become victims to all of our attacks and fall unconscious. There were some nice weapons and a leader of berserkers named Ghost, he has a 10k cat bounty on his head. And we can turn that in at either the Shek Kingdom or the Holy Nation. Now the Shek Kingdom, there are enemies so we won't be able to bring him there but we can bring him up to a holy nation. Only problem is, is that we're gonna kinda need to send someone who is by default a normal human male with no prosthetic limbs. Any other race, gender, or skeleton will have an awful time in a holy nation. So Cat put Ghost on his shoulders and began his journey of heading to the closest holy nation city in order to turn in the bounty. Meanwhile, the top G's were going to hang out at a berserker base for a while until the berserkers all died. We just left them they're knocked out, they might get up and continue living, so we must ensure that everyone here is dead. We would do this by letting Chompy go from corpse to corpse and eat the berserkers alive, as if they got eaten, then there's no fucking way that they can revive themselves or continue being bandits. And in the morning, some bone dogs would even show up and then help Chompy eat the knocked out berserkers. Cat was able to run through the swamp and make it into near the hub where he stopped at a bar to buy some food. That's when he ran through an entire camp of dust bandits. This almost resulted in him being attacked, but the dust bandits were too slow to keep up with him. And my favorite part was just as Cat was running away, there was a bunch of slave traders who just wandered in and began to fight the dust bandits. Likely, that group of dust bandits are going to become slaves by the end of that day. Cat just kept on running. He doesn't care. I mean, he could have taken on both groups by himself. He had easily twice to three times the levels of skills of everyone there. But the Dust Bandits will just have to suffer as that's how karma is going to play its course. By day 115 and at 16 o'clock, Cat was approaching the Holy Nation City. He took a look at the guards that were there and they had really low stats compared to him. He's certain there's some higher ranking guards, but it seems to just be the average farmer in disguise as paladins. Cat would run into the main police building for the Holy Nation and talk to the High Inquisitor Seta in order to hand in the bounty. At first, Seta tries to hint at us to give him the bounty as a gift for Okran, but no way man, fuck that. We came here for money, alright, we aren't followers of Okran, which he acknowledges and uh, scolds us for, and then he gives us 10k cats. Sweet, Cat now had his cats and he could look around the city, but it seemed pretty simple. I mean, there's some shops and a temple. 
a few residential locations, but he knew he had to make his way back to Bad Guy City. Meanwhile, with most of the Berserkers dead, the Top G's decided it was time to continue their adventure, heading towards the Fishman Islands. Of course, the gang's still looking out for any ruins and places of interest to check out, but they're currently still in the Shek's territory. They're coming up towards the Empire's territory, and there's a lot of different enemies to look out for, from bandits to skin spiders. The gang's gonna need to constantly stop to take care of some foes before healing up and then going back on their adventure. Eventually, they cross paths with some Shek guards who had the advantage of being on the upper end of a hill. The two groups would collide, and slowly, more and more Shek guards would fall down one by one until the gangsters stood victorious. This was a pretty severe battle, and everybody was feeling the damage from it. So after we healed up, I took a minute to look at all the weapons that the guards were carrying. There's no way I was going to be passing up all this free money, so I spent a few minutes just looting all the weapons, putting all the swords and whatnot into our inventories. By the morning time, the gangsters were back on their way to the Fishman Islands, but still, they kept finding more and more Shek guards. It didn't help either, they got really close to a nearby small Shek outpost, which instantly rang the alarms and set more whatever few shecks that were there after us. I mean, this old post had a bunch of broken buildings as well, but at least it had walls with a gate, so that's way more impressive than the Berserkers had, I'll give them that. But there didn't seem to be too many people around here, so the gangsters just tried to go on by. They kept on getting stopped by all these random groups of shecks and guards, which isn't much of a problem, it's just more of an annoyance. As constantly, just back to back, we were having to stop in order to fight all of these bastards. Meanwhile, back at Bad Guy City, the 10 gangsters that were there were receiving bandit raid after bandit raid back to back within about an hour to each other. Luckily, there are all the citizens and travelers who'd fight the bandits as well, which would make most of these battles much easier. Without all the citizens we have there, Bad Guy City would probably be screwed. Luckily, the Top G started to make some progress into the south and near the border of a crater. There's a lot more wildlife out here than there are bandits and whatnot, which is a nice change of pace, but once entering the crater, we could see the other end of what it's like being in Kenshi. One of the first things I saw was a bunch of wild swamp raptors fighting a few beak things. I thought the beak things would have won. I mean, the beak thing was hitting a bunch of them at a time, taking down quite a few, but still, the raptors were able to overwhelm and take down the beast. There's a lot of different animals and monsters around here, so the gangsters need to be very careful. And it wouldn't take too long until they quickly realized how bad the situation was when they'd come across their first few beak things, which wasn't that bad, but then going forward, there's a few more to fight. We could see that the crater is just filled with these beasts, making it a very dangerous area to travel through. The only other groups that we could see were high level tech hunters and different high level warriors, and of course they'd be able to hold their own against the beak things. This was definitely a dangerous area of a game to be exploring in, but the group couldn't help themselves, they needed to get forward and get down to the south, so the group would just continue exploring the crater. They kept on finding a lot more broken and destroyed ruins, which was really shitty. We really need to find one that's intact, that way we can get some books and some AI cores for research. The group eventually would come across a group of slave hunters who were looking for some victims to beat up and enslave. They quickly had half of their group killed by uh, our group, leaving them just to heal up. We didn't kill the rest of them because it was just satisfying knowing that these slave hunters watched as their friends died and then we walked away without a single care for them. Not even worth the money or enslaving, you know? <laughs> Meanwhile, the entirety of Bad Guy City was knocked out. It turns out they were being attacked by some bandits, and then some Shack guards also came over. It was really up to poor Cat, who just got back home, he was left all alone, everybody else was knocked out. He couldn't survive the assault either though, and he would be knocked out as well. Luckily, still the Shrek guards would leave Bad Guy City after knocking out everyone, but it proved to Cat he needed to get a lot stronger if he wants to become a top lieutenant of the catastrophes. But finally, the gangsters would arrive at a town called Clown Steady. It's a small town to the south of the map where they'd be able to sell off all the random weapons they've been gathering over the span of this episode. Along with that, they'd be able to restock their food and get everybody to heal in beds before they head out for their next journey. While everyone was there healing up, I got 
hat over at bad guy city to grab everyone and throw them into beds they'll heal much faster if we got them in beds and we also now have like two people that are missing legs which isn't good i also didn't grab them legs in this episode of course so hopefully in time or eventually i'll end up remembering it or it bothers me enough so i have to get them once he got a bunch of people into beds he himself lied down and began to recover from the deep wounds that they sustained from the Shek attack. Once he was doing a bit better, Cat would make his way over to the local way station and then buy some food for Bad Guy City. Meanwhile, the top G's were now busy running through the south, and then they found some wild swamp frogs. It was sad, I really don't like fighting the swamp frogs because they're cool as hell, but since these ones were feral, they didn't really give us a choice. Now the gang were over to a local market that was on the way to the Fishman Island because it seemed like a good idea. They could probably stop and get some new equipment since they had a lot of money on hand. Maybe grab a few drinks, get a rice bowl or something, you know? But once they arrived at the market, something seemed fishy and off. First off, there was a bunch of people in cages, so, I mean wasn't born yesterday, I know these are slaves. Second, there weren't many stores there as well. You know, there's like, just a bar and some random stalls. And while that happened, Cat arrived at a way station, so I switched to him quick and I went to go buy some food, but there was no food at the way station, so I needed to send Cat all the way to the swamp in order to buy some food, since he can't go into Shek cities. After all, I think he was the person who started the whole war between the catastrophes and the Sheks to begin with. But when he was leaving the way station, somebody that doesn't like B-01 and his gang noticed that they were there, which caused all of the slave traders to become hostile towards the group. The top G's had no choice but to walk into a trap, basically. Disguised as a normal city, the gangsters now had to fight every slave trader in this market and attempt to take down the faction. While there are a lot of slave traders, B-01 and his gang are very strong now. Beep was knocking out people left and right, throwing wacky ass hits at them. There's even some times where Beep was one hitting people now, which is phenomenal. Inside of a bar, there was all these drifters, and they weren't hostile, it was just the slave traders and anyone who was affiliated with them. Thankfully, none of the Garus were affiliated with the slave traders, or else we would have had to flee the area. Those things are worse than a Beak thing, man, those things are power. By 11 o'clock, they had knocked out a bunch of the slave traders, but... Then, the Traders Guild got involved as well. I mean, fuck them. If they think it's okay to fight with us, they're not worth being cool with anyways. I don't give a shit. Well, so now we're enemies with the Slave Traders and the Traders Guild. Isn't that great? The gang would go into each building, making sure to clear them out and eliminate any enemies or guards that weren't already bleeding or dying. The market was in complete anarchy, with all of the Slave Traders falling to their wounds and bleeding out, there are more and more people starting to run into the place, including some martial arts masters. This meant the top G's had taken down the slave market. With some guards still alive, the gangsters would be hanging out for a bit just to look for loot, heal up, and make sure that they could kill as many guards as possible. And Toro would go into one of the slave shops, and she noticed a bunch of slaves just sitting there in cages. So one by one, she started to lockpick their shackles and cages in order to set them free. I mean, whatever way to take down the slave market but by freeing a bunch of random slaves. Not everyone would leave though, I mean there's some people that were so scared of punishment they stayed in their cages even after we had eliminated all of the guards and lockpicked their cage and shackles. But after freeing every slave that we could at the building, the gang went to the middle of a market and started to do the same there with all of the slaves outside in cages. By the end of the night, we had freed every single slave in the market, making the stock price of them probably skyrocket. Like, if anything, this wasn't a really uh, thought out plan because of the butterfly effect. The price of slaves is going to go up because there's less slaves now and there isn't a slave market. People are just going to be working extra hard at slaving, you know, it just means more people will be enslaved, but... You know, that's alright. In the Kenshi reality, the slave markets are no more, and dozens of random drifters will be able to drift on out of a market. Hopefully, they'll find freedom or safety, you know? This is kind of like when you let a bird go out of your window, and you just hope it knows how to fly. Before leaving, some of the slave traders had high levels, so I decided to grab a bunch of weapons, and most of the weapons that I did grab were worth about 3,000 to 4,000 cats each, which will basically pay for food for the entire trip. The gangsters would run out 
out of a market being followed by a man named Urson. They freed him, and since he was still following them, B01 offered him a spot in the gang. Urson has no stats, all level 1, and he's as weak as possible, but that's alright. I mean, we'll be able to bring him to the Fishman Islands with us to get strong. Meanwhile, poor Ribbit, he was still stuck inside of a building at the slave market. He couldn't get out, which was terrifying and we couldn't just leave him either. If this ever happens to you, just run up close to the character and then pick them up with another character. Usually you'll be able to get them out of a spot or the wall that they're stuck in and then put them back down on normal ground. The gang would continue to head east and then would find a hidden village in the mountains. When going to the gates of it, the gang realized this was home to those martial arts warriors we had seen earlier of a slave markets. They have different places to train here and whatnot and it's pretty nice. I mean, there's a bar, there's some beds. This place is added in from a mod, of course, that's in my mod list in the description below. You can train martial arts here, and I'm pretty sure there's more to discover, but we have a mission at hand. Skipping the healing, which hopefully doesn't put the group at risk in the future, they head closer and closer towards the Fishman Islands, with the goal of finding and killing the King of Fishmen, as well as possibly kidnapping some Fishmen to add to the gang. The group spent a lot of time and energy to get this close but they could finally see the island over the horizon. Getting to the south of the map has had its challenges, but none has stood as great as what was in front of the start of this Kenshi video. Continuing the journey to the Fishman Islands, the gang is currently trying to not get killed by a wild hydra. Similar to the beak thing, but maybe a hundred times stronger, the hydra wanders the south from group to group and kills literally everything. It can run at I think around 50 miles per hour, so it just zooms from group to group killing them. There's no way we're going to be able to fight this thing. One, because we are not prepared to fight a monster like this because it would definitely lead to a party wipe, and two, because I'm not a fucking masochist. So to start today's adventure, B01 and his gang will be trying their best to avoid the Hydra. They'll be taking a long way around him and trying to go over to one of the bridges that leads them to the Fishman Island. If you haven't in a while, remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I always love it when you guys do that. In the last video, we had a lot of fun adventures from Bad Guy City down south into a really, really bad outpost. The outpost was owned by the Berserkers, so after we raided that place, we went to a slave market just a little bit south. And all just by accident, because, well, the slavers tried to attack the gang, we had no choice but to just slaughter the entire outpost of slavers and everyone associated with it. But the gang would make the choice to free a bunch of random slaves that were trapped in the cages, proving there is a good side of evil in their ways. The Hydra luckily ran off after some bone dogs so the top G's could sneak over to the bridge. Meanwhile, Cat was fucking dead. Okay, well no, he wasn't dead, but he was on his way back to Bad Guy City after he picked up some food, but when I found him, he was literally being looted. I guess two bums must have found him somehow and started picking his pockets and looting him for food. But we lucked out because bandits and Kenshi won't steal food from your characters as long as that food is inside of a backpack and not in their main inventory. Pretty wacky gameplay fact. Yeah, I know. But, uh, yeah, there you go. Cat is currently running back to Bad Guy City. That way he can deliver the much-needed food to our people and stop their literal starvation. Everyone keeps getting malnourished and losing stats. Meanwhile, the Sheks don't stop for even a day at a time with the constant raids. Between the Empire and the Shek Bandits and the Dust Bandits, we constantly got raids at the base, so we need to keep our people in the best condition that we can. The top G's are currently on their way to Fishman Island in order to find both a crab and possibly a fishman. There's also some loot to expect as somewhere on Fishman Island there's an overran lab which will contain weapons and research. It'll likely be guarded by a lot of fishmen but as you guys know if you've been watching episodes we really need to get more research books. Moving into the island the gang finds a nest of gurglers and confused to who or what they are they just enter battle. In the world of Kenshi, you kind of have to be a natural racist. Like, if you haven't seen somebody that looks like that before, like, if you look at someone and go, Oh, he has a horn sticking out of his head. Just fucking attack him. Kill him. It's you or them. And it was obvious that the gurglers with their weird fish faces and their fucked up looking bodies 
You know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to look at that and figure out they're going to be the opposite of friendly. So while the Gurglers are kind of insane psychopaths who just run around the island killing things, at very least, they are not really strong. But the only downside fighting them being, I believe they can eat you if they kidnap you, they're actually super weak. Within the Gurgler groups, there are Alpha Gurglers who have a lot more health and levels in their stats. So those are the ones we're going to try to want to kidnap. But I figured we'll try to do that on our way out of a Fishman Island. Island. That way we aren't carrying around, you know, a bunch of bodies for the entire episode or end up losing them in an attack. The gang was now running into groups of crabs and fishmen left and right as they got farther and farther into the island. Eventually, the gang would see the silhouette of what appeared to be a ruined city. It looks like fishmen were swarming the place all over the city and all over outside of the city, so the gangsters were gonna go there. They figured it'd be a good time to fight maybe 100 or 200 fishmen, but then all of a sudden it started to rain acid. Acid rain damages all non-skeleton party members minute by minute so their flesh was literally being burned off by the rain. They had to get to shelter and do it fast but seeing as the Gurgler city was all in ruins it meant even the gangsters if they fought their way into the outpost and got into a building there will still be no roof above her head because the roofs are collapsed so we'll still burn alive even if we end up taking over the city. Spotted the ancient lab ruin I mentioned earlier so they decided to run towards it knowing that would be the only place with a stable roof on the island that was their only hope as long as they can get a break from the acid rain that's all that mattered i mean ironically the acid rain would end up stopping before they even got to the ruin but i mean they were deep into their plans so they had to commit entering the lab they spot one gurgler innocently walking in a ruin so they fucking kill him <laughs> Then going up to the floors above where the King Gurgler and his 20 to 30 Gurglers are hanging out, a majority of them would all rush to fight our gang on a second floor. The Gurglers only managed to knock out Urson, who was one of the slaves we recruited in the last video after the slave camp attack. So he doesn't even fucking count, you know what I mean? <laughs> in, in, in reality, they were no match for the catastrophes. After they handled the grunts, B-01 and the rest of the group would go on to fight the Gurgler King and his three Gurgling henchmen. The king was so terrified of B-01, he ran downstairs right away and then picked a fight with Beep, who, let me remind you, has like literal chainsaw arms, so it didn't really make much of a difference in the king's fate. We are able to take him down really fast. A very anticlimactic battle, I know, but the true excitement came from the loot. Alright, I'm talking about high-tier weapons. I'm talking about research books. I'm talking about robot limbs, man. I'm talking about fish to stop our slowly dying and starving colony. Easily got near a dozen ancient science research books, as well as some AI cores and a few engineering research. So even though the battle here was pretty lame. I think this is one of the best places to explore early game, especially if you need to advance of a technology tree. We now had lots of loot and books and armor, as well as the King Gurgler head, which sells for a nice 60k cats. We also have human carrying around a crab from earlier, so once we get home, we can recruit it by putting it in a cage and then saying a few magic words. The gang basically just conquered the entirety of the Fishman Islands, and this meant unfortunately most of the fishmen were gone. I didn't realize this until I went back to that fishman city where I thought we, you know, we'd be fighting a bunch of fishmen, but unfortunately, some peasants moved in. Like, within the time it took us to kill the king and take his head off, we didn't even get outside, man. They already got their families moved in, pictures of their kids on the wall. Fucking remarkable how fast these people squatted here. Like, <laughs> I genuinely impressed. So on the downside, yeah, we won't be taking a fish man back home to Bad Guy City. I mean, it's pretty bad because we could have too. I ran into a camp of them, but I really wanted to get an alpha fish man. There's no reason to just get a normal fish man when there's alpha ones. Either way though, it must have been around bong o'clock because I forgot to grab a fish man. We really only got a crab out of this, but hey, that's better than nothing. All the gang has to do now is go back home and put him in a cage. First, they'll need to get by that hydra that was wreaking havoc earlier. There is a second bridge that's a bit farther away from where the hydra was, so they're gonna go for that one. B01 really wants to fight that thing, but he knows he'll be sending his gang to their death if they fight it in its current state. You'll need to train a lot of skeletons and a lot of people on turrets because there's just no way they're gonna be able to melee combat and beat that monster. The top G's luckily made it past the south border and head up towards the closest city named Catan. They'll be heading back to Bad Guy City, so that means we're going to need to travel all the way through the swamp. Like, 
the longest possible distance from one edge of a swamp all the way to the other. It was awful, man. What a dreadful time. Now, the bone fields are pretty much just home to, like, weak bandit groups and bone dogs and the hydra, of course. So the gang would be fighting lots of bone dogs during their journey. Now, I want you guys to listen to this sound. Very rarely... But, you know, it does happen. I'll have somebody comment and ask me, why don't I play the game with game audio? Or why, why isn't game audio in the videos? I want you guys to listen to this. Alright, that, that, that is why. Can, can you imagine me trying to narrate this shit? Hey, what's up guys? It's your boy from Big Rock here, back in another Tenji video. <laughs> Can you fucking imagine? The true highlight of a game comes from me traveling through what is one of my least favorite locations in gaming, the swamp. We didn't even enter the swamp yet, and we already found a group of Sheck bandits. They're really nice to be back near home, isn't it? There's beak things around this area too, okay? This place is screwed. The gangsters really need to stay on guard during this time and as they travel and make sure that nobody gets knocked out or left behind on accident. Trust me, it happens a lot and with the blood spiders in the swamp, that's the last thing I need right now. On the other hand, there's an even stronger dog in the bone fields being the boneyard wolf. They're twice as strong as the bone dogs with more stats and higher levels and the group saw them in the distance fighting a tech hunting desert diver just himself he was fighting three of them and they were giving him no time at all to attack only block hits and attempt to prevent an inevitable death homie was going off okay he probably hit like at least 80 defense level before he was knocked out the bone fields are no place for a noob though while fishman islands proved to be an easy enough spot to train levels well minus the acid rain that is the bone fields are home to the hydra who will need to both remember to avoid and encounter in the future. The gang was now heading through the swamp, one of the worst experiences in both gaming and swamping. The gang was constantly slowing down or running into enemies, running through water. Like, look at this, man. Does this look like what fun is? This is what, this, this is what hell looks like. <laughs> There's everything from swamp bandits to blood spiders here, making the swamp a terribly difficult location to travel through. We made it into the swamp outpost named Shark, which is directly in the middle of a swamp by around 2 a.m., and the gang still had another half a swamp to get through. So they'd just have to do it, continuing their journey of running for six seconds, followed by slowing down or getting stuck in a pond. They'd be pushing through each obstacle one by one, not giving up. I, I swear, this is really my least favorite spot in gaming, okay? But after many painful episodes where we've been stuck in a swamp or having to go through the swamp, all right, I'm just glad we get to do it together. Not just I hate to swamp. I know plenty of other people do too. And that really is impactful. Like, that's the true light at the end of a tunnel for me. Before leaving a swamp, the group would find a few Thrasher units. A ranged turret type enemy. They're pretty cool. And they come from a mod. Now, it might be cool one day for us to recruit one of these guys. You know, maybe send a bunch of them out at that Hydra. But for now, they have the CPU units, which we really need to go recruit Waldo. And they also sell for 6,000 and cats either way they're really useful for us so i ended up taking three of them fuck yeah for the first time in nearly a full in-game week the gang was home since we left in the last episode it's been many moons since everybody's all been here so after they all unloaded their inventories and restocked the food barrel all we had to do now was just build some cages. While we didn't have any fishmen, that's alright because we still got a crab and we can recruit the crab into the gang. We went all the way from the south of the map, back up through the swamp, and then into Bad Guy City. So all we needed to do now was just build a few cages. Then, we'd be able to put our crab friend in there, recruit him, and bam! I... <laughs> I'm fucking flabbergasted at this point. <laughs> Are you kidding me, man? Out of all times... For 25% of the Empire of the Sheks to come raid us, it has to be now? Every Shek warrior wants their turn to battle us. Fantastic, isn't that sweet? And so, the battle began. Immediately, the Sheks took down the gang's beloved pets like Ribbit, the Swamp Frog, and Chompy the Processor Unit, as well as a majority of a party going down in no time. On top of this, the crab was now loose. He was just fighting random people and walking away and shit. I was like, no, man, like, I was screaming when I was recording this. I can't even describe how rough this was to watch. After bringing it all this way, we can't let it just run away. 
So Beeb would run up to the crab, and he knocks it out, picks it up, and he drags it into the training house inside of Bad Guy City. There, he would drop the crab, and then return to defend the gang's outpost. That's when Neshex fucking killed Ank. He's dead. No more Ank. Shit's going to hell. Even B-01 was getting knocked out. There's like a dozen Shek warriors running around Bad Guy City. There was lots of people bleeding out, losing limbs, as well as their beloved Foxbot, who... Really, I didn't play much with yet, and I haven't really mentioned in any episodes, well, he died as well. That's two deaths in, like, a few in-game hours. The entire gang was hurting bad, with B-01 and the others getting up on and off to try to fight off the Shex. It just wasn't really working out for anyone. It was just getting them knocked out again and even more injured, so I attempt to put everyone on passive, but still, they'd wake up and the Shex would run back. Luckily, around 2am, a majority of the Shex finally left Bad Guy City so we could start to heal our dying colony. It's been a while since the Shex have actually beat the gang in a battle, but it really proved their strength this time. On top of that, claiming the lives of two gangsters and the fucking crab was gone. We couldn't even worry about that stuff though, because if we didn't stop everybody from bleeding, it was gonna be even more people lost. So by morning time, everybody was healed up and starting to be put in beds, and after doing a count, we were missing like four fucking legs on different people and a few missing arms, so almost a fourth of our gangster group was basically crippled or unable to fight. Alright, the Sheks have really done it this time. B-01 is pissed. He just lost two gangsters to those bastards, and everyone is missing legs and shit is a mess. Before we could get some limbs though, everybody needed to heal up. It was going to be kind of a far trip at least one day because they needed to go to the farther way station in order to buy them. You know, we can't just have people crawling around for more episodes, okay? This is really ghetto. It just looks bad on us. We might be gangsters, but this is still a community for Okran's sake. By nighttime, everybody was feeling much better. Well, other than uh, people literally tweaking out in the corner, like, come on guys, I'm, I'm trying to make a cool YouTube video, can you not be fucking juiced off dope, please? Either way, the top G's are ready to head out. The other way station takes a bit to get to, but it isn't as far as most of the cities or places in the game are to Bad Guy City. During this run, B01 and Cat would discuss back and forth whether they should stay in Bad Guy City and fight the Sheks or flee to a location more north and get away from the Savages. While B-01 is dead set on trying to claim the land of the East and stand his ground against the Sheks, Cat proves a great point that if they moved up north, they could always go back after they get more situated. So you let me know in the comment section below, what do you guys think? The video isn't over yet, don't fucking leave, okay? I'm just giving y'all a cool way to, to decide the story a bit. <laughs> if you guys like this, we'll do it more. On our way to the way station, the gang encountered two separate groups of dust bandits fighting each other. After the gang cleared the Dust King Tower a few episodes ago, and they would take down the Dust King, this would essentially just send the dust bandits into anarchy with different sub groups popping up you know they all got different dusty ideologies and ways of life and ways they want things done isn't it crazy though that even after the death of a leader who built an entire bandit faction you know a pretty pretty hard working respectable guy his entire faction just crumbles without his guidance and leads to fighting each other until the gangsters find whatever's left and just clean it up. It's a brutal world from physically to mentally. Around 15 o'clock, the gang arrives at a way station and after the group restocked on a bunch of food, B-01 runs into the mechanic shop with 206k cats in his pocket. He's ready to buy the highest quality limbs he can, and so he did, it costing him a little over 100k cats. He would make sure to pick the right limbs out for each character who needed them. B-01 got a bunch of specialist grade legs and arms, all for his crippled companions. <laughs> It's crippled companions, jeez, man. But this will make them all a lot stronger than they were before. This will give them more health and potentially higher combat skills. Meanwhile, do you remember Urson, that slave we rescued? Yeah, uh, he was hanging out in the middle of nowhere for some reason. He was like nearly an hour away from Bad Guy City, and he's teeming with dust bandits. Like, this surely wasn't good. Urson's running for his life, but still, the dust bandits are on his trail. He's just barely fast enough to outrun them with his newbie athletic skills. 40 minutes after running, he finally gets to Bad Guy City, and he runs inside to which the Dust Bandits are still following him and chasing him. This is because we don't have any guards at the gate yet, so nobody really gives a fuck. <laughs> Urson runs behind an iron processor and tries to sneak to hide, but <laughs> it doesn't work, and they turn the corner and attack him. This shit had me dying, bro. This was so funny when I was playing it. Like, one of the best random but favorite moments on my playthrough so far. 
Back to the gang, they were finishing a battle of their own and marching on their way back home. I swear, all there is over here is like dust bandits. Ever since the tower fell, it's just been more and more of them than ever before. I mean, it's fine because they're weak, but we definitely need to explore and take on some other bandit groups in the future episodes. I fucking hate the dust bandits by now. I'm getting so sick of the dust bandits, man. They fucking suck. Near the end of day 124, the gangsters ran by a nomad animal trader who had a bunch of animals for sale. This reminded me of a few episodes ago where we put a bunch of weapons and stuff inside of Garu backpacks, but we couldn't bring the Garus into cities. This was because the Garus were owned by a friendly faction, so the guards would attack us. Therefore, we had to take the backpacks off the Garus and drop up the Garus. But then, we couldn't get into the backpacks anymore, because if we don't have a Garu, there isn't a way to open bags without equipping the backpack to a character first. So we were locked out of maybe 100 to 200k worth of loot, but finally, through this nomad animal trader, we could recruit a little Garu pup who'd we'd name Trunk. Finally, when we get back home, we'll be able to transport all that stuff from the backpacks to stores and whatnot. I mean, it only took like two to three episodes, but that's pretty good for a CKC run. At 4 a.m. on day 125, the gangs return home with lots of food and brand new limbs for their stumpy citizens. But you know what? I did, I did mess up one limb, so someone still doesn't have an arm. You know, got him. It wouldn't be a CKC run if we didn't do that now. They'll just be a one-arm hero until we have another mass decapitation happen and have to buy a bunch in bulk. But lastly, it was time for us to deposit all the research we got from the Fishman Islands. Putting us into a research bench will allow us to unlock tech level 6 and start working towards it, which is the highest level of technology in Kenshi. This will basically open up every building and crafting option to us in the game. But don't worry, I mean, we aren't anywhere close to being done yet. There's still a lot that the gang wants to do and achieve so video by video we're gonna continue the adventure every sunday welcome back everyone to the kenshi gang playthrough it's your boy cool kid croc and we're here on day 125 and as you see our swamp frog ribbit is currently fighting a skin spider things are still pretty crazy over here in the last episode we kind of had a lot of trials and tribulations to go through first we discovered the hydra which is an insane monster we had to run from followed by the fishman island adventure then when we got home shex arrived and literally killed two of our gangsters this led to the gang needing to travel to a way station to get a bunch of new limbs for the now crippled colony. B01 bought a Garu off a nomad animal trader which was amazing. We could finally change its backpack to get all the loot out that we had in the other backpacks we brought back maybe six or so episodes ago. Only problem is that I had a mod which makes all the animals in the game really strong. I've tried to find this mod. I don't know if it was deleted or nuked from Kenshi or what happened but I cannot find the mod in my mod list and I don't know which mod is still making them this strong but he's a pop garu and he already hits for over a hundred damage so i will until i figure out which mod is doing this to me and making all the garus in the game stronger than beak things um we're gonna have to leave him at bad guy city for a majority of the time along with that zagan is getting kind of op and people are starting to complain about him too so we're gonna move him into the city bye bye zagan and then i moved cat back into the top cheese now i'm going to be getting everyone together as we're planning an adventure i want to do something new or cool today so i I realize there's still a few places in the game which I haven't explored before even myself and I have nearly 700 hours of playtime. So I decided today the gang would be traveling up north and heading into the Leviathan coast. The goal is to find some of Kenshi's biggest monsters, the Leviathans, and if we're lucky we're maybe even gonna fight one and take one down. Now I've been super busy recently with the content grind as well as in my real life between work and my son and the YouTube stuff, so this episode's come out a bit late but I do have a big announcement to thank everybody who's been supporting the series and my channel me and the devs of Sands of Salazar have teamed up again but this time we're not giving out just five keys I'll be giving out 10 keys total for the game Sands of Salazar plus a DLC code for their newest tournament DLC if you haven't seen the game yet, check out my 100 Days in Sansa Salazar video. The game's a lot like Kenshi and Dynasty Warriors and a little bit of Mountain Blade mixed in. I'm planning a few more videos on that game as well. Either way, if you want to enter, all you gotta do is join my Discord in the description below. It's in my link tree, which has the links for all my different social medias. All you gotta do there is join the Discord, go to the giveaway chat, and then enter the little celebration emote. There'll be a button right under the giveaway. I'm running two of these for 
for two weeks each. The first one ends in 14 days, and then we're going to go for another one for 14 days. There will be five winners in each giveaway, and the first giveaway we ran, we only had like 50 to 80 people enter. So come on in, join the Discord, enter the giveaway, and good luck to everyone. And of course, thank you to the Sands of Salazar devs for supporting this giveaway. With that all said and done, back to the video. The gang will be traveling north, which will hold many challenges for them to face. First, they'd find a few weak bandage, which wasn't too bad, but the group still needs to travel all the way through Hive territory along with the Foglands in order to get close to the top of the map. Luckily, the Hive territory is pretty chill and the gangsters wouldn't find any enemies there. So they would run as fast as possible until they got all the way to the Fog Islands. But instead of entering and going straight through, they would run around the border of the Fog Islands and go farther west until they could travel north without having to go straight through the Fog Islands. I didn't want to have to get stopped by a bunch of groups of Fogmen or possibly get injured before we get to the Leviathan Coast, as realistically, there's no way we're going to be able to fight Leviathans if everybody's all beat up and injured. So we got past the Fog Islands, and by 5 a.m., we were traveling by villages and leading into the Shrieking Forest. Now, I knew this would be a big risk. The Shrieking Forest is really dangerous, as we've learned in two separate episodes of a gang series so far. For the first half of the run, it went really well, but they were eventually stopped by the last few Shrieking Bandits who were running with a group. It was only a few, so the gangsters would kill those bandits and continue to run up all the way into the Purple Sands, which led to them running into even more bandits. And of course, there's a fair number of them to fight. But as the battle started, the Top Gs began to fight the group of Shrieking Bandits. Looking around, I could see that slowly they were being surrounded. So I knew at this point, the best choice for us would be to gather everybody up and get them sprinting as fast as possible up north. If we stay to fight these bandits, then they're only going to have to fight more and more of them as time goes on. And sure enough, looking at B01, I could see it was just like zombies. A huge horde of shrieking bandits were following behind. This was definitely not good. Some of these bandits are high level and faster than our group, so even though we're running away, we're still getting hit on and off by them. This means we can't just escape to the top of the map as people will get knocked out or die in the process, so we're going to have to stop and group up somewhere to fight the bastards. Easily over 100 bandits were following the top G's and everyone was spread across the map. We've still got a decent distance to go to get to the Leviathan coast and with no local cities or outposts we'll need to meet up and start the battle soon. A Shrek Proving arrived at Bad Guy City but I had no time to deal with that as the top G's are literally about to start a war with how many bandits are around. I then looked at a shrieking bandit group and found a terrifying looking bandit called the groaning foothead he has really high stats and obviously will be somebody we don't want to fuck with we're currently fucking with him though when he's uh running at us i plan to get everybody to gather on the outskirts of a floodlands which is pretty much home to nothing but there are some wild sailbacks we could lead the bandits into poor ribbit was running for his life through the bandits attempting to get to the meetup location as well beep was the first to arrive followed by a few others which was followed by a huge line of mostly shrieking bandits in between all the bandits, there's the odd gangster who was still catching up and running in between them. This was not good. I mean, we must have attracted all of the bandits within a 20 mile radius. I watched that foot person. He was fighting three of our people and he took down each of them with just one hit. This has gone way past being not good or being insane. This is just fucked now. There were way more bandits than there were gangsters. And even with the wild sailbacks fighting them, it was not looking good. B-01 one and others that weren't knocked out yet were fighting but they still got overwhelmed very fast i mean i couldn't really blame them they had still attracted about a hundred or so bandits just by running through the area it came down to just being up to b01 and chompy with chompy being able to one hit a lot of them it still really wasn't enough to save the gangsters from an insane battle of this size these footmen were going off okay i've never seen them before but they make an already tough bandit group even even more strong and unstoppable. Of course, B01 would hold his own for as long as possible, but as different gangsters got back up for battle, Crispy 
would end up getting up to fight and a footman ran up with an insane strike which dealt over 100 damage which would of course kill the poor guy right there. We were screwed at this point. Everybody was knocked out, bleeding, and we already had one death in the party. So our plans to go to the Leviathan coast were essentially foiled. I decided to say screw it, we saved and then reset squad positions back to bad guy city. I really do apologize guys, I wanted to fight Leviathans this episode, but in order to do that, I think we're gonna have to go the long way around or avoid the lands where the Shrieking Bandits hang out. For now though, we can move on to other things. Everyone is really hurt right now, so we're gonna have to spend some time resting and healing up again. Poor Dr. Jules, he was glitched out or something. He kept standing up and then being brought back to the ground over and over again, kept on rotating and T-posing to the ground. I thought he was gonna be doing that all the episode, like I couldn't get him to escape until a few loops later. Dr. Jules would then go rest in a bed, not even to heal his wounds from a battle, but to really self-reflect and think, what the hell was just going on? Now we're hurting, and we're almost broke, we're at around 87,000 cats, so I decided to check out the Garu's backpacks from before, which I thought maybe had like 100 or 200k worth of cats to sell, but in reality there's maybe like 30k worth of cats. This is because I grabbed one of the wrong backpacks, I grabbed one of the backpacks that was for caravan trading supplies instead of a backpack that was filled with weapons. On the bright side, at least we have a bunch of dead shecks at the base to loot up, so after getting their weapons we'll be able to bring those to the local way station for a lot of profit. I loaded B01 up with a loaded Garu backpack as well as picked up a dead bandit so we could begin strength training. It's best to do this while the group travels as it slows them down a bit but at least he's protected and getting it done. We really didn't need much from the way station though. I mean after selling all of the loot that we had brought and seeing as there was no food left for the gang to buy, they would all just decide to go back to bad guy city. Our two main goals right now is of course making money so we can get better equipment and two also getting stronger. After meeting that crazy foot person in the shrieking forest, it proved to us that the group is still far off from being able to step up to the best Kenji has to offer. I had a whole bunch of ideas, but of course they were interrupted by some Shrek guards who were doing a patrol. The group is constantly having to heal and rest after these battles, so getting stronger to the point where these battles aren't as impactful to the group is a must. I had B01 walking in and outside of the city walls for strength training when it kind of hit me. What if I was able to build a really long walkway for him, or perhaps something like a maze so it'd be easier to strength train? So it began, the coolest idea I've had in a while. I began preparations and laid down all the blueprints for what will become our strength training maze. The goal is to make it so that there is one start and one finish, so each time we click back and forth, the characters will travel at a safe speed to the end of a maze and then click the entrance so they do it again. We'll fill up their backpacks and overload them with weight as well as get them to carry somebody and essentially just repeat walking back and forth like that until we hit the desired strength level. Of course it's Kenshi so the building is a bit wacky, but it's nothing I'm not used to. You you guys gotta remember, I used to live with my baby mom, so I can practically do anything under pressure. I closed off a box shape for the maze right next to Bad Guy City and began to set up the walls in between it. I'd be making straight walls with a hole on each end of a line, that way we could get to the end. By the end, it looked pretty insane, but I gotta say it looked really good. I used basic walls, so they only cost one building material each, but we're still looking at around 200 to maybe 300 building materials, plus a lot of work to be done. The gangsters of Bad Guy City would begin to start to build the basic walls and setting up the maze, while bees one continued his strength training, but by 12 p.m. of day 128, most of Bad Guy City would be targeted by some traveling Sheks who knocked out all of our people, even decapitating one of Toro's arms. Luckily, B01 had an extra arm to give Toro, as well as Zagan was there so he could take care of his Sheks, but a majority of our gangsters were injured again, so it slowed down progress on the maze quite a bit. That's when I decided to have B01 try to walk through the maze, to which I learned a lot of the terrain and pathways that I built around were inaccessible. Oh no! All of that work for nothing! Fuck! <laughs> okay, so so I made some changes to the design. It would shorten the maze length a bit, but hey, at least it'd be usable and close to what I was going for. We'd be able to go from start to finish, so I poked some holes into the wall in certain locations where you weren't able to move until B01 was on path to travel from the start to the end. The funny thing is, we don't even need building materials. I mean, you could legit build one of these in the middle of nowhere, and since the path is already laid out, they'll just continue going down the path. But of course, I'm going to continue constructing 
construction so it looks nice when it's done and it doesn't look like this the entire series. <laughs> By afternoon time of day 129, everyone was pretty much back to work while B01 did his laps. After playing this save file for over a hundred days in game and nearly 20 episodes later, I've learned that the world we created for ourselves in the Kenshi Gang series is far from a dream come true. In fact, if I was to compare it to anything, it's more close to a literal nightmare. After numerous months of playing, you would think, you know, now we're strong and we got stuff set up, but we've <laughs> we've had like nearly a dozen gangsters die in the heat of battle. You see, Garus in my game, they are stupid broken and hit for 400 damage, and I don't know why this is. I have a conspiracy, but I'm not sure if it's true. I think I used to have a mod that made animals stronger, but I can't find that mod anymore anywhere on my list, and I've looked for it like on every single mod I have. So what I think what happened was it was deleted from the Steam Workshop, but now I'm stuck in a nightmare game state that's left with these like stupid strong Garus. So that basically means any hostile caravan that we run into, like a simple trader pack, is basically a complete party wipe. Fear not though, as in the last episode, we set up this strength training maze. That way we could train up all of our strength levels just a little bit more efficiently. As you can see, there's a bunch of rows set up, so with the Kenshi pathfinding system, we're able to make the gangsters run through the course and then run back to the start. B01 is currently training his levels up as he aims to get closer to 100 strength level. Right now, he's only at level 72 strength, and seeing as Kenshi has a similar XP curve as RuneScape, where it's pretty easy to level up until the first 50 levels, and then after that, it's just a complete grind in a hell. I'm pretty certain Kenshi, like, has the exact same XP model. Other than all of that, we're still constantly getting attacked by Shex, as well as Dust Bandits, so, you know, there's never a dull moment living in Bad Guy City. There's either always something fun to do, or something to run away from. I spent most of the early hours of Day 130 managing different characters to train until a Dust Bandit showed up at our gate. Beep, our martial artist with chainsaw arms, of course, went to go handle them, as he usually does but he was getting fucked up bro like not a single chance to attack here he's constantly rolling back and forth and getting shot with arrows this is fucking rough to watch funny kenshi gameplay 2023 right here guys once the other gangsters arrived beep was able to get a hold of himself and start dropping dust bandits i mean like look at this front kick that he pulled off which sent the enemy backwards like what the fuck meanwhile i noticed the caravan from the traders guild ended up getting stuck in our maze and oh no this isn't good you see right now we're at war with the traders guild because uh we attacked that one manhunter town so there's like four to five garus that might as well be fucking crampers in an attempt to save the lives of our gangs i saved and then reloaded squad positions and that didn't fix anything the trader guild was still in there on their way to fuck up the entire future of my series so i decided i would not put up with this i was not gonna have everybody die because there's like four garus there I would instead exploit the game and I would do this by reloading the save game, but this time we're going to do an import, which is going to despawn the local NPCs. On top of that, I was considering resetting our relationships, but I don't really want to do that. I mean, maybe one day we'll have to, but I think I can just swag my way onto the end game. Even if like half of the game's factions hate us, I feel like it's going to be more fun that way anyways. All right, no one said being a gangster would be easy. If, it, if you want to join a gang, you got to get your ass beat, at least in my gang you do so after reloading i realized that the game spawned everyone next to the hub which is toxic i mean it's not that far away from bad guy city but it's a major pain i guess it's fair after all i mean i did cheat in order to save our gang from becoming meals to the garus but that's fine that's just my karma i'll take it and then head back home with everybody here by the time we get back to bad guy city all of the enemies or the people from the traders guild should have despawned and even though it wasn't that far managing 30 gangsters at once was a nightmare like i haven't done this in a long time it's much easier just to keep track of like seven to a dozen characters opposed to multiple dozens once you get multiple dozens people don't know what to do they don't know where to run the pathfinding breaks it's just a nightmare it would be in the middle of the night that the gang was stopped by some dust bandits but that wouldn't be the hard part the hard part was the traitors guild finding us and sending a fucking garu are you kidding bro i reload the squad positions exactly for this reason and in an instant both cena and grave odd got fucking killed two of our gang members i was like oh my god this is crazy bro i would have reloaded but in real life uh gray and cena are like a couple 
So them dying at the same time in a series due to Garu was like way too much of a coincidence for me to like delete and not let be in the series. We ended up taking down the Garu after that as well, so they sacrificed themselves so that the gang could kill the Garu. And I guess it's fair, I mean I did reset squad position so we could get away from Garus and uh, Garu still found us, so I guess that's the true karma. It's just crazy how he killed both of them out of everyone. I mean, I'm sure we're gonna watch this episode and find that either really romantic or disturbing but you know what no, no matter what I'm creating emotions. I don't give a fuck. I'm here for the story I'm leaving their deaths in R.I.P. Cena and Grey. Uh, see you guys on discord I also came to the realization that at this point in the series like that's half of the recruits that we got from the one episode that I did. I made an entire Kenshi Gang episode about recruiting subscribers and turning them into Kenshi characters. <laughs> and then here I am a few episodes later and they're all fucking dying. Like and subscribe everyone. Remember, you'll never find another content creator like me. I fucking promise that. By 7 a.m. of day 131, the gang finally arrived back home. Thank Okran. We're now a little bit more safe. I mean, not a lot, because the base isn't set up for defensive measures. Fuck, it's barely livable, like one health and safety inspection away from being shut down. But I didn't want to fix that, okay? I wanted to do something cool this episode. I sat here and put turrets all around the base and stuff. You guys would be like, Croc, that episode fucking blowed. So I came up with a different plan. Since we have a CPU unit, and I'm busy fucking around leveling up B01 strength and doing other training around the base, I decided it was the perfect time to send Cat over to Mongrel. That way he could try to recruit Waldo. If you haven't watched the other episodes of the series, this is kind of a rundown up to this this point there's this skeleton animal that i got from a mod and i really want to recruit him he looks cool as hell but he's always making my life a nightmare by either not joining me or i'm stuck looking around the town for him like an interactive game of where's waldo it's just whack i'm really tired of it like everyone else is too it's time to recruit this guy into the gang but you know, sure enough, a Walker 40 or Waldo needs a special CPU unit to be fixed. You can't use a normal one. Like, fuck, fuck me, man. God damn it. I mean, Okran, damn it. Like, it's literally going to take us 40 episodes for, for me to recruit him. This is like episode 20, bro. I found him on like episode 6. One day, my son, Theodore, he's going to grow up and he's going to be making videos and continuing the gang series and trying to recruit this fucking guy, man. What a joke. We'll have to come back again one day when we're able to put a special CPU unit in him and, you know, save my son a livelihood of playing this goddamn save file. On a bright side, by morning time of day 132, we almost have the entire maze complete. B01 is able to do his strength training laps without being attacked, and in all, this will be a great addition to our gang. Unlike that guy Waldo, fucking racist piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding, <laughs> Waldo isn't racist. Anyways, Cat's gonna be making his way back to Bad Guy City because that kinda didn't work. Meanwhile, I was still chilling, waiting for the inevitable Dust Bandit raids to arrive so I could stop them. I really don't like the Dust Bandits or the Sheks getting inside of the gates. You know, I'm not worried about anyone getting hurt. It's just they die and then they drop their fucking boots everywhere it, you know the outside of a gate just usually looks like this and it's insane i put a community post up too and you, you fucking assholes you guys <laughs> everybody in the comment section ma making fucking canadian puns a boot a boot fucking people all right i don't want all these a boot comments so i try to kill them outside of a gate <laughs> spent a day or so getting everybody to train up and i was micromanaging the base a lot my main goal during this was to get an automatic way of having b01 strength train in the maze right now i basically have to click back and forth every like two to three minutes which is not fun but my idea is essentially if we can like make a job that b01 would continuously go do and then dump the stockpile then we could set up a point and b01 would essentially be able to go back and forth from the first point and the second point I built this well at the end of a course, and then I built water tanks at the start of it. This, in theory, would allow B01 to go back and forth automatically while doing the job. You know, he would pick up the water from the well and then bring it to the water tanks. I kept training manually for a day or so until I realized nobody was building the well or the walls now. I think this is because the maze is so big and ridiculous, the game just doesn't know what to do with it. Maybe the game has a limit of space that you can have for towns, and I exceeded it or something but either way it's a pain in the ass because we're gonna have to manually build the rest of the walls i would just leave them like that but we gotta look at this for the rest of a playthrough so i gotta do a little bit better than that for you guys it was frustrating because i had someone run the maze and build the well 
And then I learned that the well didn't fucking work. No water was being pumped into the well, so I needed to narrow this down, and I tried to figure out what it was. It came up with, well, maybe there's no power around this part of the map. Maybe the power that's generated in Bad Guy City is cut off at a certain limit, so I'm gonna have to figure out something else. But, to a surprise turn of events, a group of cannibals arrived at Bad Guy City. I was, like, genuinely in shock. Like, what? A faction other than the Shack Bastards or the Dust Bitches? Oh my, oh Cran, thank you, thank you, thank you, my lord, for sending cannibals to me door. What a pleasant surprise thee have bestowed upon me. Now the cannibals are super weak, so it's no problem taking them down, and really it was kind of refreshing to see a different uh, faction in the game attack us for once. I really like doing this continuous kind of let's play gameplay series thing, but you know, it does get uh, boring for me and everyone when we're fighting the same guys every time. But I, I I never thought I'd be happy to have cannibals, like, outside of my home, but, like, here I am. <laughs> Kenshi is a fucked up world. The next day, on day 136, a cannibal general or captain or some kind of guy, <laughs> Mighty Canhead was his name, Mighty Canhead showed up, and he looked pretty serious. He had an entire army of cannibals with him, so... Beep ran up and gave him a Superman chainsaw punch. Everybody was fighting. In fact, you know, one could say that everybody was kung fu fighting. <laughs> A majority of the cannibals all went down pretty fast, with Ten Head taking the longest to knock out. But when he did eventually get knocked down, he had all of his amazing loot for us to steal. I really wish the cannibals came by more often. They seem pretty cool. It's day 137, and everybody swagged up. B01 has gained almost 10 levels since the start of this episode, proving that the maze is an awesome and effective method to train with. Now, we didn't do a whole lot else in this episode, so I wanted to go on an adventure. Last time we did this, we tried to go to the Leviathan Coast, and I kind of got stopped in a shrieking forest. So this time, we're going to have to go to Obedience. It's a really high-level area of the game, but we haven't been there yet, and I thought it'd be kind of cool to explore it. I figured, you know, as well as uh, you guys would probably like that a bit more than a fifth Shrieking Bandit episode. <laughs> so we are off. Our gangster explorers, along with our boy Ribbit the Swamp Frog, were traveling through the border zone up through Vane and then through the Fog Islands in order to arrive at Obedience. The gang had a long way to go and midway through Vane, the gang spotted what seemed to be a small village. I mean, this is pretty odd. I'd never seen this village before, so I decided to check it out. Once they arrived at the outpost, they figured out that it was ran by one person and she was named West Dragon. She gives the gang some good travel advice on where to go and where not to go and B01 asks her more about her backstory. And her father would essentially beat West Dragon and her mother all the time. Said that like fucking uh chills, you know. Let me try to do full chills voice just for this part, okay? Alright, run, run with me on this. <clears throat> Number one, West Dragon. West Dragon was once the daughter of an Okran farmer and her father would beat West Dragon and her mother. On top of this, she had her tongue split at the end due to some kind of religious belief, making her look like a guy trying to be cool in 2007. One day, she would beat him up, and she was outlawed and then named a bounty ever since. She says, for 40,000 cats, we can recruit- <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna stop. She says, for 40,000 cats, we can recruit her. That way, we can transfer the money to the outlaws for food and weapons. 40,000 cats, I mean, it sounds like a lot to most people, but you guys know me. We're rich, like- we got like eight Bugattis. So of course, you know, I paid the fee right away and recruited West Dragon into the gang. With that done, the gang would continue to travel, making their way all the way to obedience. Meanwhile, at Bad Guy City, we finally got the windmill up and running, but still no water was going through the well. Honestly, I chose the absolute worst spot in the game to make a base. Like I remember in a Let's Struggle season two, everybody would ask me like almost every episode, oh Croc, what part of the map is that? What part did you put your base in? That looks really good but bad guy city no one not a soul not a single soul has asked where this place is if anyone did or does ask me where i put my base it's out of caution to stay the fuck away from it this is an awful dog shit part of a map bro you do not want to live here but at least the gang were doing good 
They were traveling through the Fog Islands, and they found a base that belonged to the Fogmen, to which they could get close to it and begin to slaughter every blue-headed fuck that was there. The Fogmen eat people, so we don't have to feel bad about raiding this village at all. On top of that, we found the Fog King, a strong 40,000 cat bounty, who was the king of the Fogmen. Even though he was a king, our gang easily took down all of his troops, and then him soloed, allowing us to look at all of his gear and take it, plus remove his head off of his body, which is worth 12,000 cats alone. The gang would then look around the base, but there really wasn't much here. I mean, some random raw materials and some pieces of ass fluff, but nothing of interest. The gang would then heal up and begin to head out on their way. Now that they have a Fong King over B01 shoulders, they could now run over to Mongrel, that way he could turn in the bounty. I looked at the bounty and it seemed like Mongrel wasn't on the list for it, but I thought, you know, well, uh, Mongrel's gotta be affiliated with someone, or they got a police station there, so I should bring him there. I'm certain they would pay 40k bounty for the Fog King, but no! You actually have to bring the Fog King out of Mongrel and to one of the three kingdoms in order to get the rewards. I do not think this is a me problem, okay? This is a Kenshi problem. This is going to be like a little grind my gear segment, okay? In Kenshi 2, wacky shit like this better not be, uh, be <laughs> existing, bro. Like, it makes no sense, man. Mongrel are literally the only people affected by the Fogmen. <laughs> Every single, uh, all the other kingdoms, nobody lives in Mongrel. Nobody else is affected by them because they don't gotta go to Mongrel. You don't see Holy Nation or Shek Patrols or anyone else in Mongrel other than the ninjas and the people that live in Mongrel. They're nowhere near them. And Mongrel is constantly repressed by the Fogmen. How the fuck do they not even have 10,000 on his head? There's no way people can say, oh, they're broke. Like, they have plenty of weapons and stores and stuff there. This is just bad world building, in my opinion. But, you know, oh well, I'll, I'll let you guys decide that. I'll just have to send B01 back to the group and bring the Fog King into a major town after we do our obedience adventure. They were now in the land of hands and happy endings. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding, of course. Obedience is not known for happy endings. Obedience is known as the place that the old empire sent the giant behemoth skeletons in order to get rid of them and essentially send them to death. The skeletons believe them because they're so like naive and programmed and just listen to humans and whatnot. And humans were basically scared of them. So we're currently walking on a giant skeleton graveyard and going deeper and deeper inside of obedience We could find a gang of mist fiends hanging out in a camp. There were so many bones around their camp I mean it was obvious that they had killed lots of travelers and had likely controlled this area for maybe hundreds If not thousands of years instead of trying to fight all of them at once since the mist fiends are really strong I pulled half of a group and then started fighting them a lot of her stats, like toughness, go well over the normal 100 toughness stat that's placed on normal characters. Along with that, they have a very high health stat, like even more health than a lot of skeletons do in the game. So they're one of the strongest humanoid monster hybrids that we can find, really. The gang would gang up on the creatures, breaking their arms, and eventually dropping each of the mist fiends. While the gang was able to win there, there are still more enemies around the area, and everyone endured serious injuries just from that battle. There was a nearby ruin, so I decided that the group would travel there and try to find some treasures or research books before heading back. Inside of a ruin, there weren't any people or factions, but instead there were security spiders that activated once we stepped inside. They likely belonged to the old empire thousands of years ago, but now they belong to the ground as they'll rust and decompose into the building. Well, really they'll despawn, but I'm trying to be immersive, so let's not think like that. We had also taken a missed creature from the camp, and whoever was carrying him got knocked out, so we had to fight that guy again along with the spiders. But after pushing through, we were able to kill all the enemies and pick back up our missed fiend. Now, it was looting time. There were lots of chests and boxes around here to search. We'll find lots of expensive items like CPU units, copper plates, even about a dozen ancient science books along with some other high tier items. This trip was really worth it. We successfully ransacked the ruins and destroyed an entire mist fiend camp. With there being even more of the monsters wandering around, I knew this was time for us to pack our bags and head back to Bad Guy City. After traveling up north to Obedience in order to find a group of mist fiends as well as an ancient lab, our gang is now on day 140. This is definitively episode 20 of the gang series, so welcome everyone. We've come a long way so far. Going from getting stomped out by 
most of the factions in the game all the way to being at war with most of them and kind of winning. I mean, we're still getting our asses kicked a lot, but I mean, currently we're doing pretty good. Our adventuring heroes are currently on their way back to Bad Guy City where the rest of the catastrophes remain. In the last video, when we traveled into Obedience, we got a lot of loot from the ruins. So first, we're going to go to Bad Guy City, drop off all the loot and heal up. Then we're going to get to the overall goal of this video. But as we're traveling, I have something big to announce. Today for April 26th, Kenshi is celebrating Crab Day and myself and Lo-Fi Games have teamed up to give away 20 Kenshi keys. That's right, I'm giving away 20 Steam codes for the game Kenshi. I've been showing you guys the game for years and I know some of you have still never played it or maybe you even have a friend who you'd like to try the game, so this is for you. In order to enter the giveaway, it's pretty straightforward. First of all, follow me of course so you can stay tuned to my content as well as future giveaways that I might host. Along with checking out the Lo-Fi Games social media as they also host giveaways and different community events relating to Kenshi. But here's the way you actually enter. If a link in the description, I'm going to have my Discord server. Join my Discord server named Crocs Netherworld. We have currently about 200 people in it. It's pretty cool. Everybody just kind of shows in there and talks about different stuff from gaming to life. We got a bunch of different chats and voice rooms. Anyways, one of them is called Giveaway. Go into the giveaway room, hit the emote button, and then you're going to enter yourself into the Kenshi giveaway. After 10 days, it's going to take all the entries and then pick 10 random users. So if you get pinged and you win the giveaway, make sure you message me. I'll ping everybody to message me, but you got to message me first so I can send you the key. And of course, a huge thank you to both Lo-Fi Games and the community manager, Christy, for getting a hold of me. I'm very happy to be able to host this giveaway and give back to the Kenshi community. But honestly, aside from everything, it wouldn't be possible without all of the support you guys have shown on my content. So cheers and good luck to everyone. There's going to be two different giveaways for the 20 keys in total. So each one's going to run for 10 days and each giveaway will have 10 keys to win. So if you miss out on the first one or you didn't win the first one, it might not be too late to catch the second giveaway. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to stay up to date on everything I'm up to. Now on to the mission of this video. As you can see by the title, we're going to be trying to get a pet crab in Kenshi. Fun fact, you know, in my 700 hours of playing Kenshi, I've never actually had a crab on my team, so this is going to be very cool. There's also another fun fact I, I guess I should mention to you guys. I was really teetering on naming this video, you know, like, I got crabs, exclamation point, and then in Kenshi after it. <laughs> but since Lo-Fi Games were nice enough to give us 20 keys to give away, I figured it'd be best to kind of give it a better title and not a psychotic one like that. Just know that in an alternate universe, that was going to be this video's title. <laughs> right now, our crew is traveling down south, and they've been up to all kinds of bad guy behavior. They're all pretty beat up and exhausted right now. It also also doesn't really help that we keep on getting stopped by all of the fogmen that are inside of the fog islands of Mongrel. There's so many fogmen, I mean it's really similar to the shrieking bandit problem I always get myself into, but at least this time the fogmen have very low health pools, so a lot of our moves actually kill them in one hit. It's still a constant annoyance though, I mean we're being stopped a lot and we try to heal and then one by one these blue headed freaks are chasing our party and running over and attacking us, but it's alright because we're able to get past them and after that we just have to travel through through Vane, which is a much more safe area to travel through, at least when compared to the other nightmarish biomes of Kenshi. Meanwhile, in Bad Guy City, people are starving and suffering as usual. I'm not very good at micromanaging a city, okay? I'll admit it. You guys can call me out on that all you want. My people are hungry, uh, most of them don't have jobs, so we spend most of their day either at a bar or at the outhouses. I believe the unemployment rate for Bad Guy City is like 92%. It's not good, bro. <laughs> also, an update on our maze. I had a lot of comments and advice on how to set up a job system to automate the maze. Because right now, the problem is the strength training runs, they work, but it just takes so long clicking back and forth. So I want to figure out what job would be the easiest and fastest for training. We can't use farming as the ground where we settled is all like a wasteland and we have no access to water or crops. So let me know what you guys think and I'll pick the best idea out of the comment section and do it in the next video. Now at 5 a.m. on day 141, the gang arrived at Bad Guy City where we had the goal of making a Crab Day team. I shortened the group down to 9 of our best gangsters due to me not wanting to have to manage over 12 people at a time. Alright, someone will get lost or die, I know it. <laughs> I also switched Beep's armor, check this out. I went from the Samurai armor to the Footman outfit which we got from the Shrieking Bandit's Expanded mod. And this armor, it does expose him to more 
damage, but it also increases how much damage he does. The trade-off is kind of worth it, and he also just looks gnarly. Like, this is what Beep is gonna wear in the future Halloween episode. <laughs> just reminds me of, like, a kid dressing up as a superhero. I, I love it. We then dropped off all of the loot into our storage containers at the base, and now the crab team was ready to head out. We got seven strong characters, plus our two crowd favorites being Ribbit and Chompy. I really wonder who people all like more, T you know, Team Ribbit or Team Chompy. I gotta do a poll on that sometimes. I feel like it'll cause some wars in the comments section. Now, in order to recruit a crab in Kenshi without using mods such as Tame Beasties, which allows you to recruit animals that you put in cages, I'm gonna be trying to recruit the crabs the legit way, so we're gonna be traveling all the way across the map to the land of the Crab Raiders. They're located around the pits and Stobes Gamble, but it's a long way there. We're gonna have to travel through Venge, which has laser beams from the sky that'll kill and hurt our fleshy characters. But at least first, we're gonna be traveling through the border zone, which isn't all that bad. I mean, other than the dust bandits, of the starving bandits, of the slavers, and the wild bone dogs, and the hub is an awful city to live in, <laughs> the border zone is a pretty nice place aside from all of that, you know what I mean? The bandits are all pretty weak, so they're really no match for us, and we're stomping all of the factions in this area. Our gang is on the much bigger fish to fry, or I guess in this case, uh, crabs to fry. See what I did there? Yep, um, like and subscribe, I'll be here all video. Along the way, we passed by Shem, which is also one of my favorite places in Kenshi. It does have a lot of beak things, but it's actually a chill place. If you never built a base in Kenshi or want to start, Shem is one of the first spots I picked to build a base in one of my playthroughs, and it was perfect. The scenery is nice, the weather isn't too insane, it doesn't rain acid, and there's lots of water and crop fertility. But even at this point in the gang series, the beak things are no match for the Crab Day team, which is a really good sign. We're gonna have to fight even more characters and animals as we go on, and it's only gonna get more dangerous the more... Never eat... Uh, east. The more east we travel on the map, it's gonna get more dangerous. Along with that, when we get to the crab land, we're gonna have to try to not get attacked or attack any wandering groups of crab raiders, as they'll always attack us if we don't have any crabs with us. Venge was pretty rough for the group, as Beep and a few others got burnt from a laser beam that was shot from the sky. A few more of those, and it's gonna kill them surely, so I was trying to get through Venge as fast as possible. There's lots of throws around the area trying to slow us down, which makes makes it really difficult to travel. Throws are basically just corrupt skeletons and they're constantly in a hunting state. I mean, without heads, it's crazy. They still sense you and then try to take your life. There are also some scavengers who tried to take their turn at us, but it didn't work, at least for them. <laughs> I mean, they had really cool weapons, so I'll give them that. I'd really like to see them more. You know, maybe, maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe one day they'll visit Bad Guy City and we can make some more friends. The scavengers were even in Stobes Gamble, as well as an adult gorilla who the group was forced to slay. There's lots of enemies around this corner of a map, but we're gonna have to pick our battles very carefully and attempt to not get too hurt before we get to Crab Town. Eventually, the group made their way into the Craigs and attempted to go get a crab, but they were spotted by a group of crab raiders and crabs. Of course, we don't have a pet crab with us, so this started a battle. And I didn't want to take any part in this battle, but since they were too fast, we couldn't run away, leading to a majority of Crab Day team to go down and be party wiped. B01 was on his toes and still fighting at the end of it like always, and he was managing to hold on just long enough for his group to wake up and help him fight. But even after defeating the Crab Raiders, a group of skeleton bandits walked through and stopped us, and they were slaughtering our whole group, almost even killing Beep. He was only like 6 damage away from Doom, and right after that, it started to rain acid, so everybody was getting more injured and literally melting. The battlefield was a cesspool, and this did not go as I planned, so I took this as a learning experience and reloaded a save. Alright, round two. This time around, I'm gonna send all of our fleshy humanoids over to Brink and only have our skeletons adventure into the acid rain zone. It won't hurt our skeletons as well as our animals, so they're good to go in, but all of our humans and Beep will need to go into Brink. Once they make it to the Crab Village, of course, they can run over from Brink, but for now, I just want them to go over there. It's gonna be much easier to sneak by with only a few people anyways compared to nine people. But 
anytime we saw crab raiders, I really try to avoid them because I don't want to hurt them and then lead to it creating a negative relationship with them and B01's party. Now luckily this time we were able to travel without many stops or distractions, so the crab day team were able to make it into the crab village on day 143. It was very early in the morning, so we were a few hours away before the shops would open. And once inside, we could see a bunch of crabs hanging out in the village, and I was there very happy they didn't attack me, okay? This was about to be insane. But I realized it wasn't over since we have to wait until 7 a.m. for the shops to open. It could have been an easy wait, but a group of crab raiders found us and attacked us, causing all the crabs in the camp to attack. This was not good at all, bro. Like, we needed to get out of this before all the crab raiders wake up in the village and come outside to see us fighting all of our crabs. Luckily, our skeletons and animals were able to take down the crabs so we could just pretend, you know, that they were showing up or something. You know, like, really, they would just walk in and be like, oh man, I don't know what happened. Somebody came by and beat up all your crabs outside. <laughs> Once the store was open, we then asked the crab seller about crabs and he gives us a big list of different things to do from how to take care of a crab as well as crab upkeep. I mean, having a pet in Kenshi is just as much of a responsibility as in real life. If not, maybe even more because they eat so damn much. Animal in real life, you gotta feed a few times a day. Animal in Kenshi, you gotta feed every four minutes. C01 shows a young pup crab, and then I went to go rename the crab to, you know, Mr. Krabs, like the guy from SpongeBob. But somehow, I, um, I hit the Y key instead of the R in Mr., so I, I, there, there's no excuse for this, bro. I, I am so sorry. Like, Y is two spots over on the keyboard, but still, like, oh my Ocran. I guess, um, welcome my crabs into the series. Instead of Mr. Krabs, he's just named my crabs, so uh, I don't know. Maybe it'll work for me. Maybe it'll clear up any confusion on whether or not Cool Kid Croc has crabs. You know, why does Cool Kid Croc always say he has, uh, my crabs all the time? Like, oh, that's his crab guy name. <laughs> Shoot me, man. That's... <laughs> But we now have our very first pet crab in Kenshi, and in real life, I guess, because I've never owned a crab. We're gonna have to protect him and have him grow up, but much like Chompy and Ribbit, I'm sure one day my crabs will become an important part of my team, and possibly even a rival for Ribbit and Chompy to compete with. I mean, just look at him go, he's already super lovable and swagged out the way his legs move and everything. <laughs> As he gets bigger and bigger, he's going to get even more fierce, and hopefully one day, my crabs will be able to help me out when I get into a pinch. That was an awful uh, crab joke. Um, <laughs> Welcome back everyone to episode 21 of the Kenshi Gang series. We're on day 143, and our team is currently hanging around. They're not doing too much, okay? We're in a ruin or a lab that's in Stobes Gambles. Then we're going to be making our way back home to our outpost, which is Bad Guy City. But as anyone who plays Kenshi knows, traveling across the map can be a nightmare and in today's episode we're going to be counting how many interruptions or halts of progress we can get ourselves into while trying to get back home. And to start off this episode and to add a ticker to the counter I want to take a minute to thank the sponsor of this video Awesun Remote. Awesun is a software that lets you control your PC with your smartphone at any time and anywhere. It's free to download on their website for Windows and iMac, and then you can get it on iPhone or Android. All you gotta do is download the app both on your computer and then the smart device that you want to stream the game to. On your computer, you'll be able to see a user ID as well as a password, and then when going onto your phone and going to connect, just enter that in and boom, you can get right onto your computer. This way, you can not only play Kenshi using this app, but you can actually use your entire computer from anywhere. <laughs> Through their paid gaming option, there's a lot of options for the keyboard layout. And you can basically customize it to any way that you want and get a layout that's going to suit your playstyle depending on which game you're playing. There's a completely free version that you can use as well as the paid pro version and the paid game version. Using the game version, it lets me play any game I want to from Kenshi to Rimworld and I can control it from my iPhone and play it up to 144 frames per second. If you'd like to try this out yourself, I have 200 codes so go on there and get it as fast as possible. Create an account then go to the rewards and enter the code on screen or in the description to get a seven day free trial for the game paid version. This will let you try it out and if you're interested in more they've just released their smart plug available on Amazon which allows you to use your phone to turn on your PC anywhere. So if you forgot to turn on your computer before work you can at least start it up and then be able to play Kenshi during all of your breaks. They have sales running which will let you save up to 20% for plans of two to 
devices or up to 40% for three devices or more. Use my code to get your first week free and thank you to Awesun for sponsoring this video. Last time, B01 picked his best gangsters to go out to the pits and recruit a crab, and along the way we had a few problems, such as our human party members melting. Yeah, it's pretty bad, bro. We can't just be having people melt and shit. So I had all of our fleshy people, they went over to Brink, and then all of our skeletons and animals, they're at this random ruin. There's a few locked chests in here, which only Toro, our Scorchlander ninja, will have the lock picking skills to unlock. So we're gonna have to send her, along with the other three people, from Brink over to the ruin, that way we can loot it and then get back to bad guy city we got a crab now which is cool i tried to name him mr crabs but it turned out as my crabs which isn't cool but we gotta live with it starting yeah. an interruption train the brink team ran into some beak things around 1 30 of day 144 luckily they are all stupid strong i mean the beak things just get fucked up here they did hit us a few times but on average our gangsters are a lot stronger than the normal beak things only elder beak things would be really a worry before we could prepare to head out a group of sheks were at bad guy city ready to attack so that stopped me again there thankfully i have zagan here he's our warhammer 40k robot beast who has a broken projectile move as you can see <laughs> this is why we don't bring zagan out of a city he's just way too strong and broken but he makes for a great defender with all the sheks handled we can wait it out at the ruins until the brink team arrives but in reality <laughs> no we can't okay because round two baby more sheks whoa that's what i'm talking about i want more checks at my gate fucking up my shit yeah nobody asked for that but we had to deal with it again and this time there was an army of them there they're actually giving zagan a tough battle i mean he's being hit at all angles so even though he's like one-shotting most of the checks he's fighting he's still in danger of being knocked out after his battle the game tells me that the band of bones are now hostile towards us even though they like always have is there even a way to be friends with them like they're worse than dust bandits when it comes to being civil meanwhile in Interruption number 5 occurred as a bunch of Reavers attempted to stop our Brink party, but luckily they were all too fast for the Reavers. This would allow the group to lose them just after a few hours of running on the road. I then went into Bad Guy City and I attempted to set up a runner group, but we were getting chased again, so I got distracted until like way later on in the episode. Anyways though, we made it to the lab. The Brink team has arrived. I could then reform the two split teams, and with that done, we can now get Toro to unlock the chess. These lock chests of course have the best loot of a ruin and there's lots of steel bars and building materials along with research books weapons armor skeleton limbs anything that you could think of that was good or worth taking i took this was a really decent haul for sure seeing as it was only being guarded by like one skeleton and a security spider now that we're all loaded up with loot and we got our crab it's time to go back out but as you can see there's a group of crab raiders fighting some reavers so that means we're gonna have to be very careful careful while traveling through this area. I don't want to go to war with the crab raiders, but there isn't really a safe way to travel. We're in pretty deep, so our best bet is just going to be trying to get to Flats Lagoons or somewhere in the middle of a map to rest up, and then we can head to Bad Guy City. The first half of this run is going to be a lot more of a struggle. I'm sure there will be a lot more interruptions, and there's going to be some ruins and cities along the way that we haven't explored before, so, you know, we're going to have those mandatory interruptions to check those out. Our next stop was due to an army of blackbeard pirates who were traveling in the same direction as us before even spotted we had someone turn around and they started fighting us and due to there being so many pirates i made sure to take everyone's backpacks off and get ready for the battle of a lifetime our gang was unleashed and even though the blackbeard pirates have really low tier gear their numbers alone were enough to make this battle worth taking serious but something else was approaching us in the background it was an elder crab a huge fucking crab bro like look at my crabs then look at this crabs wow of course beep was the first to run up to the crab and he started fighting it uh, he was able to dodge some of the attacks he still got hit once but even him and a few of the others just ran over and they were able to knock down the crab in no time beep was pumped man he picked up the crab and he was running around with his prize he was so happy dude he was about ready to chop it all up with his chainsaw arms and serve dinner to everyone we wouldn't be taking this crab home to raise though as we already have our own crab but this was still like a big score i would say like a 22 point crab <laughs> honestly I, I was certain <laughs> the crab was gonna fuck everything up and kill us but 
I mean, what, what a fortunate turn of events. We're getting strong, man. What wasn't a cool turn of events, though, was the interruption number eight or something. This was a group of wild crab raiders. But on top of this battle starting, the group was split up and the crab raiders were able to focus on damaging one by one some of our gangsters before everyone else arrived. This led to half of our group being knocked out. And of course, this was not good. I mean, everybody's hurting. B-01 is left fighting the group with our animals scattered across the battlefield. This is really scary because if they get knocked out bandits might try to skin them alive for their meat which will kill them but luckily we had a nice interruption a group of menders came by and started healing everyone and while this meant our gangsters were getting healed it also meant the enemies were getting healed as well so that just means more fighting this did help us out though as our party were starting to get back up and overtake the crab raiders in numbers and one by one we knocked them out along with their crabs it was now 19 o'clock and everyone needs to heal but of course we would not be allowed to as constantly crab raiders were waking back up and testing their luck. I took this time to get West Dragon some high tier crab armor since it's some of the best of the game and as good as she looks without the mask, she's gonna need the head protection before a beak thing just bites her head off or something. It also take a few more hours but by 23 o'clock we were ready to leave and spotting a nearby ruin I knew we had to go there and check it out. It'd be another interruption in our way of getting home but it's worth checking out as we could see some menders were already fighting the skeletons who guard the ruins. This means it'd be more unguarded and way easier to loot. I mean we still had to fight a couple skeletons when we went down there but the menders seemed to take out like three to four of them so that was a really nice treat. Usually it's the opposite way around in Kenshi like you'd have three to four more extra people to fight. Either way though, this ruins had some great stuff as well. You know, some engineering research, cool weapons, high quality skeleton limbs, and it didn't take too too long so it was well worth stopping by at. At this point though, we were getting quite a full inventory and no one really had that much room. Like I had to start stacking stuff in different backpacks to make it all fit. But I was able to get it all in and then we were off again. This area of the game is really dangerous. There's lots of enemies, there's acid rain, there's uh, lightning strikes. So when I spotted a nearby way station, I knew this might be the only distraction that would really be worth going for. We kind of really need to stop here. I mean, everybody's really hurt. So being able to rest in beds plus four skeleton repair beds fucking bougie as hell man this is like a five-star hotel in kenji's terms but unfortunately there wasn't anyone to recruit here i'd love to get some more cool recruits but i haven't been finding that many special ones lately we'd be able to heal up by 13 o'clock on day 145 and now we're ready to get back on track i'm planning to go near the sniper area and then go on the outskirts of that so we don't get sniped across the map i lost count of how many distractions we're at but at 1630 we ran into a bunch of blackbeard pirates again Again, we had to fight them and plus a crab join. So this would be our first battle since healing. Thank Okran I did stop and heal though because usually I just push through and everyone's going into battles being hit one by one, not and getting knocked out, you know, <laughs> one hit from death going into battles. It's just not a good strategy. This was an easy battle, plus some menders helped us out, so the gang was back on track in no time. The gang was back on track in no time, but they would stumble across two outpost buildings, which you know we had to stop at and explore. We won't have that much room left, but maybe there's some AI cores, we never know. Unfortunately, the first building was empty, and the second building was filled with police skeletons. Likely from the old empire or from a long time ago, they just remain at that outpost waiting for someone like us to open the door so they can activate an attack. Can you imagine if you're running away from bandits and looking for help? Like you came here and opened the door and bam, police are attacking you now. And even though there's lots of them and they've had thousands of years to train, opposed to our 145 days, our gang was still able to knock down the police skeletons in just about no time. While there were a lot of police skeletons, which led me to initially believe there's going to be a lot of loot here, it seemed like the place was already raided or something as there's only simple loot lying around, like no nice weapons, no nice armor. It was a complete flop and we had a essentially wasted our time, but all we could do from there is move on. We're getting closer to Sniper Valley, to which from there we're going to be heading north, but along the road we found some witch hunts which confused me. Fuck man, I... That's such bad script writing. I have in the script witch huts which confuse me. Jeez, man. I'll be hiring a uh, scripter for my Kenshi video, so 
Uh, yeah, send your offers to my business email. <laughs> I had B01 explore one of the houses, but it didn't look like there's anything worth looting. I mean, the witches didn't even wake up, which was good. <laughs> there, there I go again. On the bright side, at least, it saved us from having to slaughter her and her sisters, so we were able to move on making faster progress towards home. There was a ruined outpost, which we stopped at, and there's like nothing there, just a bunch of rubble. This is another sweet waste of time, followed by a crab raider attack once we tried to leave. We killed the crab raiders, and then a gorilla attacked our swamp frog who was stuck at the gate or something, so we had to deal with that as well. Like, if I had to take a shot for every time, I, I gotta do that for one of these videos, taking a shot every time I get stopped in Kenshi. Dude, that would be wasted, man. I'd be like almost a 26er in right now. But this side of a map is just so dangerous. Like, I mean, this part is just about 80% of a journey. The rest of the map isn't as rough. But remember how I tried to make a runner group like an hour ago or something? Well, I remembered finally, so I put Scum Nut, one of our gangster hivers who's missing an arm, to go over to the swamp and buy some backpacks. Hopefully he doesn't get lost or drown or something. I mean, that's why I'm sending Scum Nut. <laughs> if it's stand desert, I then spotted another lab, which you know we gotta hit up. I mean, this is the last one, I promise. Toro would lockpick us into the place, and then there was one skeleton and a spider who didn't activate right away, so... I had West Dragon run up to them, to which he, they beat the shit out of her. He knocked her right out until the rest of the gang were able to put them down, but geez, man, they just snapped. Now, just like the first lab or ruin in the video, this place has some locked chests and full of random good loot, so I spent about five or so minutes ransacking the place. Got a bunch of research, weapons, and limbs, and then the gang were off once again for like the 15th time to go back home to Bad Guy City. This would not last long, though, as we'd encounter a whole tribe of wild land bats like for old grand's sake please send us back home the land bats aren't too strong it's just what a pain ass like i had other plans to do this episode after that just a few hours later as well we'd stumble into the southern hive which was a pleasant treat they're also hostile um if anyone couldn't guess that so this led us to stop yet again fighting people to the death for no fucking reason. They're just violent, violent world, man. Before getting too annoyed, I noticed once running away that we left my crabs at a battle site, so I had Paner Tan pick him up as well as lead some wild land bats into the group. <laughs> I really like this move, like... Take that, you fucking assholes. <laughs> Have fun. By day 147, we arrived in Venge, and I know, it's been like five days of traveling. Leave me alone. We've still got to make it across all these laser beams that rain from the sky, as well as the hardest part of the adventure, which will be traveling through the swamp. The swamp isn't like that bad. It's just, oh, I, I hate going to the swamp, man. Now, we had to stop since someone with a literal basket on their head tried to rob us, as well as a beak thing finding us a little bit later. Like... You, you just can't do anything in this world without getting attacked, stopped, spit on, you know, etc. Nobody will stop you to give you support, okay? Very similar to the real world. But meanwhile, at 14 o'clock, Scumnut finally made it to Swamp City, and I had him buy a bunch of backpacks. I want these backpacks because I'm considering moving the base, or maybe starting a second base somewhere else on the map. But we're gonna need the backpacks so we can transport all the materials we have and will need. The gangsters were now moving into Shem, which would greet them with a beak thing attack, of course, but... We were really close to getting home, and all we had to do was hold in there a little bit longer and get through the swamp. We were in the swamp by 19 o'clock, but some blood spiders attacked, which hurt us a lot, like knocked out a couple of us, so we had to carry some of our gangsters. Other than that, it's just a nice reminder of how much I do not like being in a swamp. Everybody's splitting up on the pathfinding when I'm sending them somewhere, or if we're stopping or loading every 30 seconds. Scumnut stopped halfway through his travel as well, that was annoying. We had some swamp ninjas stop us at like 21 o'clock, which wasn't too bad because they're really weak, you know, compared to the gangsters and most of the bandits we fight. But then an hour later, the pathfinding decided it'd be a good idea to go through a big pool of water. Everyone has like no swimming levels and it takes forever to swim in Kenshi so this took up a lot of time and was annoying. I really hated this and uh to top it off when we got out of the water they went back and did it again. Fucking bastards man. It was, it was like made my fucking 
ball sack shoot up into my throat, man. It's so much cringe. We're almost there, though. I mean, we finally made it out of a swamp, and I was impressed. Even when the group ran by a squin, they went around the city and not completely through it. Usually they just run, you know, right through the middle of a city and then get attacked and imprisoned because we're at war with the Sheks. And it's a good thing they didn't do this because they really increase the amount of guards they have at the gates. Like, look at this shit, man. This must cost, like, a fortune to employ all these dudes. You got, like, two dozen at this side, and if you look hard enough in the background, there's, like, another two dozen at the other gate. Finally, though, after a couple more hours, we got back to Bad Guy City. And before getting in the gates, our gangsters were just in time for another Sheck attack. Home sweet home. We made it. And only about, like, what, 21 or so interruptions for episode 21? It'd be crazy if it was exactly 21, but I wasn't counting, so... I didn't plan to do all this for this episode, okay? I planned to do some other stuff, but I spent, like, so long playing this part, I felt like it would be a good video to make it out of to show you guys kind of a struggle that you'll have in Kenshi when doing your adventures. Thank you for watching my Kenshi Gang series. The series started out on my old computer, which I retrieved out of a house fire. And through this series, we grew the channel a lot. I got new microphone, new computer. We upped the quality of everything. I learned a lot while making this series. So I want to thank everybody who was down for the ride during it and anyone who's watching this video and checking it out now. I don't know if I'll continue the series. I mean, it's something where, yeah, a lot of people might want it, but I'm trying to focus my best on more things on the channel, too. My old computer, too, the power supply is kind of dead in that, so I gotta retrieve it off old hard drive. It's just some nonsense, but if you guys really want to see it, then let me know in the comments section below. Other than that, check out my channel for any of my other gameplay series. I've done more series on Kenshi, as well as some series on other games. As always, though, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.